David Ish. Welcome. How y'all doing? Uh, how's stream doing? For some reason, I just dropped a ton of frames at the start of stream. Seems... Nope, still dropping some. How we doing? Welcome. Yeah, there's a direct tomorrow. Um, alerts were kind of quiet. I think just I had the music up very loud. Um, hi. Double talking. What does that mean? What is... Huh? Um, go direct to the polls. Welcome. Hate summer. Oh, no. There's a direct tomorrow. I fixed it. Oh, well, it was on you. Uh, welcome. Uh, hi. Um, yeah, they, they announced the direct tomorrow morning, so I figured I didn't have time to make a, a bingo sheet like I sometimes do on the, the Twitter.com and whatnot. So I thought I'd do it real quick here before we hop back into Phoenix. Hello. Hope you're all having a good one. Two hours ago? Hey. Better bingo. Hell yeah. How you doing? Morning. Morning. Why is it super? What do you mean? It's Mother 3 time. It's always Mother 3 time. What are you talking about? Uh, it's it's Lucas's time in the sun. That's why he's happy to be here. Listen, I was wrong about the Game Boy last time. Maybe we'll be wrong about Mother 3. One of these times. This was the, the bingo sheet I made for the February direct. I think it was January, February. 5 p.m. is morning somewhere. Oh yeah, I would not bet on Animal Crossing. Bullshit instead of objection, that'd be pretty good. Um, Diddy Kong Racing N64 Online, that'd be fun. Pretty good. Got one stream up the Oh my, well, the last one's a doozy. Enjoy it. Buckle up. If we, if one day, it may come true. Um, anyway, I uh, hope y'all having a good one. Thanks for, wow. Thank you. Hope y'all having a good one. Uh, bu 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 um, free space should be picking for. I mean, yeah, but I, at this point, I, I, I just like to keep. Internet mad as the free space. Ooh. Hmm. Bossa Nova. It's like a it's got like a bossa nova beat to it, you know? Um Inner was mad. Exactly. That's why it's the free space. Uh I I I finished Tears of the Kingdom last night. I did it. I saw the credits. I'm not done with the game, but I saw the credits. And I went, nice. So, only took me like 170 hours or something. That's possible? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I liked it. Um, just ever deal again last night? I mean, listen. We'll, 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 we'll see. We'll see about that. No more tears. I'm real close. Enjoy it, Viz. Um, yeah, I mean, but, but I, I finished the game, meaning I saw the credits. Like, I still have a lot of stuff. I, I reached a point where I was like, I have a bunch of things that I want to do. But Bath finished the game finished the game um, a couple days ago, and I was like, I just want to be able to talk to Bath about it, and also not be scared of seeing spoilers online. So I was like, I'll just I'll just beat the. I'm sure I could have beaten it a while ago, but yeah. Ah, Tears Kingdom's like 16 gigs. That's nuts. That's where I'm at. Yeah. Um. So uh. Yeah. I liked it. I'm not gonna talk about it now. I I think I may. In like the next sometime in the next couple of weeks, I don't know. Um, nice. I, I may do a, a stream to to be like all spoilers allowed. We're gonna get into it, talk about us, run around. Like we did something similar when I uh, streamed Elden Ring after that came out last year, to just be like all spoilers on the table. If you haven't finished the game and don't want to see spoilers, avoid this stream, and we'll just yell about it as I run around and do the like grindy post game stuff that won't be fun to watch. So. How about this game? I don't have current plans. I have things I want to say about it, but nothing where I'm like, oh, I really want to make that into a video. Uh, we'll see though. I don't know. I'm, I, I'm, I'm slow enough at making the video ideas that I have. I don't need to be <laughs> adding more on my plate right now. Um, but I'm glad that I'm done with it because now I can get back to working on stuff because holy shit. No spoilers. Yeah, thanks, Weep. How many shrines did I do? Um, 140 something. I'm not missing many. I don't know how many are in the game total, um, but I did most of them, as far as I know. Um, and I did all the light routes. So yeah. What case am I at? We are on case four? The case where Miles is accused of shooting a guy on a boat. Hmm. And we've done, Dan, hi Dan. Cause I won. 
That's me. I beat the game. Um, we may have to go emote only mode during this case. Okay. All right. If any mods are around, they'll, they'll just keep the finger on a button. Um, Dan, I, I finished Tears of the Kingdom last night, and I want to talk to you about it. <laughs> Favorite Ace character so far? I like them all. Um, I don't know. I legitimately like Phoenix a lot. It's good. My favorite. Ah! Uh, press love back and watch your watch. Okay. Hope you enjoy them. I'm here for it. Hell yeah. Not right now. I gotta make a Nintendo Direct bingo. And then we're gonna go in a wide mode over here. Go back to Christmas Day post two. We'll do that in a minute. I'll do this quick. Um, an ace character me other than Todd. Watch that question. Hmm. Least favorite? Old bag? Like, like, this game, I'm assuming the entire series has its fair share of unlikable witnesses, but damn. She kind of takes the cake for just about every part of her character. There's not really a redeeming part of her. Salmonella is sure, I guess you just don't interact with him as much. Sal is worse, but... Old Bag's just like, you just have to deal with her so much. <laughs> Sal, you just kind of talk to like twice and it's like, goodbye. See you later. Um, Christmas 2, the Christmas in. Gotta bounce! Reminder chat if you spoil emote only chat and leave. That's your first warning. First and only warning. Thank you, Weeb. Have a good one. Um Not spoiling stuff. Yeah, I chat is very good. Uh good job, chat. Just every now and then I, I feel like I need to reinforce like you, you, gotta, you gotta be you gotta be careful. Because people get excited. Um it's also why I didn't want to stream any Tears of the Kingdom, because I knew that day fucking one, because the game came the game leaked early. Like, day one, there'd be people like, make sure you do this early. And it's like, no, I. that's the, the definition of a game I want to just take my time exploring and forge my own path through. So, did your Prime go through? Uh, buh, buh, buh. I don't see it, Node. But thank you. Sometimes you have to refresh for the thing to pop up. Also, I'm still dropping crazy frames, so maybe Twitch is just having a time. I don't know if it's on my end or on Twitch's end, but... Yeah. Um... Is Kushi kind of regrets being so abstinent and actually just chooses to help you? I think that's a fun character growth. That's fair. Yeah. I guess she's not irredeemable. She just... I don't know. It's rough. <laughs> well, yeah, because Sal's music is just the, uh, the, the the Steel Samurai theme that plays. Nice. Nice. I beat Zelda. Yeah. Last night. Abstinent and obstinate are different words. Yes. I was like, abstinent I don't think is the right word. There. Yeah, obstinate. That's the right word. Um, Like a careless frame maker. They're just... Oh. Your Honor. These frames. Um, no pick before. Well, so this this is my bingo card from February. I, I, we have to make a new one real quick. So I'm going to get caught up in alerts. We're going to fart out a bingo sheet real quick. And then we're going to get back to Ace Attorney. Um, but yeah. Doesn't expect the David whip out the Quad Force. I know, right? The Quad Force, which is just the Windows logo. He's like, ah, It's pretty good. Every point. I mean, fortunately, it's not the most... With a lot of... Uh, Phoenix Wright has a lot of static frames, so if I am still dropping frames later on, hopefully it's... It's okay. Um, we'll see. Uh, blah, 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 Um, in between streams. Uh, Dippy? Dippy? D-Y-P-Y? 4594. Uh, subbed for three months. Not like they have been subbed for three months, they dropped three months of subbing. In advance. Which does give you a discount if you do a multi-month sub or resub or whatever. It is, it is cheaper for you, um, uh, but, it, you know, it, thank you. I appreciate it. I hope you enjoy those emotes. Uh, Bikwa, with a year and a half, and a very mildly Chris Galtic PDU, says, Hey there, I've been busy. I noticed we finally started playing AA. I'm looking forward to the VODs. Hope you enjoy them. Thank you. Gumshoe breakdancing the stage play? Yes, I have seen it. It's very good. What was Big Man? Oh, I, I just thought maybe there'd be some Splatoon something. The big man. Listen, I don't think too hard about these bingo sheets. I just throw stuff in there. Uh, Aka620, thank you for 56 months. And they said, and I quote, Bar Judge, think one. Frogged, think two. Which is very good. Thank you. Uh, I don't think too hard. I don't think. Just end the thought there. Universe of Fireworks, thanks for 16 months. Wow. Thank you. Welcome back. Smash for the next 100 bits. Nintendo Direct tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Eastern. Place your bets on whose dreams will come true and who will be left with crushing disappointment. I mean, I'm trying to put my vibes down in the interviews. Into the into the universe. Universe? I don't know what words are. 
try to put my vibes out in the universe by playing some rhythm heavy music. Maybe I'll just maybe I'll just leave this square alone. Will he come home? We miss him so much. Univerv. Monkey. Mega Boss Boar. Thanks for 13 months. I will enjoy this from Vodland. Thank you for being Barry Barry. That's all I know. I'm sure I've just. I don't know. Maybe it's been too much Zelda lately. My, my brain has turned into a puddle. Uh, Dexadia, thanks for the prime. Welcome. Thanks. Enjoy the emotes. Rain and Mountains, thanks for 43. Was looking up recipes for smoothies. One website ha said not to add in veggies like banana. You learn something new every day. I hate that. Why are Chrono Trigger fans frothing? Are there Chrono Trigger rumors? None veggie, 87 banana. It's a ghost party. Thanks for 48 months. Enjoy your card key. Dequail, thanks for 55 months. Akko, thank you for the hammy. Here you are, sir. Birthday tax paperwork filed and submitted on time. No need to send your goons after me, Mr. Kramer. I already sent them. And once they're sent, there's no undo button on my phone. Sorry. 07. He's thinking about the monkey dancing. Earthbound remake. Huh. If it looked like everything was made of clay, you know, like the way that they made art for that game. I don't know. I don't really want a remake. I would love for uh, 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 Etoy to, to make a new game. Earthbound Mother or otherwise, I, I, I just would be down if he w worked on something new. That'd be cool, but I don't really want them to fuck with Earthbound. Just release Mother 3 in the West. And then be done with it. That's all. Yeah, Link's Awake. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Like, if they remade it, and it was like that Link's Awake thing, kind of craft work style work. It's it doesn't look like it's handcrafted, but it just it has like that kind of shader look onto it. Is busy with Tetcho stuff. I don't know what that is. Hmm. Remake of Mother 3 in the OG N64 style. <laughs> just. Good news, we've released Mother 3 in the West, and it is Earthbound 2, Earthbound 64. It is only for the N64, it runs, it runs at 10 FPS. It would be dope, but it's just, that'd be strange. Uh, Muja Bunny, thanks for 50 months, and it's here too. That's as much as 510s, and that's pretty alright. He's watching me poopin', watching me poopin', watching me poopin'. He's on the wall and he's watching me poopin', watching me poopin', watching me poopin'. Oh god, he's crawling here, it's our time he disappeared. Flush him down the toilet. The one of spiders watching me while I'm pooping. Thank you for the Emmy. You know, I just realized this song is Monkey Watch, right? And the last ca the Steel Samurai case in East Attorney has a monkey clock that says "ook ook." Is is there is there a trope I'm unfamiliar with, like a Japanese trope of monkey clocks? Because that's two games that I've played now that have monkey clocks. It does not go ooky, ook, ook. No, it just goes ook, ook. Always with the ooking. Always with the ooking. Uh, thank you, Mucha Bunny. Uh, Big Cave Monster, thanks for 69 bits. My guess is that Pikmin 4 will have a Battle Royale mode with a paid for battle pass. Oh, that's great. I want that. Julius Maxwell, thanks for 11 months. Almost a whole year. Yee. Granted, I've been watching some since Banjo. So that's neat. Hell yeah. Thank you so much. And yeah, I, 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 of course, you know, I appreciate watchers as much as subbers, you know? Thank you so much for watching for so long. I'm glad those old VODs are still there. Reprogram, thanks for 53 months. Ace Attorney's one degree of separation from Bug Fables. Ben Judd, Voice of Phoenix, was CEO of Dungen, Dungen, at the time of Bug Fables Publishing. They're shaking hands. Node Sandwich, thanks for 12 months. There it is. There it is. There's your prime. Yeah, sometimes prime just takes a bit. Thanks. Enjoy your mildly Chris Skeleton key. Ramdum. Not random. Ramdum. Oh, one. Thanks for the prime. Three flipper rolls. One, two. Pixel Ken J. Thanks for 28. Phoenix Wright, one of the only games where you can say, no, the crime solving ghost sidekick isn't the main attraction. Yeah, that would be like the main gimmick in a lot of other series. The Candarian, thanks for five months. I don't mind leg day. It's the two days after I can't stand. Yeah? Fuck. Alistair, thanks for 31 months. Big news, I have a job! 
Should be starting soon. The journey has been long and hard because I'm autistic. Let's fucking go. Yo, congrats. That's very exciting. Congrats on the good news. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for all the months of support. And hope it goes well. Ginkuyami, thanks for 21 months. You should make a video about Ace Attorney slash Ghost Trick. I don't know what it could be about. I just want to see you draw the characters and make jokes and stuff. Lol. Uh, thank you. Noted. <laughs> Appreciate it. Gur, thank you for the hammy. Wish me luck. Work finally sent out the return to office order. Now I get to spend the next month apartment hunting in LA. And I'm already so fucking bleh. Barely awake. Hey, thanks for the hammy. I hope it goes well. Uh... Godspeed. As someone who has spent uh, many, many years on and off apartment hunting or in and around LA, it sucks out here. It sucks everywhere, but it also sucks here. Hope it goes well. Smash Man, thanks for the nice experience. If I had a nickel for every time Japan had a game to feature monkeys with clocks that have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's weird it's happened twice. But I'm just wondering how many more are, are there out there. It seems like if there's two, there's got to be more, right? Decent summary, Phoenix, right? Someone talking off about the remainder of the series. Perception, everything about actually playing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a game of telephone about Ace Attorney would be kind of nuts. Of like, okay, so there's this guy, and then he talks to this guy, and I think this was the mystery. It would be a mess. Uh, J. Light of the Dead, thanks for 51 months. That is very many. Thank you so much. Hmm. Or play him. Yeah, right, or play him. Uh, anyway, um, let's make a bingo real quick. Let me, uh, uh, let me, let me just, let me, let's just, let's just, uh, uh, f fart out some ideas here. Um, this is how I make my bingo cards. I just come up with a list of ideas. So, um, maybe something Zelda, like DLC. I don't really know. I, probably not. Um, Mother 3 is on there, for sure. Tingle? Tears of the Kingdom DLC. Tingle time. Tingle tuner? Latent news? Uh, probably not gonna have latent news. I mean, well, let, let, maybe, you know what? Latent gameplay? There you go. Um, Tingle Tuna? Tingle Tuna for your Switch. Um, uh, 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 Pikmin guy wears a little hat. You know, like maybe, 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 you know, maybe yellow Pikmin gets a little hat. That's my prediction for Pikmin 4. Um, hat cosmetics? No, 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 just the one hat. Um, Tingle's journey to space. Tingle takes the Holy Land. Make it real. Virtual boy on <laughs> Virtual boy on SL. Oh, no. Oh, no, damn. Uh, Pikmin armor DLC. Ooh. Olimar gets to ride the Pikmin like a horse. Uh, green Pikmin real? 39 minutes of Pikmin. Uh, um, one, two, switch, three. That's that the eight B because it's it would be one, two, switch, two. But calling it one, two, switch, three is so good for many reasons. Yeah, it could be Me Metroid, Metroid Four, Metroid Prime Four, one, two, three, switch. They already announced two. Did they? Was there already one? They made a new one, two, when did they do that? Hold up, one, two, switch, sequel. What? Everybody one, two, when was this announced? Did I miss this or did I just already forget? Huh. Will there be another milking minigame? Everybody one, two, I, I think I remember this. I do think that this entered my brain. And then I forcefully ejected it from my brain. Huh. It's been done for years because focus testers hated it. I'm just surprised that they were like, hey, we're launching our new console. We have a groundbreaking new Zelda game that people are very excited for. And also, 1-2-Switch. And everyone's like, yeah, look, it's Zelda. And 1-2-Switch didn't catch on at all. And they are like, let's do another one. But so now they can announce 1-2-Switch 3. Yeah. Except they'll be more confusing. Um, elite beat agents switch. Oh, elite beat agents are go. Um, hold up your Joy-Con and eat the sandwich. Edible Joy Cons. Done. Elite switch agents. Wario Land. Wow. Well, I always have something about Wario. No, or sorry, Waluigi in the bottom left. So Waluigi. Jet Set Radio somehow. Toad has sex. Canonically, 
Toad Fox. Thank you, Gam. Hi, Gam. People uh, were blind complain 100% legit with no issues. That is pretty cool. Just because the feedback from the controller and stuff. Waluigi face reveal <laughs> is very good. I like that. Thank you. Um, an actual new IP. New IP? Nah. Arms, two legs. Toad Treasure Tracker, dude. I would be so down for more Toad Treasure Tracker. That game's great. F Zero Mario Party crossover. Oh, that makes me sad. Melt your sod ports for the Switch? Uh -huh. Splatoon Story DLC. Yeah, could, you know. Maybe. What would it be? Um, may maybe instead of the, 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 uh, the mammals, they're like. Uh, Big Man Evil? No. No. Big Man Evil? And then give him angry eyebrows. Silk Song's dying corpse in the corner. Oh, yeah, I kind of doubt it. Fire Emblem DLC. Zelda movie teaser. No, not happening. Even if that movie is happening, they're not going to have that already. Luigi gets swole. I like those. My party's still not very good. Yeah. Sora Amiibo. That is a thing that has to happen, isn't it? Oh, God. And just trilogy streaming only. Oh. That wouldn't be in a... Well, that could be in a direct, actually. That's fair. Mario's missing two? I already had that in February. <laughs> I mean, I'd remake, not sequel, but... It's fair. Um... Yeah. Uh... How many... Okay, I need... I need, uh, like, 24, and I have... What we got here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. We needed some more. These do take me significantly longer than they should. Arms two. Fine. Arms 2, foot, Donkey Kong Universe, Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong, and Jungle Beat 2, Jungle Beat 2, Pog Bones, with new Donkey Konga, Joy Konga, Joy Kongas, hold on, wait, 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 there's something there, Joy Kongas, Oh, shit. Oh, that's gonna happen for sure. It's too good to not. Let him cook. <laughs> Let him cook. Picto chat. I miss Picto chat. Holy bazonga, would you look at her Joy Congas? Or Joy Congas give me joy. Kirby Air Ride. Crew movie Chris Pratt. What about, are there, are there any games that are not on the Switch Online? N64 or Game Boy that are just like, why the hell is this still missing? Diddy Kong Racing was mentioned, right? Mother 3. Well, yeah, Mother 3. Superman 64! Superman 64, let's go. Arms Air Ride. Banjo Tui. Duck Dodgers N64. Ugh. I think I rented that game back in the day. It's Sakurai from the top rope. We're gonna get DDR. Mario DDR2. In case you didn't know, there was a Mario DDR for the GameCube. And it was fucking terrible. It was great. Look at him go. Look at him fucking go. What more, what more, what more, what more could you possibly want from a video game? Look, it's Mario DDR. Love that game. It's great. Look at him go. He's, he's targeting to murder a Goomba with a one-man bobsled. Living his best life. Yeah, it's good. It's a very real game. Anyway. Snowboard Kids. It's good. Four Swords NSO with online play. Oh. Whoa. More Mario Kart tracks? Oh, yeah. Mario Kart with I got nothing. I mean, I already, I already, I already blew my best joke with this last time. They just put more Mercedes Benz cars in there. So I got nothing. Do 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 do. Metal Gear Rising Two exclusive for Switch. Don't make me cry. Bada bada bada. There's only been one Duck Hunt. Is that true? There's been like Duck Hunt references and stuff. Punch Out. Oh, a new Punch Out would be great. Metroid Golf. That could be fun. 
What was it, Todd's latest versus beats? He, yeah. Godzilla and Crazy Taxi and was that Jet Set Radio as well in that one? Metroid Pinball Remake. Punch out two punch in. Mm-hmm. Mario Tennis. We already did a Mario Tennis for the Switch. Metroid 99. Me hmm. Hold on, let me... Hmm. Hmm. I don't know what that would be, but that's not for me to decide, is it? Ooh, Farming Sim. Farming Sim with anime aesthetic. I don't want to do that. <laughs> uh, Built-in randomized. No, they would never. Complete with Mario 35. Yeah, it would just be weird. Pac-Man Maze Music Mass with live orchestral Cleopatra. That's free space. F-Zero thing. I just, I, I, well, I think that was a previous one where I put that in the corner there. I'm also tempted to just reuse this square too, because I just like it so much. Mario and Luigi? Ah! Emulator support. Never happening. She learns how to crawl. Miss Pac-Man. Hi-Fi Rush for sweet. Mmm. Adventure of Link remake. Oh. Death Stranding Switch Edition. New peripheral. Well, we got the Joey Congas. What more do you need than that? Power Wash. That's 75. Dr. Mario Malpractice Edition. CDI. Luigi rebrand with no mustache. Luigi no mustache? Ugh. Ghost Trick 2? Star Fox with a Fujin Saki. That's just real. Why would you do that? Edo Boy Joy. Oh. Hmm. Power Shavira's exclusive quest. I'm mad about that too, Banjo. Like, I get it. It's it's arguably the same thing as, as console exclusivity, where they're paying to publish it. I'm assuming, because it's, it's being developed by a third party. It's not being developed by the Power Wash sim devs. So I'm assuming that Meta Facebook was like, we have a developer who can port this to VR. We'll put up some amount of funding for it, etc. But it'll be exclusive, right? Which makes sense, but VR... Should but just fucking with the exception of like PlayStation VR because it's literally tied to your console. If it can run on a computer, it should just be interchangeable. I it makes me I, as an index owner, <laughs> it fucking sucks. Exclusivity in the VR space sucks so bad. It really can't. Yeah, uh, literally other Oculus and, and and Meta headsets can't run it, which is just like, God, that's aggravating. Um, anyway, uh, I need a couple more. Um, what about, um, what about, uh, 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 Korok Digital Pet for your Switch? You just set him on fire. The soundtrack is so good. It's almost like they're a shit company. Yeah, a little bit. Game taps the sign simulator. <laughs> Star Tropics remake, that would be wild. But only if it had the, like, note that you get in the box that you have to get wet to reveal a thing. Sonic Superstar. Well, they have the other, the the, the, the Sonic stuff coming up. Maybe number 3D mouse pad. Listen, this isn't Dan's wish list. Animal Crossing side game. Mm -hmm. Sonic turn based RPG. Uh, sequel to the Bioware RPG. The, the, the Sonic... Breath of the Wild. <laughs> Fucking, that's just, that's just very funny to me. Uh, can you send me this PNG? You want the the, the template? Yeah, I got you. Um. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. I just okay. I opened up. I'm not gonna show it because it's Discord. Um, I mentioned before how uh, um, you know, Discord changed how usernames work. So, uh, uh, instead of having the discriminator and four numbers, now everyone just has a username on Discord. They're rolling that out, whatever. Um, whenever you open up any kind of streaming software, Discord detects that and puts on streamer mode, which hides sensitive information. And I never ran into this before, because whatever. But apparently, it would censor if someone had their full username in, like, a DM or something like that, whatever. Um, the problem is that now, a lot of people I know got their display name as their username and streamer mode has censored that so I opened up my DMs 
and it's the C of just first letter dot dot dot. It's just everyone is censored. Like it's just it's uh but I can turn that off. The problem is it's one global setting within streamer mode to to uh, uh, to hide sensitive information. And that includes things like email addresses. And I'm like, I'm fine. If I accidentally show Discord on stream, I'm fine with censoring things like email addresses and stuff. But I want a separate toggle for you. I don't care about usernames. It just, I oh God. It's, yeah, it's like everyone's just like, hmm. It's bizarre. Anyway, I need to find... Dan in my list. There we go. Uh, oh, Discord thinks as well. I it's it's. I'm in am I'm in a, a server for Discord partners because I run a partnered server. I am a Discord partner, and uh, I I keep meaning to hop in there and be like, may I request a feature update? Because this sucks real bad. Uh, I did post the temple on Twitter. That's true. Thank you, Gam. Remember Wordle? We were all really into Wordle for a while there. I know people still do it to this day. Um, it's up to you. Uh, where did I... Bingus Bongus. There's the template. There, I sent it to Dan. Between YouTube and Discord. YouTube, I understand even less. Because Discord have their explanations as to why they decided to change it. You can poke holes in it, sure. But if you take them at face value, which you don't need to, there are reasons why they wanted to update it. Sure, whatever. YouTube, I'm like, huh? <laughs> Was there anything wrong with the old... Like, not even just like, a, I don't understand why they're saying that. It's just like, I don't know. Everyone wants to wordle. One, two, Wordle. Hmm. Hmm. One, two, word, Wordle. Anyway, let me let me start dropping some of these in. Because I need to play Ace Attorney. That's why you're actually here, right? Um. Uh. Uh. I, I, I really like, instead of Zelda DLC, which is Breath of the Wild 2. Also, I, I updated uh, Photoshop. Um, and they added this context-sensitive little guy that changes depending on what you're doing and follows you around and I don't I don't think I hate it but I'm not used to it it's just like you select the thing and it's like here's common things you might want to do with the selection is it new clippy it might be clippy 2.0 but yeah I don't know it's 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 strange um yeah games in your stream sometimes should I update photoshop is it worth it I I don't know it, it's the difference between, look, if I have the, the text tool selected and I select some text, it's like, do you want to change your font and size and color here? Or you can go up here and do that where you're used to doing it, but this is a little closer. So, I don't know. Use GIMP? Yeah, you could. Um, yeah, where's my where's my list of stuff? Uh, um, yeah, let's go. Virtual Boy and NSO Baby. Do, 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 do. Pikmin 4, assuming direct control, I can get rid of this in the background. Um, uh, elite beat agents are back. Look, it's covering up my. Okay, I hate this. <laughs> get out of the way, please. Wait, why? It should not cover up your text that you're typing ever. I don't care if I manually placed it. Like, punch it through. Like, I don't fucking. Alright, uh, they're they're back. Great. Um, uh, what 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 was Metroid? Uh, nice. Metroid ninety nine. Don't need this. Um, this can be uh, new IP. I don't know. Make make it make it a little smaller. When text is at a slight angle in a corner, it makes me happy. Uh, let's go edible Joy-Cons here. That's great. Love that. This is awful. Listen, I'll give it a chance. I hate it. Uh, eh. Uh, da 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 One, two, switch. Three. 
new wordle mode that sucks no one two switch three we canceled the sequel there you go uh no i'm not doing that <laughs> uh mario's missing that we already did that luigi gets swole Let's go over here. Uh, Pikmin 4. Yellow Pikmin gets a little hat. Yeah. I like that. Get out of the way! Alright, I need it. There is a setting to turn it off. I just can't be bothered to find where it is right now. Um, Splatoon DLC. Big Man Evil? There you go. Beep, 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 beep. Get out of here, Yoshi. Buff Luigi can get it, right? Let's go over here to uh, Sora Amiibo. Oh, no. Get rid of this with um, Arms 2. Foot. Shake that down a smidge. Whoa, oh no. Wait. That. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's get it. Foot. Foot loose. No. Stop. Um. Mario DDR2. Get out of here, Cranky. Goodbye. Nip. Nip. This is looking pretty good. I think we're gonna get a bingo. I think we're gonna get a blackout bingo with this. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Korok, digital pet. Yeah, I'll leave it at that. That's pretty self-explanatory. Look, I'm still going muscle memory up to the top. Hey, Dan. Made my list. That was quick. Hi. <laughs> God, I hope I ho how I hope. You know what would be Dan, what would happen if um if you got a bingo? But here let me uh shit. What if you got a bingo, right? But the the bingo that you got was we inexplicably just this row. That was the row. You only got their crotches. Everything else was not part of the Nintendo Direct, but only their crotches were. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a double win. Don't threaten me with a good time. Uh. Da, 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 ba, da, ba. Thanks. Thanks, Gam. Thank you. God. Ugh. But thanks for the resub. Welcome back. Um, okay, what else we got in here? Um, Tingle Tuner. Uh, Tears of the Kingdom. T Tune. Tingle Tuner. Yeah, there you go. That's pretty good. Two tuner. I don't want this to be in bold. I want this regular. I think it's funnier. Maybe Breath of the Wild 2 news. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Fucking. <laughs> Why that cracks me up so bad? <laughs> uh, Zonai Power Glove. It's so bad. Let's see. Uh. Uh, Jungle Beat 2. Uh, Donkey Konga Joy Kongas. Yeah. That's yeah, good. Uh, uh, 
New NSO games? And I'll, I'll drop some box arts behind it for like Superman 64 and stuff. I think I'll just say Mamma Mia. Oh, you know, we can, we can italicize that. There you go. That's good. Um, what was, uh, uh, Waluigi face reveal? That's what we got for that one. This is very good. Layton. Monkey. Monkey. DDR for Switch? Mm-hmm. Be good. Monkey. And, uh, we need two more here. Monkey Clock. Yeah. Monkey. Or in Waluigi Farming Game. That'd be good. The clock is important. Um, clock app for your Switch. New console? That ain't happening. I'll tell you right now, guaranteed. Ugh. We're not gonna see a single peep about Nintendo's next console until at the earliest, like, or, uh, uh, early next year would be what I would think. That's where I placed it. Prime gets delayed again. Well, we got Metro 99 up there, but yeah, we could, um... Could do that again. Prime 2 remaster. Switch you! t -Nicarous. Nintendo 60S. Yeah, right? Come on. Skyrim again? Metroid Prime 4, your Switch. The fucking Bart meme. They did say now before spring. I, well, I think not before spring is when they would drop new hardware, but I don't think they would even announce it or tease it. I, I just think the Switch is still selling well. Um, they don't want to cannibalize hardware sales. Especially, you know, if today, if they're going to be announcing stuff that's going to be dropping around the... So today, if tomorrow they're going to be announcing stuff that's going to drop around the holiday season, they don't want to be like, instead of buying that stuff, wait until we drop new hardware next year. They'll, they'll wait till probably that's out of the way. Ice Climbers. New Ice Climbers? Switch printer, like the Game Boy printer. Switch camera and switch printer. Yeah, I like that. Do, 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 do. Sonic shows up. There's no ice because of global warming. Oh, that's sad. Arlo screams in his car. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, get this. New 2D Switch XL with extra cheese. My Sonic hold hands at the Olympics. They're gay, Your Honor. Side on. Fire Emblem normal hair color. Switch e-reader. Power glove. Smash. Winky face. Another all-stars combo. Hmm. Maybe. Check our pet. The movie, the game? Let me see. Super Mario, the movie, the game. Yeah. Let's go. Let's fucking go. Let's will that into existence. Okay, great. Let's, uh... Do, 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 do. Okay. Um... This sucks really bad. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, God. I don't even know. Where did you find this game? Oh, shit. That's fine. Well, there. Hmm. I have my sources. Keep it as the whole background. No. Come on. There he is. Oh, God. Ugh. 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 Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, I hate this. Fuck. Is there a version of this that doesn't just... Oh. 
Hmm. I, I, I think we just make our peace with God on that one. Great. Hate that. There is no God here. Do you think God stays in heaven because he too... I, I this Game also sent me the Nintendo DS browser cartridge. <clears throat> Tinder 2 for Switch. Am I streaming the direct? No, I'm probably going to sleep through to the direct. New Ace Attorney. I don't think so. It is a Spy Kids quote. Um, okay. Uh, let's... Grab this. Do 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 Shit. That's the wrong thing. Into here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. It's back. It's back, baby. Did you miss me? I have it set to nearest neighbor. No wonder the scaling is so bad. Yeah. Not that it fucking matters, but I'll notice. Yeah, no, we're just doing this, but I'll be back in Ace Attorney land shortly. You play games on Twitch? That's weird. And grab the boys, the lads. You know what? Fucking yeah. There you go. Boom. Oh no, they're stepping on him. Good. I'm. I think. I think Metro 99 just gets to live by itself. Um. Uh, what am I doing for edible Joy Cons? Hmm. Hmm. A candy bar. Cutting a Joy-Con revealing their cake. Hmm. Let's just do this. Eh. I'm not bothering to take out my drawing tablet. We're just gonna fucking we're just gonna deal. Uh Yeah, this is gonna look pretty good. It's a Joy-Con burger. Looks pretty good to me. That definitely reads, right? Because I'm an artist. Here, we'll add, we'll add a, oh yeah, oh my god. Look at that. Now that looks pretty tasty to me, Nintendo. Thank you. Beanie. 
He's, he's gonna get a little hat. So, um... Boy, he's got redacted vibes, doesn't he? Sorry, game. Please don't sue. Yeah, big re right? Um, warning, do not ingest. <laughs> Edible is in quotes. Uh, about like, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, that's, you know what? They have ears. Oh, they don't have the nose. Fake Pikmin fan over here. Um, crap. Eh. No, stop it. Uh, uh, we'll just... There you go. Yeah, that's pretty good. What about Pikmin Bloom? Do they have hats in Pikmin Bloom? I haven't played Pikmin Bloom. It's Pikachu. Yeah. He's just got- he's just a little guy. Tiny little grabbers. Oh, yeah. That's a shiny Sableye. It's just a tiny little guy. Good. Freddy Freak. Stop it. Uh, yep. Oh, there we go. Say it ain't so, Nintendo. My heart couldn't take it. Give him red eyes. Back. Rasterized layer. Sheesh. Gotta tell you to do everything Photoshop? Yes, I do. Oh. Ugh. Um. For this, let's see. Evil, not clickbait. Uh... There he is. Beautiful. When he says, oh no. Yeah, but I can't put that on a base. As easily. Do, 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 do. 
Why did that change his opacity when I moved him? Thanks, Photoshop. The sides are black. Uh, nah, nah, nah. There. <laughs> Done. Uh, arms to foot, Mario DDR. A Monty Python foot. No, that doesn't need anything. Just do this easy peasy. Do, 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 do. All right. Uh, da, da, da. Fuck. Joy Congas is so good. I need to make this stand out more. Yeah. Yeah. All right. They put bug snacks in them. Rico's made of barbecue ribs. Finally. Do, do, do. Good. When will his attorney start? Uh, give me like 15 more minutes. <laughs> I should probably have updated stream category. But you know. Bah, bah, bah. This is Ace Attorney. Yeah, clearly. What do you mean it isn't? Bam, bam, bam. There he is. Okay, just have to... Uh, want that to be visible down there. There you go. And then just like, just you just want a little hint of Superman lurking in the back there. You don't, you don't need to perceive it. You just need to feel it. Feel his presence. Um, actually, let's put Snowwork Kids on top there. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Do 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 Great. Camera. I love when I grab an image off Wikipedia and it's three pixels tall, and then I grab another image off Wikipedia and it's larger than my monitor could show in native resolution. Why? I couldn't. I mean, listen. I appreciate it. Resolution is good. I don't know why. It's this. It's it's opposite of a problem. Um. Nope. Wait. Darken. There we go. Yeah. Do 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 do. There they are. Beep 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 beep. And good. Somewhere in the movie, the game. Um, doing a Steam Next Fest. Ooh, yeah. I've only gotten to look a little bit into it. I do plan on streaming a bunch of demos later in the week once I've had more time. Now that I finished Zelda, I feel like a lot of my schedule's gonna come back to me because 
been a little bit of a hermit playing that game lately. Um, a new Pokemon Snap printer? Did they? Was that a thing? What's Zelda? Um, it's like Metroid, but but different. Look at his fucking face. Look at his fucking face. He's beautiful. Yeah. There we go. Perfect. Scrumptious. The farm is with dinosaurs. You my attention. Farm man? Paleo Pines. He's so cool. I guess I could drop my... Leighton doodle behind Leighton. Other than that, though, it's going to be a great direct tomorrow. Isn't that right, Luigi? Get out of here! Wait, shit. This reminds me of a puzzle. Stop talking. We have to suppress the bleeding. <laughs> reminds me of a puzzle, my boy. Please, Professor. <laughs> Stop. Anyway, looks good. Monkey. Great. Layton in Street Fighter 6, Luke. Now that I'd be down for. It. Um, no problem, Zach. You're welcome. Can we wait for one, two, switch three for switch? <laughs> one, two, three, switch for the switch two, for switch you. Uh, bing, bingus, bongus. Um. Uh. Do 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 do. All right, to Twitter.com. A hive of scum and villainy. I like that now when I hop on Twitter.com, there's a big blue button that says, Get verified. I'm like, Psh. Psha. I say, Psha. Thank you for your giant blue button. I ignore it, sir. Uh, there's that. Over there. Where did I save it? In here. There it is. Do, 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 do. Um. Should that? Thank you. Once I'm done with this, we'll hop back in Ace Attorney. How that sound? Thanks for your patience. I just, uh, want to do it on stream. Uh, edible Joy-Cons. One, two, switch, three. star port to switch i don't want that though i want that game to be forgotten i'm all for preservation and all but meh Blech.
Bleh. Luigi. And row five. I do not want it to stick. No. All right, chat. We did it. We made the first ever predictive blackout bingo sheet. Send tweet. Okay, goodbye. Anyway, yeah. Should we... Uh, this button? Oh my god. For that consideration. I did see this. On Twitter.com. I haven't played Chrono Trigger, so I don't fully understand the specific references. Do we play games here? No. Do I get to black out if we get bingo? Mm -hmm. Bath now! Frogberry. Beep be dee 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 dee. We play games so we understand the memes. That's honestly 80% of the reason you gotta play games. So I understand the references other people make. Doesn't really tell any story. Gotcha. Just the box art. Right. Okay. Well. Damage is wrong. That girl can't cast fire. What? But Nicole can, canonically. So. Holds a bullet. Yeah, I've been meaning to check out Chrono Trigger. Never played it, but I've heard good things over the years. Um, I've also heard that as a stream game, for me, might not be the worst idea. I mean, I've streamed a few RPGs here and there, but they tend to be very long. Whereas Chrono Trigger, I've heard, is, for a JRPG, is not crazy long. It's also kind of an action RPG. Has some real time stuff going on. It's not purely turn based, which I don't mind turn based. I just think for stream, my brain would just turn to mush. So, yeah. I just feel like it also is very prone to backseating. So I'd have to be like, all right, chat. Because <laughs> the, the, the one and only time I started Chrono Trigger, I was playing it with alongside a friend who had played it many, many times and knew it well. And the game starts, and you're at this like fun little fair. And you walk around and talk to people, and it's like, okay, so make sure you go to the race and you bet on on number three. And then you gotta talk to this guy and throw three times, not four times. And I was just like, I don't I just want I don't wanna I just wanna walk around and talk to people. So yeah, I understand that there's like an, a proper way to do things in that game, but it's like for a first time playthrough, you wouldn't know any of that. So I don't wanna know any of that. I'm just gonna play the game. The fair sucks. Yeah. Alistair, what's this? What is this? <laughs> Thanks, Alistair. A lot of fucky wucky chain event. Yeah. Chat would never. No. This is very good. <laughs> uh so I avoid talking about your scheme. Exactly. You got you got there's a time and a place. Am I a lawyer? Check out my badge! Yeah. Your croissant! Enjoy the croissant. My giant golden baby. Um anyway, um, God old 10, thanks for 45 months. Sub a dub dub, is that true? Ugh. Dr. Fat Kai, thanks for 47 months. Uh, that's a lot of months. Three B's in a trench coat, thanks for 42. Enjoy your doki, thanks for the prime. Loaf of bread, thanks for 57 months. Speaking of Mario DDR, this is relevant and hilarious. This specific segment of this YouTube video. LOL. Uh, it's a clip from a, a barb stream. Best clips of weird hair, loud yelling man, volume 16. Is 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 this did he did he actually stream Mario DDR? The mad lad? What? Yeah. Yeah. What did he do? Oh. Appreciate it. What? <laughs> Come on, Mario, go! Yeah, Mario DDR is doing? pretty good. Ah, come on. <laughs> Zero! Tails. It's very good. Yeah, listen. For those of you that have never played Mario DDR before, it's great. Elite Beat Agent, put them in! Onsta, put them in! 
They're resting in hibernation. They're ready to emerge. Merge. Do, 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 do. Put them in. How you doing, Ansta? Uh, Kiwi Queen, thanks for 15 months. The box says Ace Attorney, but these people are clearly by. This is false advertising. That's what I was saying. Apparently, people were saying that, that you, you can be by an Ace. You can be many things. Smash thanks for 69 bits. Just solved Wordle in four guesses. Hey, when my brain hits a brick wall and I see certain letters in a word, but I don't know what they were there. Yeah. That's Wordle. That's Wordle, baby. QML, thanks for 42 months. Enjoy your Doki. The answer to the great question, months. What is the answer to life, the universe, and everything? Uh, some number of months. This is the OG? This is the OG. Well, the OG would be the GBA version in Japanese. I'm not doing that. This is the DS. Yeah. Happy Pride Beer or the fuck you want. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, Murmur, thanks for 45. That's a number, probably. Hmm. Do you think scientists ever get together and invent new numbers? Just to fuck with the rest of us? Also, Smash Bros. for 50 bits. I did a quartal, which is four wordles at once. I typically don't manage to win those. Nice. Bounce Creeper, thanks for 63 months. I love the Virtual Boy Labo VR set for Nintendo Switch. Released 32nd of July, 2023. Batteries required, batteries not included. I want to be unproud. Yeah, one's prident. I'm not gonna make more jokes about this because it's gonna get fucked up. I'm a computer. Thanks for 47 months. 47 months, Beryl. Did you, Beryl? Did you pass the bar? Also, is Star Fox Adventures remake on your bingo? No. Star Fox Adventures is alongside uh, Sticker Star in the depths of hell. I. I mean, I bought. I, I had Star Fox Adventures, like, day one. I was extremely excited for that. I remember when it was Dinosaur Planet, and they were teasing it. I was very excited for a new Star Fox, made by Rare, one of my favorite developers growing up. And then I played it, and I was like, oh. Especially because the game starts with an R-Wing segment. You're like, wow, it's Star Fox for the GameCube. And then you run around and talk to a weird genie ghost lizard man who you haggle with poorly. And then you deal with a Triceratops that doesn't listen to you and is hungry all the time. Star Fox Ventures was a good game. You are allowed to be wrong on the internet. No one can stop you. It's not as good as I remembered. I don't remember it being good. <laughs> I will fight people on this. It's... Uh, a furry with a white kid. Well, yeah, because Crystal exists in that game. So people are like, it's a great game. Just own up to it. It's fine. I won't disagree with you on that point. It's still not a good game, though. It is okay at best. I, I, I love Rare. I love Star Fox. Star Fox Adventures is a very messy game. The game having crystal is it did not make it a good game. No, it does bring it from F tier up to D tier, but it's still not great. I never played much of the DS one. I know, Dan. I know you don't, you don't have to at me when you say, I know you do. <laughs> Uh, shit. Fuck. Everyone's horny on main for a fucking anthropomorphized fox. Uh, listen. What? What? I am what you have my attention. Undivided attention. F to D, you say. Don't read into that. Crystal eating a sandwich. Dot MP4. Ocarina Star Fox Adventures of Time. Mm-hmm. Stretch out your neck. Yeah, everyone do a stretch. Take a lap. Uh, thank you for the dumper. God, what a great emote. I got no <laughs> Uh, Sui, thanks for 46 months. Hi, Baron Chad. I had to move recently, which was an ordeal. The VOD's been a great time. I'm glad to hear your move is over. Sorry, it was an ordeal, but I hope things are nice and settled now. And Damashi Alpha, thanks for 13 months. I just finished my first ever playthrough of Earthbound on the Switch. So the Mother 3 Copium for tomorrow is super big right now. At least I have solace in continuing my sub streak and staying in the house another month. Thank you for 13. Lucky number 13. Sorry I've been norted. It happens. Uh, I don't need this right now. But uh, I do need this video game in my bones. Um, it is December 26th. 2000X. We are in case 4. Uh, I forgot what the name of the case is. And, uh, happy birthday to Jesus. Um, and here's what I remember. There were two people out on a boat on a lake. Gord, Gordy Lake. Gord Lake. 
Two men on a boat. One says, ah, it's been 15 years at last, my revenge. Kapow, gunshot. Man falls overboard dead. He washes up on shore. Turns out he's a guy whose name eludes me, I forget. But he was a lawyer himself. He was, uh, wasn't he a lawyer? I already forgot what that deal was. Um, Gordon Gordy Lake. So, uh, uh, Hammond. That's, yes, Hammond. That was the one. Dan Harmon. Hammond, uh, was an attorney and it was, uh, they found a bullet in him. A bullet that's perfectly intact. Even though he was shot through the heart, it somehow missed every bone in his body. So the bullet didn't get smushed at all. But the bullet itself, the, the, the characteristics of the markings on it match a gun that was found to have Miles Edgeworth's fingerprints on of his right hand. However, in photographic evidence that we found, the, the shooter was holding the gun in his left hand. So, uh, huh? Uh, also, there is a Loch Ness monster inside the lake named Gordy. And so there was a woman there trying to get a hot scoop, getting a picture of Gordy. And so she set up a camera to take photos in response to noise. So a loud bang happened, two loud bangs, um, which means there were two pictures taken over. We've only seen one of the two pictures. Um, so basically, Miles Edgeworth, the, our arrival detective guy, uh, detective it, 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 lawyer, they're not detect. They are basically detectives, but they're not supposed to be. That's not their job description. Um, the, he is uh, on trial for murder, for murdering Hammond. Um, and he is being prosecuted by something Von Karma. I don't remember his first name. And he basically tells the judge what to do. That's how fucked it is. Uh, and we just barely managed to, to squeeze out an inconsistency out of the witness testimony in the first day to give us a little more time to get some clues and evidence and figure out what the hell happened. So, uh, Manfred slaughtered Von Karma. We can't spell laughter without slaughter. Manfred von Karma. Manwich Manatee von Karma. We gotta get Edgeworth off. We gotta get him off, Maya. Like, legally speaking? Um, did we not see the first photo? We did, We have only seen one of the two photos. I don't know if it was the first or the second one. Uh, and then she blew it up. So we were able to see that you can't see their faces, but you can see the left hand. And we we're like, the fingerprints were from his right hand. So now we gotta uh, scramble to find more evidence and figure out the hell is going on so uh yeah uh sweet rap boy matt thanks for 20 months i think gam shot the gun the gam do it come on fess up say it big k thanks for three years enjoy your okie gumshoe x edgeworth is otp pal well shit did you gam's panicking objection so let us continue Maya! Wait, why is Maya in there? Right, because she was held in contempt of court. <laughs> I forgot I forgot about that detail. Yeah, I... I, I <laughs> Welcome back. Maya's in jail now, again. Uh, yeah, she she was uh, yelling out stuff because uh, Von Karma was like, if, if you say anything else, you'll be held in contempt of court, right, Judge? And Judge was like, yeah, sure. So Maya was like, I'm yelling stuff! And uh, she got thrown out. But it did get us the extra time we needed, so... Hey, Nick, it's you. I'm glad Mr. Edgeworth made it through the day okay. It's a relief. Hey, why'd you do that anyway? I don't know. I just knew I had to do something. I know I'm not the lawyer my sister was. I'm sorry. Well, you did save the trial. Just behave from now on, okay? Okay. Mm-mm. Have you been questioned yet? No, not yet. Do they do questionings? For being in contempt of court? Is that a thing? That exists? Detective Gumshoe was here just now. He said, seeing as this is your first offense, we'll let you go after questioning. Hmm. Question for what? Why did you yell out in court? Hmm. Got any games on your phone? Woo! And he wanted me to get bail money ready. Oof. You can pay for me, okay? Huh? How much? I don't know. I guess they'll send you a bill or something. Why do I picture giant bales of money whenever I hit every time I hear the word bail? I mean, it's not inaccurate. It's just hey, bales of money. Mia. Any luck with Mia? None. I can't get through to her at all. 
I tried. I really did. I don't know what to do. I think I probably shouldn't have stopped my training. She sounds like she really did do her best. I should check and see if there are any waterfalls in the local area. I wonder if I'll ever see my sister again. Probably not, no. Because even when she is around, you're not, so... You know. Contempt of court can result in jail time, potentially. Damn. That's pretty hardcore. Um... Hey, Maya, check this out. Must be nice, Nick. You can just show that to anyone and say, I'm a lawyer. But spirit mediums, well... I don't know, with your clothes, I bet at least some people would recognize you. But these are medium and training clothes. I wonder if I'll ever be a proper medium. Those are, that's her training attire. Hey, Trumpa Wings. Hope you know the Nendoroid figure of Maya comes with a detention center screen because she's in there so much. That is excellent. That is quite good. I'm fresh out of ideas. Isn't that the enlarged photo Lotta was talking about? Uh-huh. It's nice and big, but you can't really see the faces any clearer, can you? Nope. I want to see Gordy, too! If he really exists. Well, I'd say a photograph is pretty good proof. Once this trial is over, let's get some fishing poles and go down to the lake. Even if there is a monster in that lake, fishing poles sound like a bad idea. I don't have an idea. So the markings on this bullet and the barrel of the pistol matched. Hey, I'm surprised you remembered that. How could I forget after Von Karma rubbed it in so much? So which of these are the ballistic markings? Which one of these are the ballistic markings? I'm not really sure. Don't look like I know what a forensic evidence is. My mother. Now that I've shown her the picture, I'm not sure whether it was the right thing to do. I'm pretty sure it was the wrong thing to do. Cool. I don't know what a camera is. Okay. Mr. Edgeworth's prints are on this pistol, aren't they? Yeah, the prints from his right hand. But they must have gotten on there at some time other than the shooting. What, really? The shooter used his left hand after all. We just started. I'm fresh out of ideas. All right. Then goodbye. Um, yeah, there's a Nintendo Direct tomorrow. You know what else is tomorrow? That's more exciting than a Nintendo Direct. Dan Jones and Dragons part, I don't remember, tomorrow night. Be there or be somewhere else. Also, the summer solstice. Is it number 13? 15? Something team. Um, been in here. Part next. Why are you sad, Dan? Sure is quiet here with nobody around. That was a smiley face. It's why, but he's crying and he's sad. But I fucked up. <laughs> I have to get my out of that detention cell soon. It's too quiet. I'm so far behind. Well, if you join, uh, we always do a recap near the start. So if you want to get caught up, we got you. Apparently, Mr. Grossberg is on vacation today. Guess I can come back tomorrow if I need anything. I'm just checking what I would assume are the wrong places first. How's our plant doing? Oh shit, Charlie? See how he's doing. It's not today, no. How's Charlie doing? Buddy, buddy pal, buddy friend. How you doing? Mia's favorite plant, name is Charlie. Maya's gotten the knack of watering it. Charlie's been perking up these days. He's doing pretty, look at him. I hope uh, for case five, it's just like grown through the roof. There's rubble everywhere from where it burst through the ceiling. That made me so happy. Uh, anything here? December 26th, Police Department, Criminal Affairs. Detective Gumshoe's not here. Gumshoe's at the scene again today. Huh? Uh, oh, really? He's a live wire, that one. Got into a fight with the chief for not following protocol. Not following protocol? Bet he wouldn't help them build the case against Edgeworth. Hmm. Maybe Gumshoe's all right. Gord. Hey, Gord. There are fewer than there were yesterday, but the cops are still around in the park. Wonder if Detective Gumshoe's here today. Ba -da 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 
boo 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 I am a lawyer too. Haven't seen Larry around today at all. Probably off paying through the nose on a date with the lovely Keyonce. Hmm. Thanks, gumfuck. <laughs> uh, how about the rental shop? Looks like the boat rental shop's closed today, too. Great. What if you, like, stay on the screen for 15 hours, Gordy just appeared? Just slowly rises at a rate of one pixel per hour. That'd be a really cool Easter egg. There he is. Detective Gumshoe. Hey, pal. Trial today at, uh... Yes, what about the trial? Well, I was gonna say good show, but it wasn't really all that. Though he did save Edgeworth, I guess. Just wasn't sure how to thank you, you know? Thanks. Good chat. Nominative determinism got to him. It got to everyone in this universe. Detective Gumshoe? Any idea what strategy Von Karma is planning for tomorrow? Sounds like he's bringing in another witness. Another witness? Right, he said something about that in the trial today. There were two witnesses. Oh, that's what he said. I was wondering who that other witness was. Uh, who was it? Sorry, pal. As much as I'd like to, I'm not at liberty to, di to divulge that information. Right. Follow up, Prosecutor Edgeworth. Oh, right. I wanted to ask you something about Edgy. What's up? Is he afraid of earthquakes? Never heard anything about that before. Mr. Edgeworth doesn't talk about himself too much, see? But there's one thing that's clear as day. Him hating crime the way he does, and him becoming a lawyer, and him being scared of earthquakes. It all started with that incident. The DL6 incident? Yep, that's the one. 15 years ago, when he saw his father shot before his very eyes. He still feels the pain now. You can see it in his eyes. Hmm. Wanna well, talk to you about Maya Faye? Huh? She's not out on a bail yet? That's strange. I told him to let her go as soon as they had the report written up. Man, I don't know what would have happened in that courtroom today if it weren't for her. Seeing her getting dragged out by the bailiff. I'll be honest with you, pal. I shed a tear or two. Edgeworth, he was so moved I saw his lip trembling. Really? Cold as ice, Edgeworth. He was really grateful for what she did, you know. I'm going to head back to the station. I'll get the report on Maya and get her out of there as soon as I can. Thank you. Oh, wait. Uh, I was wondering, how much is bail going to be? Don't worry about that. Mr. Edgeworth is posting the whole amount. What? Edgeworth? Didn't I tell you? He's grateful to her for what she did. All right, pal. Well, don't forget to go pick her up, okay? Like picking her up from daycare at this point. Going to the detention center. Hmm. Maybe I can get Edgeworth to pay this month's rent, too. I, I know. I'll create an elaborate ruse wherein I'm forced to become roommates with Edgeworth. Thereby, he has to pay for rent. And then, oh no, it's a one-bedroom apartment. Of course. He'll never see it coming. No other motives, Your Honor. They were roommates. Brilliant plan. Thank you. Uh, to the center or to the affairs department? Truly devious. He'll see something. See, I... Viz? Hey, Nick, you finally came. They just finished the paperwork. I'm free to go. Free at last, eh? Those interrogators really mean. They were like, okay, what did you do this time? <laughs> like I was some kind of criminal. Can you believe it? Well, they let you out in the end, didn't they? Mmm, technically not. She's still in there. That reminds me. Thanks for bail. Thank Edgeworth. Huh? He posted bail for you. Said he was grateful for what she did. Mr. Edgeworth did that? I have to make it up to him. We've got to win this case, Nick. What do you think we should do next? We're kind of lacking in the clues department. We could go to the park and look for Gordy. I, I was kidding. Still, if there are any clues out there, the park's as good a bet as any. What do you say? Should we head down there? Sure. What to cook for dinner? Yeah. 
He's he's got um he's got the uh, uh um I got nothing. Bring his intro music. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah. Unless she just wants more samurai dogs. I want samurai dogs. Yeah, Undertale. I mean, it's this era of like Game Boy Advance ish. I mean, I know it's the DS game, but it's like the Game Boy Advance style quality and synths and stuff is in a lot of stuff. Like Undertale has a lot of Game Boy Advance style music. Have you noticed anything lately? Hmm. You know, I did notice one thing while I was here in detention. It's really pretty comfortable here. It's warm and they keep it very clean. I meant, have you noticed anything about the case? Well, not much more than that, no. She's probably still upset about Mia. I should leave her alone. Okay. Let's go back. Actually, let's just see if uh, Gumshoe's here now. He's not. All right, then let's go. Yeah, no, it was a couple months ago now, at this point. Uh, do, do, do. There aren't many cops around today, are there? They're probably back at the precinct working up the case against Edgeworth. Naruto Park? Hmm. Hey, y'all! It's Lada! Y'all really did it today. What did we do now? Nah, I'm not complaining. See, I did a little thinking. A little self-reflection, you might say. I realized that being a witness is a mighty big responsibility. But I just went up there and started blabbing any old thing that came to mind. Lotta. So you see, I want to make it up to y'all. Make it up. You have more evidence to share with us? What did you think of the trial? To be honest, I was doing it half just to say I'd been a witness. Even though I didn't really see anything. I kind of convinced myself I had, though. I'm sorry, I know I caused y'all a lot of trouble. Well, memory is a tricky, vague little thing that we're all too dependent on in our line of work. Yeah, I sure know that now. I'll be fine the next time I witness a murder. Is that something you're planning on doing? Right! You mean the first time you witness a murder. Oh, damn. I mean, she did witness this one, just not very well. What about Gordy? Right! Well, the way I figure, the trial's only stoking the flames of Gordy fever. I'll get my exclusive photos and rock it to stardom. All right, Lotta, you go, girl. I wish I could be an investigative photographer, too. Finish your spirit medium training first. She can do it all, Phoenix. Lotta, what do you mean by making it up to us? Well, you see... Actually, I got a bit of information for you. What? That Von Karma didn't want me to say nothing about it. What information? Now we're getting to the heart of it. See, I reckon we might be able to do ourselves a little exchange. Ex exchange? Uh, I thought this was to make it up to us. Right. I propose a little exchange to make it up to you. What? Information don't come cheap, my friend. Uh, hey, I see you thinking, my, how unsophisticated these Southern folks are. It's written all over your face. Let me tell you, most Southerners are way more sophisticated than you. I'm just the exception, okay? Well, what'll it be? We gonna deal or not? What do we do, Nick? Let's deal, let's fucking deal. We don't have any other leads, I don't think we have a choice here. How much, huh? You completely off your rocker? I may not be sophisticated, but I'm not trying to rob the poor. Huh? The only fair exchange for information is information. Listen good. What I need from you is information about Gordy. Whoa, 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 Gordy? But Gordy does, I, Gordy might not exist. Then bring me proof that shows he don't. I'll be keeping watch from the car, okay? You see something, y'all come to me first, got it? Okay. Right. See y'all later. Okay, Nick. Let's get hunting. This is all Maya's been waiting for. H hunting? You don't seriously mean... Gordy? I sure do. What about Edgeworth? We're searching for Gordy for him, Nick. Don't you see? And how exactly do we search for a make-believe monster? Maybe we can find a monster myth specialist? I know a guy who knows a guy. You can't prove a negative, but you unprove a positive. 
It's quite shrimple. Uh-huh. What's that? The Steel Samurai! Someone erected that in the last, like, ten minutes since we were last here. Yo! Maya! Larry! The heck is this? It was my girl Keonce's idea. She was all, if you like, put this here. It would be, like, really cool. Dude, she gave it to me along with the banner. Wow. That's really impressive she could find those for you. Well, she knows a lot of people. And that show's finished now, so she got them for free. Right. Where'd Santa go? Oh, it's after Christmas. He receded back into the Earth's crust. How is Santa? Yeah. I'll get you next year. Yeah, there he is. Yo, Nick! What happened with Edgeworth? Well, he made it through the first day in court, all right. I don't know how good our prospects are from here on, though. Hey, Larry, did you know Edgeworth's secret weakness? He's terrified of earthquakes. He acts like a little boy. Huh? That's weird. I don't think he was ever like that in school. No, really? Well, we were only in the same class for a year. He transferred schools pretty quickly. Transferred? Right, when the DL6 incident happened. Doesn't look like Larry knows about it, though. Hey, Larry. What was that big thing up there before? Oh, the big guy? I've had that for about a month, yeah. It's a big hit with the kids. Why is he sweating? Why wasn't it there yesterday? Huh? Oh, right. The compressor was busted. Compressor. It's that little unit my, by my hot dog stand. That's what I used to put air in the Steel Samurai. It broke a little while ago, so I sent it in for repairs. And here, I thought you'd inflate it by yourself. Hmm. What's the matter, Compressor? Oh, a Compressor! Doesn't that Steel Samurai look a little out of place? I mean, it's so huge. I guess it's good advertising. Something about this Steel Samurai just doesn't work for me. But really? Looks pretty well made to me. Hmm. Still a novice, aren't you, Nick? Really? True connoisseurs like Cody and me don't fall for this kind of stuff. These Steel Samurai fans are obviously in a league of their own. What's this machine? That? That's a compressor. I use it to fill up that balloon there with air. Neat! Just got it repaired yesterday. Man, what a drag that was. Why is he being so weird about the compressor? Sir. Uh... Those flags look sadly out of place here. Flapping listlessly back and forth in a cold wind under a cold sky. Oh, I think it gives the place a kind of festival atmosphere. Reminds me of the War of the Eyeglasses. The War of the what? What? You mean you don't know the War of the Eyeglasses? The heck is it? Our local fair used to do it every summer. I guess we were the only ones. I ask again, what the heck is it? Brazil located. Sir, we're detecting Brazil in the local area. It's always so quiet here. I wonder if the bookshop is closed for good. With the murder on the lake and all. They're probably just taking a vacation till it blows over. I get it. Is there anything else to look at here? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Boat rental shop. Close because the murder. <laughs> You know, the same holidays? Weird. Anyway, see you later. Hmm. The original dialogue. Mm-hmm. Hey, y'all. Well, y'all find anything out about Gordy? Uh, nope. Well, keep moving. It gets cold out here at nighttime. It is a little chilly. I think I have to sneeze. Oh, no. Whoa, no you don't! No sneezing! What? Shoot! Ah! 
I told y'all no sneezing. I set the camera to respond to things a little softer than a bang. It trigger on one of Von Karmer's finger snaps now. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, sorry's nice, but what about my film? Nick, pay the lady. Ugh. Ugh. What happened? I learned something in today's trial, that's for sure. Testifying is serious business. That's why I decided not to talk about that case anymore. Huh? Well, didn't you say you had information about the case? Tell us that at least. Like I said, I'll trade it for the dirt on Gordy. Mm-hmm. What are you gonna do if Gordy doesn't exist? I'll quit being an investigative photographer. What? After all, I only have one photo of my name so far. Was it a good one? You bet. A UFO. A UFO? Anyway, if I can't get a career making photo this time around, then that's it. I'll quit and go back to school. So you really are a university student. Yeah, well, I'm taking a break for a bit. Right. Uh... I'm glad I did that enlargement. No kidding. If we didn't have that, Edgeworth would be in prison now, or worse. Moon prison. There's never a lack of drama when you're on a case, is there, Nick? What, are you always on the verge of horrible failure like this? Uh... Careful, the stress will send you to an early grave. Thanks for the cheerful message of support. Um, uh, you know, I was wondering... Yeah? What if you get a picture of Gordy, and it turns out like this enlargement did? Y'all crazy? A blurry picture like this doesn't make a hit story. I need a picture that screams, I am Gordy, hear me roar. I can't turn something like this into the paper? What kind of a fool do y'all think I am? The kind of fool that would turn a blurry picture in his evidence in a murder trial? Not to mention claiming she saw something she didn't see. Say this out loud, Phoenix. My God, she needs to hear some of it. Yep, but I'd say I don't know exactly squat about that. Painfully easy to know when something doesn't catch a lot of interest. What about a gun? I know diddly squat about that. I have nothing to say about my own disposition. Or deposition. Not disposition, that's a different word. Uh, okay. We got, we got any other clues out here? Because... Man, I don't know. My deposition never happened. A lot of this camera's staring at the lake, as usual. That camera must have cost a pretty penny. Hope she doesn't leave it out here to get stolen. Hmm. Uh. Uh, no camping. What well, if the science is no sitting tents on fire? Yeah. So, I don't have anything to go off of. Where am I supposed to get more clues from? Uh... Uh... It, do I need to stay here? Okay. There's Gumshoe. Hey there, pal! What's up? You look out of sorts. Wait, you didn't go and do something that's gonna hurt Mr. Edgeworth's case again. What do you mean, again? Whatever, have a seat, pal. I'm here for you if you need anything besides money, that is. Okay. How's the investigation proceeding? It's not, really. We have another meeting coming up. We're supposed to talk about Mr. Edgeworth's motive. His motive? See, Mr. Edgeworth's father died in the DL6 incident, and the guy who got the lone suspect declared innocent was the victim in this case, Robert Hammond. They're saying that's why Mr. Edgeworth shot him. And Edgeworth never talks about his past. I bet they'll drag that out and hit him with it in court tomorrow, too. Poor Edgeworth. I gotta admit, it doesn't look good, pal. These ligmas six. Say, Detective Gumshoe, do you know Gordy? The monster down in Gord Lake? Not personally, no. Well, we're looking for him. Huh? Are you out of your minds? Eh. 
You got time to go wild monster hunting? How about doing a little questioning for me then? Oh. Detective comes, she was scaring me, Nick. Don't cry, Maya. I told Detective Gumshoe about the deal with Lotta. Nick, try telling him sooner next time. You tell him before you ask him about Gordy. Uh, sorry. I see, pal. Sorry for shouting at you. Okay. I, Detective Gumshoe, will aid your search for Gordy. Huh? I'll loan you one of our newest secret weapons for finding evidence. Really? You can take whichever one you like. It's a hydrogen bomb. Give us the goods. Hold on now, everything in due time. First, let me show them to you. These are our best and brightest. Introducing secret weapon number one. Missile. Missile. He's a canine police dog still in training. Missile, missile, here boy. Here he is. Hey, he's cute. Look, Nick, cute dog. A cute dog. And this will help us, how? Next secret weapon number two, a fishing pole. <laughs> he's giving me a dog in a fishing pole and I'm gonna go to the lake and just have a nice afternoon. This is my own personal pull. Detective Gumshoe, we're looking for a monster. Yeah. How are we supposed to catch a whole sea monster with a fishing pole? Never know till you try, pal. Okay, this next one's the last one. No, please, I'm already overwhelmed by our choices. Secret weapon number three, a metal detector. Here. Detective Gumshoe, we're looking for something alive. Right. How are we supposed to find it with a metal detector? Hey, you never know, I might have been eating soda cans. Well, which will it be? Um, I can't make up my mind, Nick. They all seem so perfect. I can't make up my mind either for the totally opposite reason. I suppose it can't hurt to borrow one of them. I, I mean, I mean, how could I say no to missile? I gotta get, I gotta get missile. Give me missile. I'm being chastised by a little doggy. Can we borrow Missile? Sure thing, pal. Be good to him. He's so cute! Oh boy. Borrowed K9 unit missile from Detective Gumshoe. <laughs> He's got a fu <laughs> fucking photo is so good. Alright, thanks. Back to the beach, I guess. I'm glad I played Ghost Trick first. Yeah. No kidding. Because I get what they're saying you up for, where they're like, oh, we have a secret weapon for you. It's called Missile. You're like, you're giving me a goddamn Missile? Missile's the name of a dog. That's a good bit. If you played Ghost Trick first, though, you're just like, there he is! It's Missile! There's my boy! Yeah. All right, Missile, get sniffing. Hey, Nick. Missile's been acting strangely. Missile, right. That little creature of yours. La Creatura. Hey, I love little doggies. Good boy, good boy. Rah, whoa, he's smiling. What's wrong, Missile? Eek. Missile! <laughs> oh my fucking god. <laughs> oh my god, he's dead. <laughs> Holy shit. My samurai dogs, he ate the hot... You left the hot dogs out. The missile got him. He ate every single one. I'm sorry, Larry. Sorry? Sorry don't pay my bills, Nick. Uh, it's gonna have to this time. Uh... Now he's gonna get sick. Poor doggo. Well, good, good job. Okay. See anything, Missile? It sure doesn't. How about at the rental shop? Nope. Nothing. So. 
Oh, do I have to present missile? Right. He is in my inventory. Hey, Larry, look, it's missile. Isn't he cute? Keep that mod away from me. What am I going to tell the big boss? Big boss? Is the big boss in charge of your hot dog stand? Maybe the stand is a front for a mafia money laundering scheme. Sure. Maya, I think you should probably try to look a little sorry about what happened. Oh, right. Eh, my poor dogs. Look at- he couldn't- look at him. Over there, look at him. Missile. What a thrill. Uh, woods. Check out this dog. Check him out. Hey, Lada. Oh, cute. He yours? He's a canine police dog. His name's Missile. Huh. Canines are the ones they use to sniff for things, right? I wonder what Gordy smells like. Hmm. I hadn't thought about that. Well. Look at this photo, dog. It seems that Missile is entirely useless in solving the crime. Uh, which is kind of the best case scenario. Big fan of that. Uh, check out this dog. Missile's a big star in criminal affairs. Why is he named Missile? Huh. Now that you mention it, I'm not sure. But I hear he's aptly named for what it's worth. Because he fires off like a missile. Uh. Uh. Yeah, I get. I get. Detective Gumshoe, can we borrow one of the other things? Yeah, sure, pal. I have to take back the last one I lent you, department policy. Take your pick. Which will it be? So. So missile doesn't actually help you. You take him to the scene of the crime and he eats all the hot dogs and then is done. That's pretty good. Can we borrow that fishing pole? Sure thing, pal. If it breaks, be sure to dispose of it properly, okay? Right. He's completely useless, yes. It helped. Did that help? Borrowed fishing pole. Hey, I still have missile in my inventory, though. Huh. That's what he's for. Yeah. Oh, he's gonna go. It's funny, one day I woke up and wanted a fishing pole. Do you like fishing? I've never gone. I just wanted one so bad I went out and bought it. Never used it, actually. Must have been one of those midlife crisis things. Yeah. Every midlife crisis involves a fishing pole. You know, you can't catch many fish in this lake. I'm not after small fry. I'm after the biggest fry of them all, Gordy. You really gonna try to fish out a monster? Save Edgeworth, yes. Brings a tear to my eye in more ways than one. Okay. Gumshoe's dirty. Uh, I can, I can find out. Gumshoe is not listed. There he is, 30. Greg Ridgeworth, deceased. Lot of heart, 22. Larry Butts, 23. Marvin Grossberg, 64. Robert Hammond, 48. Misty Fay, 46. Manfred, 65. Maya, 17. Miles, 24. Yeah. I'm older than Gumshoe. Don't remind me. Feels bad. Hmm. Okay, Nick, this looks like a good spot. Yeah, you're older than Miles and Phoenix. A good spot for what? Time to do some fishing. She's serious. What are you going to use for bait? Oh. Yeah. Oh. Hmm. I figured something like this would happen. We should have brought Missile along with us, too. At least then we'd have bait. Nick! How could you? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Hmm. Some jokes are better left untold. 
Oof, she hit me. Okay, watch this, Nick. Just try not to reel in any empty cans or boots, okay? Here we go. M my leg! What are you doing? Sorry, Lada. Don't tell me y'all are on some film company's payroll. Nick, pay her. Dear, dear. Uh, not the film again. Lotta, wait for catching Gordy. A fishing pole? Are you out of your doggone mind? Should have brought the dog. Yes, I mean, yes, it's a fishing pole. Huh. Never thought of that. Good luck. Thanks. I don't believe it. Okay. Um. So, is the fishing pole also a bust? We only succeeded in wasting more money. Cool. Time for a metal detector, I guess. Alright. We fished to win. And what did we win? Nothing. Hi there. Give me the dog again. Remember, you're hunting for a monster. Anything's possible. Thanks. Okay. I'm out of here. See you later, dick. Pick the Bucket Brothers next time. Surely they can solve this problem. Oh, the Bucket Brothers. If they can't do it, someone else probably can. Sorry, Nick. I don't know much about that. I'm a mere seller of hot dogs. And where are your hot dogs? Listen! It's not my fault. Hey, Lotta, look at this. It's a metal detector. I know what it is. Um, I'm not sure it's gonna pick up Gordy, though. Unless he's been eating people's watches or spare change or something. Oh. Hadn't thought about that. Um, Can we check the beach? With the metal detector? No. Is this even less useful? Let's go to the boat rental shop. Maybe, maybe we'll pick up something there. Like some evidence in the sand. There you go. Boy, that sounds great. Nick! It's beeping! It found something. Sure is loud enough about it. Whatever it is must be in those bushes. Go check it out, Maya. Sorry about that. Why do I have to check it out? Nick! Look! Huh? An air tank? The valve looks broken. I thought it was Gordy. Maya, first of all, why would Gordy be in the bushes? And second of all, why would a metal detector react to a sea monster? Huh? There's something wrapped around this air tank. Looks like a string of flags? We might as well take it with us now that we found it. It's heavy. Air tank of dubious value. Now, nah, this is gonna tie the whole case together. Just you wait. Empty air tank, the valve is open, a banner of flags is wrapped around it. Is this gonna be some bullshit where there was a man in the lake scuba diving at night in the dark to try and spot Gordy? Or somehow they're responsible for Gordy? And trying to increase tourism to the lake or something, like one of those kinds of things, like a Scooby-Doo kind of guy? And somehow got involved in the murder because don't think about it just don't think about it just don't i'm just along for the ride what an air tank what about it 
Larry. I wanted to ask you about this tank. Have you seen it before? Huh? Me? No, never. Who the heck would go diving in the middle of the winter? There's something about the way his eye twitched when I show him the tank. I think I better pursue this line of questioning a little further. Larry? Is it yours? Is this air tank yours? Why would I have a thing like that? Look, see how there's a string of flags around this tank valve? Just like the string of flags around your steel samurai there. Mm, must be a coincidence. There's, there's strings of flags everywhere these days. Like elementary schools. And used car dealerships. Look, why would I need a tank anyway? To inflate something? You used this to inflate that, didn't you? I inflate what? What else? That big puffy steel samurai. Now why would you go asking me a question like that? Looks like I hit the nail on the head. Right, right. Actually, um... See, the compressor I always used was on the fritz. So I tried using the tank to inflate it just once. And, uh, it didn't go so well. As I suspected. It didn't go so well? Uh, yeah! Do you think it could be a little bit more specific? Hey, come on. Look, it's embarrassing, so I really don't want to talk about it. Tell us! Tell us! Tell us because it's embarrassing! Says Maya. Fine. Whatever. It's like what I said. The compressor was busted. So I took the tank and tried to fill the samurai up with that. And then... Bam. The valve busted open and made this incredible noise! And that tank there just took off like a rocket. And it took my poor deflated steel samurai with it. That's Gordy, isn't it? Off in the Gord Lake! It sure scared me out of my gourd, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. You're Gordy. I know I am, but what am I? The tank and the steel samurai you were trying to fill up flew away. What happened next? All that happened on the, well, on the 20th or so. A week ago. As far as I could see, the tank went flying out into the lake. So I went out every night in a boat looking for it. Every night? Every every night, Larry? I mean, Keonse gave me that steel samurai after all. And when did you find it? Just the night before last. It flew way out there. It took me four whole days to find it. The night before last was the night of the murder, Larry. <laughs> Fucking damn it, Larry. Sorry for not telling you, Nick. Actually, I was here on the night of the murder. You can't just stick your tongue out, your tongue out and close your eyes and rub the back of your head and act all innocent, Larry. Y you fucked me on this, Larry. You see, I went home before midnight. Uh-huh. So you didn't know about what happened. Nope. That's too bad. It's not all bad. We've solved one mystery, at least. A mystery? Maybe we should go tell her. Yep. Gordy isn't real. But Lucia is real. Gordy. Well, Mr. Lawyer, I've got the info y'all need. Y'all got the scoop on Gordy for me yet? Ladies and gentlemen, we found him. Points the air canister and deflated balloon. Gordy doesn't reel. Lada, there is no such thing as Gordy. But what? How can y'all be so sure? Really, Nick? Y'all got some proof Gordy doesn't exist? The proof that Gordy doesn't exist is out there somewhere. <laughs> X-Files theme place. The truth is out. I want to believe. Of course I have proof. No lawyer worth his badge would make a claim without the proof to back it up. Here's the proof that Gordy doesn't exist. I want to bar leave. Larry's air tank? What are y'all doing with an air tank? This is Gordy. Um, excuse me? What exactly are you saying, Nick? 
There's a stand near here. A hot dog stand. Temporarily out of hot dogs for no reason. We don't know why. There's a giant inflatable samurai doll there. About a week ago, an idiot who happens to be my, a friend of mine tried to fill it. He used this air tank, and when the valve blew, the tank flew into the lake. Apparently, he made a pretty loud bang when it flew. A bang. The tank, along with the still deflated samurai, fell into the lake. At the same time, a couple was taking a photograph of the lake. This photo. Wait. So, you're saying that Gordy is really the Steel Samurai? Well, that's a fine way to ruin a gal's dreams. Oh. Uh, I'm sorry, Lotta. Nah, it's okay. You win. I'll give you your info like I promised. Poor Lotta. Information? Tell us this information you have, please. A promise is a promise, I guess. I overheard the cops around here saying something about the witness tomorrow. They said he's the caretaker of the boat rental place up the path here. Boat rental. There's someone there? I mean, it looks so deserted. Just an old guy living all by himself. Y'all should go check it out. Thanks, Slada. We will. Let's get cracking, Nick. Hold on. Something else? Yeah. The night of the murder. My camera clicked twice, you know. Yeah, I know. You want to show us that second photo? So you have another photo? Well, yeah, but there's nothing in it at all. Just the lake. I figured it wouldn't be much use as evidence, so I kept it to myself. Well, it might not be helpful at all, but here, take it. Second photo added to the court record. Bye now. Y'all take care. Time for me to pack up and leave. Sad moseying noises. Poor Lotta. It's all Larry's fault. The legend still lives on, I guess. The legend? Yeah, the legend of Larry, familiar to all who know him for any length of time. When something smells, it's usually the butts. Hmm. Someone should whip that butts into shape. Yeah, just do some squats. Hyper squats. Uh, let's take a look at that photo. Shows an empty lake taken up uh, automatically on 1224 at 11.50 p.m. Interesting I can't look at the picture as if there actually is a detail hidden in that photo that will come to light later, but I wouldn't know anything about that because I've never seen a murder mystery before, and I don't know how they work. Sorry, Nick. I don't know anything about that. I just have hot dogs and hot, hot, hot don'ts. Don't dogs. All I got are don't dogs. Fresh out of them. Actually, full stock of don't dogs. How many do you want? A trillion? Hot doesn't. Hot knots? Don't dogs? Hot missiles. Hey, Nick. This is the boat shop that Lotta was talking about. You're right. Doesn't seem to be anyone around at all. Well, let's go check it out anyway. Knock, knock. Not the police. Probably close because of the murder. Um. Window? Um. Um. Uh. No. Hi, Shiv. Um. Cool. Doesn't look like anyone's around. I... Um... Oh. Okay. okay uh, of course. Sometimes you have to interact with a door to proceed. Sometimes it's just added to your fucking movement screen without it telling you. Meg! That you? Eek! Is that Keith with you? Where have you two been? I've been worried sick. Nick, you handle this. I think I'll leave this one up to you, Maya. Meg! Yes? Finally made up your mind, have you? My mind? You'll run the pasta shop when I'm gone? Pasta? 
Glad to hear it, glad to hear it. You make your old man proud. When you kids left the house, I didn't know what to think. How am I supposed to keep this place running, an old man like me? Polly, the kids are home. Hello, hello. Truck. Nick, what was that? A parrot, the one on the perch. Keith! Y yes I leave the wet noodle in your capable hands, Sonny. Nick, what's the wet noodle? Based on the available evidence, I'd say it's the name of his pasta shop. That's a relief, isn't it, Polly? Hello, hello! Bark! Hey up! And he's asleep. He fell asleep. I guess he's relieved. I would like one pasta, please. Hands you a plate with a single noodle on it. There's your pasta. Uh, um, the pasta restaurant? You must be Ames. Brock? Oh. Um, a pasta shop? I am. To think the wet noodle will live on when I'm gone. My father started it, you know, so that makes you two the third generation. Meg? Yes? Tomorrow we'll start with the secrets of dough tossing. Dough tossing? You too, Keith. Yes, you'll be the best pasta wrangler the West has ever seen. Pasta wrangler? The West? Isn't pasta from Italy? Meg? Yes? You know the best pasta's always been made west of the Rockies, don't you? Right, of course. Everyone knows that. Nick? Huh? How long do we have to keep up with this all in the family charade? This old man must know something about the murder. We're not leaving until we find out what that is. And he's asleep again. Boat shop! Bum, 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 bum. This is a boat rental shop, right? What are you talking about? This here's the Palace of Pasta, the wet noodle. And now that you mention it, we haven't had gotten any many orders for spaghetti lately. All the kids come up and say, yo, dude, we want to ride in one of your boats. That's why I keep them boats out there. Youngsters these days, darned if I understand them. I'm pretty confused myself. Nick, this isn't going anywhere. But this old man is the witness tomorrow, right? Love a pasta boat. Sup, Todd? We've got to find some way of getting information out of him. He's asleep again. Let's talk to the bird. Maybe the bird knows stuff. Bird, who did it? Wow, what an amazing parrot that is. Good morning. He ignored me. Rude bird. What? What? You forgot, Meg. You gotta call her name first. Her name? Polly, how you been? Hello, hello. What? See? Neat. So the parrot's name is Polly. Parrot added to court record. Too bad she can say his hello. Ha ha ha. Old Polly can say lots of things. You just need to know the secret words. The secret words. I call Polly to the stand. Polly, who done it? Mark? Miles? No clues here, just a lot of bird shit. Looks like a kitchen unit. It's pretty clean. Funny doesn't look like the type to keep things tidy like that. You're forgetting, Nick. He's running a pasta shop. You gotta keep a pasta shop clean. Hit, hit. Among Us! Among Us! My god, this parrot is sus! There's lots of various fish in Gord Lake, aren't there? Something's funny, Nick. All these fish are saltwater fish. And? A freshwater lake can have pictures of saltwater fish. Look, a little safe. Hmm. It's locked. Good work, Maya. He has a television in here, too. Wow, he has a television. I was looking at the trash. This fishing pole looks expensive. Look, Nick, he has an electric blanket on his table. Looks warm. I mean, I understand that they wouldn't just say... A tonkatsu. But... Electric blanket on the table. 
Traditional American tonka. I said, I said tonkatsu, didn't I? Katatsu. I misspoke. I apologize. Apollo, eat your American kotatsu. That's a great idea. We should do that at the office. Everyone point. Yeah, you can point. We can sit down with our clients snug and warm and drink hot cocoa. I'm very hungry. I'm always hungry while I'm streaming. What? Talk about murders. You're a party pooper, Nick. Mm-hmm. Ugh. I too like to sleep with tonkatsu lunchboxes. Make the- do an apology. No! I'm not apologizing for having a brain fart. Look, Nick, he has an electric blanket. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um... Let me present you with a bird that you have. I like that the, uh, uh, uh the, the, the snot bubble sneeze pop noise is the gavel sound effect. It's, it's some good reusage of sound effects, Capcom. Listen here, Keith. Remember that tricolor pasta we were talking about? A uh, rainbow lioli. I figured out the last color we should use indigo blue. Rainbow lioli is an incredible idea. Indigo blue? That didn't seem to work the way I thought it might. Hmm. He's gonna be in court late. It's gonna pop and it's gonna be wacky. Listen here, Keith. Remember that tricolor pasta? The rainbow lioli. Um. Hey, check it out. A gun. Boy, you have to wait for him to wake up every time. Okay. Happy Pride Pasta Month. How about Gordy? Rainbow Leoli. RGB Getty. Uh I'm an I'm a lawyer. He's practically 40. That's a lawyer's badge? Y yes, it is. I don't believe it. This old guy is the first person to recognize my badge. I get it. Huh? Hey, yep. I got you figured out now. You're not Keith. I fucked up. Nick, now's our chance to clear things up. Uh, sir? No, I'm not Keith. And I'm not Meg, either. We're here investigating a murder that took place on this lake the other night. Please help us. Hmm, a lawyer, huh? Please, mister. All right, I'll help. But on one condition. What's that? When this case is over and done, you'll run the wet noodle. I promise to run the noodle. Okay, we promise. Yeah! Ace Attorney Pasta Shop Simulator. No one ever told me that the future games of the franchise, you run a noodle shop off to the side. That's awesome. Nick, are you sure about this? Anything to get the case solved. Also, who wouldn't want to eat Phoenix noodles? Legit, though? Him calling an, a, a food product Phoenix Noodles is kind of gross. But if I was at a, a, a pasta restaurant and they were like, we have something called Phoenix Noodles, I'd probably imagine that's like kind of spicy. Got like a kick to it, like fiery, like a Phoenix. Be like, it's probably pretty good. It's probably pretty tasty. I would partake. I guess so. That's my boy. Good for you, Keith. Wait, didn't I just say? You too, Meg. Yes. <laughs> You bring a tear to your old man's eye, you know. What was that you wanted to know? Speak up, Polly. Hello, hello. Uh, now he's talking to the bird again. How do we get him to talk to us? Hmm. Well, he's awake now. So that's probably good. Sir. Age, question mark, question mark. Yeah, he's probably like 34. So I still got a year to go before I'm as old as him. Hmm. I'm an attorney. You won't be needing that badge to run a pasta shop. Toss it. I think I'll hold on to it if you don't mind. Hmm. And he's back asleep. Mm. Uh. Soro? 
Yep, I seen this. You know something about this, sir? Keith! Yes. It's okay. You can call me Dad. Dad! You know something about this? Yep. The other night, out on the lake. Yes? Yes? I know all about that. I seen it. What? Tell us. Tell us what you saw. Well, I suppose. Since you're taking over the shop and all. Do I show him again? Yep, I've seen this. What the fuck was the point of that? Fuck. What the hell is the point if he just is like, yep, I'll tell you what I know. And then doesn't say anything. Uh, what about the other photo? And he's out again. Oh, I unlocked the talk top. You're probably right. You're probably right. Okay. Yeah, okay, good. My memory's gotten worse of late. Same. That's why I just tell everything important to old Polly here. Everything important? I wonder. This bird is the key to the case, isn't it? Polly, what's the number to the safe? One, two, two, eight, bruh! All right! Hey, Polly, watch it, will you? <laughs> See, Nick? All it takes is a little clever thinking. And a criminal mind. Quick, Nick, write that down! <laughs> hey, don't get me involved in your little heist schemes. Ugh. I forgot the time, but it was pretty dark outside. Probably night, eh? Yep. It was after midnight, but okay. Then I heard this bang, so I looked outside. Then I heard another one. Bang! Sploosh! Kaboom! A little while later, this boat comes back, and a young man walked by my window here. He was muttering something to himself, yep. What did he say? Yep. I forgot. I'll remember tomorrow by court time, promise. We need to know earlier than that. You know what? Eh? Little Terry was just here. Terry? Yeah, that kid next door. You always used to make him cry, remember? He was wearing this tattered old coat. Got himself some whiskers growing out of his face. Must be talking about Detective Gumshoe. He comes up and tells me to come down to court tomorrow. Really? Somehow I don't think we're gonna get much useful information from this guy. Maya, maybe we should be leaving. I think you're right. Oh wait, I had one more question. Polly, Polly, have we forgotten something? Rock? Don't forget DL6, rock! <laughs> Uh, huh? What did she just say, Nick? One more time, Polly. Don't forget DL6. What? <laughs> the DL6 incident? Hey, mister. I mean, dad. Hey, he's asleep. This is getting weird. Who is this old guy? Why would that bird Polly know about DL6? We have to figure out who that old man is. What? He locked the door from the other side. Who could that old man be? I think I need to do a little more research on this DL6 incident. Maybe I should ask Gumshoe. What the fuck is happening? This isn't like a... Oh my god. It's all coming together. This is a what the... F what on earth? What in tarnation? <coughs> I'm allergic to case bullshit. Yeah. Hey, Pyo, long time no see. You don't look so happy. Thank you, chat. What's wrong this time? I actually wanted to ask you something. The perfect product. Oh, this is fucking excellent, Waggle Dance. Eva made it in a little backpack. A little backpack with the buttons on it. Ta Tamagorok. Goro? Hey, Cody. This is excellent. Do each of the buttons just commit horrible acts upon him? On-screen chat broke. Did it? It broke? What happened to it? Chat went zoom. Oh. On-screen chat out of time. I didn't notice. It's fixed. Weird. I guess it got backed up and then just went like all at once or something. Hmm. It went night speed. 
it went turbo. Uh, well, you, you know, maybe we had some Twitch turbo users in the chat. Ha ho! Whenever you switch scenes, chat gets the zoomies to catch up. Oh. I see. Well, as long as it's only temporarily zoomies. It went plaid. Good! Actually wanted to ask you something. Yeah? Can I have missile again? Do it again. No. You know the boat rental shop down at Gord Lake? Oh, yeah. The old man who runs it is appearing as a witness in court tomorrow, right? Yahahamagachi. How, how'd you... That was supposed to be top secret. Do you know who that old man is, detective? Actually, I don't. He's a bit of an odd bird. Bird. I haven't been able to get a straight answer out of him. I decided first that he wasn't persuasive enough to stand and testify as a witness. That's why we called Miss Lotta Hart yesterday. As for who he is, we have absolutely no idea. Hmm. Sounds sus. Mm-hmm. Detective Gumshoe, please help us. Huh? We need to know about the DL6 incident. That was when Edgeworth's father died. But I can't help but think that it has something to do with this current case. To tell the truth, I don't know much about DL6 either. Mr. Edgeworth forbade us from reading the file. A, a prosecuting attorney told the police what they can't do? And you listened? I'm afraid I can't show them to you either, pal. What? However, if you can convince me somehow that the DL6 incident is related to this case, well, I guess I'd consider opening the file up. Hmm. That's what you get caught up in the series where it's, it's, it's bonkers. What's that? A parrot? Yeah, I pocketed it. The old man at the boat's rental shop's parrot. The parrot knew about that incident. That incident? DL6. But what? Polly, Polly, have we forgotten something? I'll forget DL6. Heh. I remember. I'm pretty sure that old man must have taught her that word. Yeah, but how would that old man know about the DL6 incident? Wait, what if... What if that old man was connected to DL6? Nick, you think he might be? I get you. Sounds like you need information on the DL6 incident. Through there is the station's records room. I'll give you special permission to go in and find what you need. All right, way to go, Detective Gumshoe. Okay, Nick, to the records room. I guess it's time we faced Edgeworth's past. Okay. The records room. Wow. The parrot was the murderer. The parrot done it. It's amazingly dusty. Ten years of files and ten years of dust, I guess. Let's find that DL6 stuff, quick! Fifteen years ago, both me and Edgeworth were nine years old. We were almost through the fourth grade when he suddenly transferred. Because of DL6? Nick, I found out where the file is. Thanks. That was quick. Just let me know what you want to know about the DL6 incident. I'll go get the right file. Dang. Um... First, let's do a little examining. There are shelves stuffed with case files in the back of the room, too. Forgotten cases rotting away for eternity. Nick, let's go. We need and get out of here. All this dust is getting to me. <coughs> files collected case reports. There's quite a large volume of reports here. <coughs> wow. These are all case reports. Yeah, it's like a graveyard of police cases. I guess my sister's case report is in here, too. Thanks for the hydrate. <clears throat> oh, that case dust is getting to me. I guess my sister's case report is in here, too. Quietly gathering dust. Oops. That's sad. Looks like there are files inside that glass case. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, the case is so dusty, I can't see what's inside. Nick, it's locked. 
They must keep important case files in there. We'll just have to take the whole cabinet then. Come on. Lift it up. First, I have to get a handle on the main facts, like a summary. Right. Summary, summary, found it. Here you go. December 28, 2001. That's exactly 15 years ago from the day after tomorrow. So in two days, the case is closed. The incident took place in the elevator of the district court. So the higher court is literally higher, confirmed. What? Is this the same district court we're holding the trial now? Looks like it. There was a large earthquake at 2 p.m. that day. Part of the court building collapsed and all the lights went out. I was a little oi baby in 2001. I was 11 years old. Wow, that was some earthquake. This is little Miles. At the time, three people were trapped in the elevator. It took five hours for them to be rescued. Five hours. That would be scary like that in the dark. There was a lack of oxygen in the elevator and the survivors were unconscious. A lack of oxygen? The survivors? One of the three in the elevator had been shot in the heart. That was about 89, 2001. That was Mr. Edgeworth's father, wasn't it? Tightest elevator in the world. Airtight elevator. He said that his father was shot before his very eyes. So Miles Edgeworth was one of the other passengers in that elevator. Oh, 2000s. Do you have data on the victim? Edgeworth's father? Yeah, hold on. Victim, victim. Here, found it. Gregory Edgeworth, 35, a defense attorney. If he were still alive, he'd be 50. He had lost that day's case in court and got in the elevator with his son, Miles. Miles? Miles Edgeworth, of, of course. So he was on the elevator with his father. Hmm. From the angle of the bullet and other evidence, it could not have been a suicide. The murder weapon, a pistol, was found in the elevator. The pistol had been fired two times. Where have I heard that before? Huh. Sounds just like this current case. But a boat instead of an elevator. A boat evader. What's going on here? Sus data. Got any data on the suspect in there? That would be the guy that my mom got arrested. Hold on. This is it. The man arrested as a suspect in deal six was Yanni Yogi. He was a clerk in the court, apparently. Lack of oxygen on that boat. Gordy is so big that his inhaling would suck all the oxygen off the surface of the lake. So then they, they, they passed out. So he must have been the third person in the elevator. Then he had to have done it. But he was found innocent, thanks to his defense lawyer, Robert Hammond. The victim in our case. Right. The suspect, Mr. Yogi, was oxygen deprived, so much so he had brain damage. He lost all memory of being in the elevator. After he was declared innocent, he disappeared. Where could Yoki have gone to, I wonder? He may be closer than we think. Hmm. I guess I know generally what happened in DL6 now. Still don't know what sort of impact the whole thing had on Edgeworth. Nick. Are we going to take the whole file? There's too much. We'll never get it out. You're right. How about we just take what we think we'll need? Case file to the court record. Right. That's probably all we'll be able to find here. All that's left is the trial tomorrow. I wonder how Dad will do testifying in court. Hmm. I still have no idea. I have my theories, but none of this... I don't know. There's more shenanigans we don't know about. That much is clear. And we'll figure it out. 10 a.m. December 27th. <laughs> Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Defense is ready, your majesty. <laughs> Very well, apparently the prosecution is also ready. 
Who is the judge here anyway? Mr. Von Karma, your opening statement. Please share theories. I mean, I don't have anything concrete right now. I really don't know. I, I, I think... I don't, I don't know. It, it's, it's, it's like either... Either Miles meant to kill him and then didn't, and then someone else killed him, and that's why he's being weird about this whole thing. Or maybe uh, Gordy did it. Maybe Gordy had a gun. I think I think that the jury's still out on that. If there was a jury, um, I think I think it's gonna. Here's what I think, because I don't know. I think what's gonna happen is through the man in the boat rental shop mentioned that the man walked past the window muttering to himself. I think the parrot knows what he said, and I think we may either bring the bird to the stand, which would be hilarious, or we'll just go back to the bird tomorrow, and there, this will not... I mean, this is only day two. I feel like it's gonna be a day three. Um, and it'll be like, what did he say? And it's like, oh my god, that changes everything. It'll be like that kind of a thing. Um, I think Lada may know more. Obviously, the second photo is gonna be important and show something else that we don't know yet. It's it's like, I don't have the details I need to really make a theory of like, here's what I think happened. It's just like, here's the things I think will probably happen. It's the Glock Ness monster, yeah. Anyway, ah, very well, no opening statements, so. Not so fast, Judge. I was taking a meaningful pause before speaking. Right, of course. It was the most pregnant pause, Your Honor. A prediction. Today's trial will end three minutes from now. Start the live split timer. Order, order. Mr. Von Karma, what is the meaning of your statement just now? Bah, must you question everything? Then it will be over in three minutes. We have no time to waste. I'll call my witness now. Right. I call my witness, my decisive witness to the stand. He called the last one decisive too, and it ain't shit. It's that mysterious boat shop owner. Jojo ass dialogue. Next you'll say, how do you know it will be done in three minutes? How do you know it will be done in three minutes? Bull. Witness, state your profession. I am... I am the proprietor of the restaurant The Wet Noodle at Gord Lake. And uh, I also rent boats. The night of the incident, you were in the boat rental shop, correct? Uh, yep, yep, I was. Please testify. Wait a second. We still haven't heard who this old guy is. Raise an objection. objection. His name's Uncle. I my my guess there is that the original Japanese had had some kind of like familiar like name for him that they just kind of translated to Uncle, where it's just meant to be like a guy that you don't really know the name of. Like OG, yeah, something like OG, some honorific, just like, yeah. He's off his gourd. I promise it's safe for work. That's every time in the courtroom. Thank you for this. All right. Okay. That is, um, that's bullshit, Your Honor. <laughs> Objection. What the hell with any of that? Snazzy tie. Thank you. It's like Donkey Kong. Just wearing a tie over his body. Thank you, Sora. It's very good. Doo doo. Doo doo. Ba dee Uh, one sec. It's a- it's a suit! It's a suit! Trust the process. Wait a minute! The witness hasn't stated his name yet. Because I did not ask him, Mr. Wright. Bah! Bah! Twitch just dropped content classification labels and their guidance says that if you use the sexual themes label, you can show fictionalized female breasts with nipple. 
can my V2 be topless now? Nani? I'll have to read into that later. Okay, Twitch. I have predicted this trial will end in three minutes. No, no, no. Female presenting nipples, let's go. Stop asking trivial questions and cooperate. Yeah, right. You can only do that as long as you don't focus on it. The witness will state his name. Man. Mm. Well, uh, I'm not really sure. Yep. What do you mean? My, my memory. Your honor, the witness does not remember anything beyond the last several years. Ergo, he cannot recall his own name. Hmm. He cannot recall, you say? Yes, but the incident in question took place three days ago. He can testify. Very well. Sounds like a reliable witness. Let's hear his testimony then, shall we? Witness. The night of the moid. Ergo, suck my nuts. It was the night of the 24th, just after midnight. Yep. I was in the restaurant where I uh, rent boats as usual. <laughs> in the restaurant. Then I heard a bang. Oh, yep. When I looked out the window, I saw a boat just floating on the lake. Then I heard another bang. Just about then, the boat comes back to shore and a man walks by my window. Hmm. Very well. I'd like to begin the cross-examination. There is nothing to question in my witness's testimony. Ergo, no need for a cross-examination. Besides, there are only ten seconds left before our three minutes are up. Judge, your verdict now. Uh, yes. Mr. Wright? No, it's, it's pretty airtight. I think that's it. I will save, though. I will just uh, quickly save. I just kind of want to save, for no particular reason. Fun Karma is incredible. Can't imagine being that guy. Nope. Uh, nope. Looks good to me. He's right. That testimony sounded pretty solid. Maybe I should hold back. But Nick, you have to cross-examine him. This is your only chance to turn this trial around. Your last chance. All right. Until my next last chance. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Von Karma. Three minutes just passed. I see. Well, then, let's just take our time. You may cross-examine the witness. <laughs> Dude is okay. It was the night of the 24th, just after midnight. Yep. Can I press these, or are they going to yell at me again? Um. Uh, 15. 11.50. So the first bang was much earlier. I did just say, that's true. I'm gonna try pressing it. Hold it. Just after midnight, you say? Yep, just around then. Are you sure? Pretty sure, yep. When I talked to you yesterday, you were rather vague about the time. I'm surprised you seem so sure about it today. I asked him and he remembered. Isn't that right? He's asleep again. Oh! Uh, don't glare at me like that. I, uh, I remembered it clearly, I did. Yep. You see? Continue. I was in the restaurant where I rent boats. Is there anyone who can verify that? Well, I guess Polly could. That's not good enough for a court of law. Mr. Wright, exactly what's not good enough. Your Honor, this Polly is a parent. A parent? Don't be so hard on the girl, Keithy boy. Keith? <laughs> the prosecution concedes that we cannot prove the witness was in the shop. Witness, please continue. We'll concede that point, but it doesn't matter. It's airtight. What an asshole. I heard a bang. The hell is a parrot? It's like a bird. What's a bird? And where did the bang seem to come from? From the lake, I figure. Are you certain? Yep. Good. Continue. When I looked out the window, I saw a boat just floating on the lake. Was there someone in the boat? It was pretty far out there. I couldn't see clearly. 
But I figure there was two men out there, yep. But you couldn't see them clearly. Yep, at the time that is. At the time? At the time, at the time. Then I heard another bang. So you heard two gunshots total. Yep. That's what Lotta said in her testimony yesterday. Just about then, the boat comes back to shore and a man walks by my window. By your window. Yep, by my window. Right outside the window of my little shack. And could you see the man's face? Well, the fog was pretty darn thick, but he was right there in front of me. I saw him. This is a rather important detail. Please add it to your testimony. Tsk, tsk, tsk. I have a bad feeling about this. That man was the defendant. He was saying, I can't believe he's dead. Well, yeah, that's not good for me. Are you sure? Uh-oh. Hey, such man. D dad Dead certain, Keith! He said, I can't believe he's dead as he was walking by, too. Witness, are you sure that the person you saw was Miles Edgeworth? It was him! That Edgeworth boy! This sounds like decisive evidence indeed. I see no room for doubt. Von Karma. He lured me into cross-examining so he could set me up for a fall. Tsk, tsk, tsk. Nick, I don't like the way things are going on here. I don't like the way Von Karma's looking at us. Everyone in the courtroom is glaring at us. Better act quick or this trial's gonna be over. Objection! Objection! Your Honor! We proved in yesterday's court that it could not have been Edgeworth who fired that gun. Mr. Wright, are you referring to the fingerprints from Edgeworth's right hand found on the gun? And the photograph showing a man firing with his left hand? Exactly. <laughs> that is easily explainable. He could have wiped his prints after he fired. You are ignoring the truth of the matter here. Everything in this witness's testimony is true. The judge is lost in thought. Or maybe he's asleep too. Another objection. objection. Your Honor! This witness claims that Edgeworth said, I can't believe he's dead. But his word is all we have. If he were telling a lie? Mr. Wright, in a court of law, the evidence tells all. Apparently, you have yet to realize even this basic fact. Yeah, but your evidence is witness testimony. Which is inherently fallible. If you say his testimony is a lie, show us proof. Ugh. Nick, do we have evidence? It's no good. There's nothing I can do. Are you sure? To be honest, I don't know what to do anymore. Please. Can you hear me, sis? Please. We need your help. Nick needs you. <laughs> Three minutes was perhaps too high an expectation. However, 15 minutes isn't bad. This must be a new record. Shut up, Karma. Enough, the witness may leave the stand. Yeah. This court sees no reason to further prolong the trial, nor is there any need for more time to decide the case against the defendant. This case is extremely clear. I see no room for misinterpretation of the facts. What? Now! Hmm. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth, Guilty. The accused will surrender to the court immediately. To be held pending trial at higher court within the month from today's date. That is all. Court is adjourned. Wait! Who was that just now? Me! Is it Missile? Tell me it's Missile. Huh? Why? Larry! What are you doing here? Listen, y you gotta listen to me. I, I was, I was there in the park the night of the murder. 
I wasn't sure about it till just yesterday. But today I remembered. Remembered what? The gunshot. I heard it too. I smell like butt or whatever my catchphrase was. If it smells like shit, it's probably the butts. What is the meaning of this? The verdict has been decided. I call for adjournment. One moment, Mr. Von Karma. So you say you heard a gunshot? Yeah, I did a gunshot that night. I was sitting here in the audience listening to the testimony. Then I realized something he said was different from what I remember. Anyhow, I can't just sit here and let you call Edgy a murder. It's just not right. I'll testify. Let me testify. Larry leapt from the second floor. <laughs> Order! Well, this is the first time something has happened like this in my court. I'm not quite sure how to proceed. Judge, you've already given your decision. The trial is over. Nick, this is it. Larry's given us one final chance at this. She's right. If only it wasn't Larry. He can make things even worse. Mr. Edgeworth was just declared guilty, Nick. It doesn't get any worse. You're right. Okay. Your Honor, if there is another witness, it is our duty to hear him speak. Right here, right now. A waste of time. The verdict cannot be overturned. Hmm. Allow me to speak my opinion. In all court proceedings, it is our duty to prevent an inaccurate verdict. In order to make sure no mistake has been made, every witness should be heard. What is this? I withdraw my previous verdict of guilty. Can it just play the animation of the text in reverse? The word guilty just whooshes away. Mr. Von Karma, I order you to call this new witness to testify. Now. What? Updated verdict report. The court will adjourn for a five minute recess. After that, we'll hear this new witness. Court is adjourned. Whee! I'm gonna play on the swing. Ten twenty-eight a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number Two. That was too close. Think about that lamp. Sorry to keep you on the edge of your seat like that, Edgeworth. Hm. I've seen worse. Yeah, right, Edgeworth. You're sweating bullets. Just wonder what Larry plans to say in there. Larry was at the lake that night? Yes. He said he went looking for the steel samurai balloon that flew into the lake. Right. And he found the, t the balloon and the air tank that night? Yeah. Hey, Edgeworth. Huh? You say something right? Yeah, a lot of things. You seem out of it. What's wrong? It's nothing. Hmm? Hmm? Mr. Edgeworth, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. What's that? Why are your fingerprints on the murder weapon? Oh. That. Yeah, that. Probably should have talked about that sooner. When he fell into the lake, I went into a daze. I couldn't understand what had happened. I couldn't think straight. Then I saw the pistol lying on the floor of the boat in front of me. I picked it up without thinking. It's also clearly holding it in his right hand there. Which is correct. The shooter was with his left hand. I didn't have a reason, really. His left arm right, yeah. I see. Why would you do that? You know, I always pick up a murder weapon after a murder has been committed. Right? Yeah. This might be our chance. Our chance? Uh, what, do you, what do you mean, Edgy? You and me? Get out of here? Hit the town? Von Karma has only ever run perfect trials. Perfect trials? Perfectly prepared witnesses, perfectly complete evidence. That's the secret to his success. This is the first time he's ever had to deal with something unexpected. He has let someone he hasn't even talked to testify before the court. And that someone is Larry. What are you getting at? It's likely his testimony will be full of holes, right? That's right, Nick. No 10 minute trial this time. We'll milk this one for all it's worth. It was 15 minutes, 15. Everything depends on Larry now. Hmm. Good old chaotic butts.
Court is now back in session. Witness, please testify to the court about everything that you saw on the night of December 24th. Do you remember? I'm good. How you doing? Please don't milk him. Maybe a little. Leave it to me. Please, Larry, don't me mess this one up. I hate to admit it, but you're our last chance. Von Karma didn't even have time to prep his witness. I just hope Edgeworth is right about this being our big break. The Night of the Mighty! That's gonna be Reset and Karma's part. Mm-hmm. Combo breaker. That night, I was out in a boat on the lake. I was looking for something, and I, uh, found it. So I quietly slipped the boat back in at the rental shop dock. Then just as I was thinking about going home, I heard this bang. I looked out over the lake, but I didn't notice the boat. So after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. Hmm. That was an unusually vague testimony even for this court. In any matter, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. What's that about? Thank you, Viz. <laughs> yes, Your Honor. What's wrong, Nick? It's Larry. I have no idea what he's going to say if I press him. I'm a little scared. Hmm. Well, we've come this far. There's no way to go but forward, Nick. Good night of the matter. That night, I was out in a boat in the lake. Something wrong, Mr. Wright? There are so many things wrong, I don't know where to begin. Ah. Uh, well, okay. First of all, what time was it? It was after 11 when I went out on the boat. By that time, everyone had gone home for the night. So I waited until the coast was clear, so to speak. And why were you out on a boat at such a late hour? I was looking for something, and I, um, uh, found it. I'm, I'm... I was thinking for a while that the first bang had to do with, um... His, uh, the air canister that he got. Because they said the, the vent on it, the, the, the cap on it was busted. And either that happened with the impact of it flying the lake, but, like, why would he leave it in a bush? Like, that's suspicious. Um, but... The boat shopman said he thought the bang sounded like it came from the lake instead of, like, right fucking next to him. That was days ago. That was much, much earlier. Right, I'm saying if something happened as he was recovering it. Because he was like, oh, maybe there's still air in this, and then it, like, popped or something? I don't know. Just Larry things? Just Larry things. Looking for something? Uh, yeah. Mr. Butts, what was it you were looking for? What the witness was searching for is irrelevant. Most likely he was hunting for this Gordy. You know, it wouldn't surprise me one bit if that was the truth. This is all irrelevant. Let's get it over with. So I quietly slipped the boat back in at the rental shop dock. Is Gordy real? Around what time was that? Uh, well, let's see. I figure I was out searching for about an hour. I guess it was around 12 o'clock, yeah. You're not sure? Hey, don't give me that face. I'm not some sort of human sundial, okay? I'm not some kind of monkey watch. Ook ooking at every hour on the hour. People use watches these days, Larry. Then, just as I was thinking about going home, I heard this bang. Hold it. You built two clocks. <laughs> Where did the sound come from? Yeah, well, I wasn't too sure about that. I looked around, you know. Did you look at the lake? Yeah, I looked. I looked out over the lake, but I didn't notice the boat. Wasn't there a boat on the lake? Order, order. Well, Mr. Butts. Whoa, whoa. Everybody just calm down, okay? I mean, it was real foggy that night. I'm not sure whether there was a boat out there or not. Okay, no problem. That's just the most important part of this case. Hm. So after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. So you only heard one bang, correct? Yeah. Hmm. Well, Nick? Hmm. It was a pretty wishy-washy testimony, wasn't it? I guess we should just start working on the contradictions. Sorry. 
I wish I could be more helpful. I wish you could call my sister. It's okay. Um, uh-huh. I was looking and I found it. I slipped the boat back. Let's just safety save real quick. Because I'm probably going to fuck this up. Because I'm not entirely sure what to press on. So let's see. He's doing his best. Uh, I slipped the boat back in at the rental do shop dock. Just sitting back going home, I heard this bang. Looked out over the lake, didn't notice the boat. I heard that single gunshot, I went home. Hmm. Hmm. So what do we got here? The first bang was after midnight. The second bang was before midnight. Sorry, the first bang was the second photo. First bang before midnight. Shows an empty lake. Which seems incredibly relevant. Misty Fay, the Gordy article, overhead map, the pistol bullet, the pistol. I heard two sounds like gunshots just after midnight. I mean, I could try a lot of... Yeah. Uh, um, I found it. I heard this bang. After I heard that single gunshot, I went home. But Lada heard two gunshots. Objection. Wait a sec, Larry. What? You only heard one bang? You're sure? That's what I said. But Miss Lotta Hart testified yesterday she heard two bangs. A bang bang and a perhaps a bing, Mr. Butts. A bing bang bing. And you only heard the bang? Where was the bing bang bing, your honor? I rest my case. And the old man just now said the same thing. They both heard two gunshots that night. Huh? Were you even listening? Were you paying attention at all to what they said? Yo, Nick, please. Huh? You know, something's been bothering me. I'm a witness, see? I'm like a customer here. So you gotta treat me nice and stuff, okay? Mr. Butts. What? You only heard one gunshot, are you sure? Um, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure. Huh? Not sure? How could you not be sure? Yeah, well, I, uh, I might have missed the other gunshot. I was, uh, listening to something else. Something else. My radio, dude, on my headphones. What? He had his AirPods in at the time of the murder, your honor. Order, stop that booing. <laughs> Who's booing? Mr. Butts, you were listening to a radio on earphones? Yeah, so what? That a crime? I listen to my radio. Everybody listens to the radio. What's the big deal? Mm. Mr. Von Karma, your opinion? Waste of time. I do not accept this witness nor his shoddy testimony. Well, Mr. Wright, should he continue the testimony? Yes. Your Honor, please allow the witness to continue his testimony. Bruh! Nothing is more pitiful than a lawyer who doesn't know when he's lost. Very well, Mr. Butts. Please give your testimony. Be sure to include details like your radio. Right, leave it to me! I wouldn't if there were any other way out of this, believe me. He heard a gunshot and he popped in the AirPods. He was like, eh. It's lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. Okay. That's why I was listening to an all request show on the radio, see? I was listening to it real booming loud like. But I'm sure I heard that gunshot. Remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it too. You were listening to your radio at a high volume? Yeah, what's the big problem? Can't a man listen to his radio in peace? Isn't this a free country? I truly believe Larry has no idea what the problem here is. Judge, can you believe a word this witness says? What he heard was probably nothing more than a drum beat from the radio. True enough, it is difficult to believe this testimony. Objection. Wait, your honor? 
The witness said he remembers exactly what the DJ said when he heard the gunshot. Excuse me? DJ? You know, from Street Fighter. An announcer, the guy who says things on the radio. Radio? Anyway, what this means is, when he heard the sound, no music was playing. The DJ only talks between songs, so he could have heard the gunshot from the lake. Objection, DJ songs talk, like, during the intro of a song when it's instrumental before the lyrics, so... That's not really foolproof. I'd like to cross-examine the witness, your honor. I heard that banging track over the lake, mon. <laughs> Very well, Mr. Wright. I can't believe I'm continuing this charade. Uh, since when does Goofy say coconut slice? What Larry heard. It's lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. How lonely is it? I indulged. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> Thanks, Cam. You turned on the radio. Right. I just wanted to hear someone's voice, you know? You don't know what it's like out there alone on Christmas Eve. Alone! I shouldn't have said anything. There's like 20. Shit. That's why I was listening to an all request show. Do you by any chance remember the name of the program you were listening to? That's been happening for a while. This has nothing to do with the case, Your Honor. Objection sustained. The witness was listening to the radio. That is all we need to know. Tell us, Mr. Butts, how loud was your radio set to that morn that that night? I was listening to it real booming loud, like. Real booming loud. Yeah, you know. And you had headphones on? Yep. I wouldn't think you could hear anything going on outside at all. I'm sure I heard that gunshot. Can you prove that? No, no, of course you can't. Good job, Phoenix. Nah, I can't prove it. But I remember that moment real clear. I mean, while I was talking about it, it came back real clear to me, you know? I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it, too. What did he say? Mr. Wright, please cease these pointless questions. What possible good could knowing what a radio DJ said do us? Indeed, Mr. Von Karma has a point. I'll allow the question only if you see some reason why we should care. We should care. We should care, Your Honor. Of course we should. Why? Uh, well, how do you know if we don't ask? Hmm? Very well. <laughs> Mr. Butts, please testify to the court. What was the radio announcer saying when you heard the gunshot? Just when she said, hey, it's almost Christmas. I heard the gunshot. There it is. Thank you. Are you sure? Of course I am. She had this real sexy voice. <laughs> Baby Von Karma was right. <laughs> Not sure this helped us at all. This is the most ludicrous testimony I've ever heard. But there is one gleaming ray of hope in there. I've got to press it until we get to the bottom of what happened. Yep, 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 yep. It's almost Christmas. And I heard the gunshot. Um, time of death, sometime on the 24th or 25th, the photo. Shit, the fo- the photograph. Yeah! Open the action! the action! Larry, are you absolutely sure what you're saying is correct? Huh? What's with the face? You look scary, dude. Hey, if you're trying to scare me, you better know I don't scare that easy. The butts don't scare that. But is something the matter, Mr. Wright? Your Honor, did you hear what the witness just said? The DJ said, hey, it's almost Christmas. Stop crying, Larry, when he heard the gunshot. Indeed, and almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. I mean, yeah, that makes sense. Do you realize what this means? When he heard the gunshot, it was still Christmas Eve. I feel like I've heard that line before. He said the thing. That would seem to be the case, yes. But he should have heard that gunshot after midnight. This photograph is irrefutable proof of this fact. Say the line. Let's see what the time was on the photo taken when the, ga when the gun triggered Miss Hart's camera. 
15 minutes after midnight on Christmas Day. This is a clear contradiction, Your Honor! Order, order! What does this mean? The two prior witnesses heard gunshots after midnight. However, this witness says he heard a gunshot before midnight. Judge, the answer is simple. The current witness is plainly mistaken. Just look at him. Suspicious. What? Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you think about Mr. Butts' claim he heard the gunshot before midnight? He's right... Well, I don't know if it was a gunshot, but he heard something loud. Larry's not mistaken, Your Honor. He heard that gunshot before midnight. Hmm. Intriguing. I'm assuming you have evidence for this wild claim? Show me evidence there was a gunshot before midnight. The second photo. Look at this photograph. Thanks for the bits, Quincy. This was taken by our witness yesterday, Miss Lotta Hart, with her automatic camera. The timestamp on the photo reads December 24th, 11.50 p.m. I didn't mean to hit enter. Fuck. What, what were you going to say, Quincy? Every time I do a mix knife. Almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. I've been stoked to... <laughs> you just say what you were going to say with the rest of it. Oh, yeah? Hmm? But there's nothing on the lake in this picture. You're on it. The real issue here is the skill issue. Is It's not why nothing is shown in this photograph. It is why this photograph exists at all. Quincy got taken. Stoked to... What do you mean? Your Honor! This photograph was taken by an automatic camera. That camera was set to go off in response to loud noises. Aha! Correct. There was a loud noise on the lake at 11.50 p.m. That is why this photograph was taken. Stoked to be here for it, and I was going to add that there's a tradition to post that line from each source of AA medium media on Christmas Eve. That's probably when I've seen it before. I've probably seen people posting almost Christmas memes on December 24th. Obviously, I didn't know the context until just now. It's great. In other words... When Larry heard that gunshot, it was most definitely Christmas Eve. Almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. Indeed, it would seem that is the case. Then where does that leave us? Miss Hart testified she heard the gunshots after midnight. Are you claiming she was mistaken? Not at all, Your Honor. It is a fact that the camera also triggered at 15 minutes after midnight. Your Honor! That night, there were two sets of gunshots with a 25-minute pause between them. Why would this be? I'm glad, Hylian. Don't be fooled, Judge. Apologizing for dunking on chat. No. Dunking on chat is occasionally very valid. That camera was set to respond to loud noises. Yes. Dunking on streamer is always valid. Dunking on chat, situation. There is no proof that the loud noise at 11.50 was a gunshot. Why, the witness could have sneezed, triggering the camera. Hey, my nose was clear that night, man. Clear. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright... There's no turning back now. Can you prove the loud noise at 11.50 p.m. was indeed a gunshot? Show the court evidence if you have any. I can't save. Uh... Oh... The streamer dunks on chat, the mods dunk on chat, chat dunks on chat. Well, so streamer dunks on streamer, mods dunk on streamer, chat dunks on streamer. This is the handshake of streaming. Uh, the bird! The bird said bang. Bing, bang, bing. Fired three times. I missed that detail before. I mean, it doesn't prove that what happened at 11.50 p.m. was a shot. Uh... Um... Uh... Uh, um, that's the only thing I think. Are two sounds like gunshots just after midnight? The gun was fired three times. 
But it could have been fired at any time. This is my evidence. The murder weapon? Something about his pistol was bothering me, Your Honor. Both of the witnesses who testified yesterday heard two gunshots. The murder weapon was fired thrice. When, then, was the last shot fired? Only now have I realized the truth. That third shot was the shot Larry heard just before midnight. That's not really proof, though. It could have just been fired, like, weeks earlier. I just don't know. He was saved during the penalty dialogue. Oh, that's good to know. You got rid of Sans BTTV? He lives on in our hearts and nightmares. That would make sense of the evidence we've seen so far. However, this leaves me wondering exactly what did happen that night on the lake. That's why we're all here, Your Honor. Exactly. If this is true, there were two sets of gunshots separated by 25 minutes. One at 11.50, another at 15 minutes after midnight. Why, I ask you, why? Uh oh, I better think of something quick. Uh... Wait a second. Gunshots separated by 25 minutes. Ah! What's wrong, Nick? I have it! I have it! Huh? Remember the case of the Steel Samurai? Uh, yeah, of course I remember. The murderer in this case had the same idea as the murderer in that case. What do you mean? Maya! Yes? If we don't figure this out now, we'll never overturn Edgeworth's guilty verdict. I've got a hunch and I'm going to run with it. Right, I mean, is this safe? It was a monkey clock! We've already gotten a guilty verdict, we have nothing to lose. You just watch and let me know if I say anything that sounds fishy, okay? If I say anything fishy? Right. Your Honor? Yes, Mr. Wright? The testimony just now has cleared up this entire case. Objection, I'm swole as fuck. What do you mean, Mr. Wright? Tsk, tsk. So, you finally realized the truth? There can be no other murderer here than Miles Edgeworth himself. The, folks, the flashes are a lot. They are a lot. Um, uh, 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 can one of the mods uh, put a, a pin message in the chat? Poor favor. I can also update the stream title. I put a, a warning in the VODs, but obviously that doesn't help you now. Appreciate it. Wrong, Von Karma. A man was shot that night, but it wasn't Edgeworth who did the shooting. Listen, rookie. Take a deep breath and consider the facts. Thank you, Wee. Well, the pin I see is still the one about spoilers. Unless it just didn't update on my side. Uh, at the time of the murder, one boat was on that lake. This was shown by the witness's photograph. The defendant, Edgeworth, and the victim, Robert Hammond, were on that boat. I put pinned message in chat like you asked. Thank you, Weeb. You get a gold star today. There was a gunshot fired on that boat and Robert Hammond fell into the lake. The distance of the shooting was one meter. It couldn't have been suicide. Thank you, Kim. Best mod status. Uh, well? The guilty party has to be the other man on that boat. I admit, it's hard to imagine any other possibility. Yes, but this assumes the victim was shot at 15 minutes after midnight. What do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? We have photographic evidence of the time of the shooting. The timestamp on the photo says 0015. But Larry heard a gunshot 25 minutes before that. Robert Hammond was killed then, 25 minutes before the shot on the lake. That's the only way that Edgeworth could be innocent. Mr. Wright, are you quite mad? Explain who this is sitting on the boat. Well, they're not sitting, but... Uh... Uh... I don't... I don't... I don't... Pads, pads, pads. <laughs> Uh, they're pooping, Your Honor. I don't know. Um, let's let's think about this. 
someone murdered Hammond 25 minutes earlier, and then Miles went onto a boat with a guy who then fell overboard and was shot by someone, used the cell. It couldn't, okay, if Hammond died, I don't think Miles would spend a prolonged period of time with him on a boat in a lake with a dead body that was then triggered to fall overboard. So I think it was Edgeworth and the murderer. How does that work? Because the murderer is trying to frame Edgeworth. We should consult Missile. So if the murderer was not on a boat in the lake, right? If if they were just like hanging out off the side somewhere and he shot a guy, pushed him into the lake, whatever. Then he gets with Edgeworth on the boat and then somehow frames Edgeworth shooting him and then falls overboard and like swims away. And then the older body washes up on shore. And because it's dark and the photos doesn't show who's who, that's the only thing that makes sense to me. Edgeworth and the murder. Of course it was Edgeworth and the murderer! The good music's playing. So I guess that's it. After the murderer killed Robert Hammond at 1150, he assumed the guise of Mr. Hammond and met Edgeworth. But, but, are you serious? Yes. Edgeworth won't tell us why he went to the lake that night. However, I have a hunch. That night, Robert Hammond called Edgeworth to the lake. Now Edgeworth didn't know Robert Hammond's face that well. That's why he didn't suspect anything when the murderer took Robert Hammond's place. That's pretty flimsy, but okay. I'm not sure what to make of all this. Ludicrous. Mr. Wright, tell us the name of the murderer then. The murderer's name? Right. It's... I don't know. I don't know the murderer's name. You don't know? Bah, again you waste my time. I don't know because he never told us. The murderer is the caretaker of the boat shop, that old man. At 11.50, he was the one who killed Robert Hammond. The caretaker of the boat shop? Where did he do this? There weren't any boats on the lake then. Why would he have to go all the way out of the, on the lake just to shoot someone? May I suggest that the real scene of this crime was not in a boat? What? Well then where did this murderer take place? Shall I judge where the murder really took place? Uh, at the boat shop? Around here? Here, of course, the boat shop where he lives. That way he could meet with the victim without anyone seeing. Do you have proof that the boat shop was the scene of the crime? That's a noodle shop, you're right. Shit. Recall Larry's testimony if you will, papa, on the paper. Pa, pa, pa. Oh, oh, I'm gonna go. Oh. That night, he was out on the lake in a boat searching for something. He finds it and returns the boat. Then, just as he's starting to head for home, he hears a gunshot. He heard a gunshot, your honor, even though he was wearing headphones at the time. In other words, the gunshot was very, very close by. And where would that be if he had just returned a boat? The boat shop. We are on day two. His AirPods were in. Mr. Wright, what happened that night on Gord Lake? Please tell the court from the beginning. I yes, your honor. Nick, are you sure about this? Not really. But I think if I start at the very beginning and I take it slow, I might just be able to figure this out as we go. That night, the caretaker of the boat shop called Robert Hammond to his shop. I'm assuming that the caretaker is, what's his name? Started with the letter Y. Who, who, who lost his memory from the incident in the elevator and, and was 
potentially framed for the other murder, the DL6 incident. Yeah, Yogi Bear. Mm-hmm. Pinned it on Scrappy. Scrappy Doo. The caretaker of the boat shop called Robert Hammond to his shop. The bird saw it all. The bird was like, do it, do it. This was around 1150. That was when the gunshot that Larry heard was fired. After that, the caretaker put on Robert Hammond's coat that he just sh shot him with. He became Robert Hammond, just like Agent 47. Then he got in the boat with Edgeworth and went out into the middle of the lake. And who fired the pistol on the boat, Mr. Wright? The boat shop caretaker. Of course, it was the murderer who shot the pistol. He shot twice, both missed Edgeworth on purpose. Wait a minute. Yes. Why would he shoot twice if he didn't mean to hit anyone? Details, details. Know this, Mr. Wright. The moment you run out of explanations is the moment you lose. Tell us why the murderer had to fire twice. To create a wit. Because the first shot missed. He missed his first shot, which was supposed to miss, so he fired a second time. I don't know why this creates a witness, but okay. I believe he shot twice to create a witness, Your Honor. Create a witness? The murderer lifts his pistol and fires one shot. That ensures that anyone who heard the shot would look at the lake. Indeed, Miss Hart did exactly that after hearing the first shot. That's pretty smart. Next, the murderer waits a bit, and he fires again. Then... The murderer jumps from the boat himself, leaving the pistol in the boat behind him. Which then Miles picked up because he was like, huh? The fuck? <laughs> he shot the water and then jumped out of the boat. I see. To someone looking from the edge of the lake, it would appear that one of the men on the boat had shot the other. The murderer didn't know about the automatic camera, of course. That's why he shot twice to draw attention to the boat. Once you realize that, everything else falls into place. The boat shop caretaker swam back to his shop. Then he put Mr. Hammond's wet coat back on the body and threw the body into the lake. This is what happened, Your Honor. I still don't understand how the bullet didn't get smooshed up by shooting into a guy, but... These are the events that transpired that night on Gord Lake. And to prove I'm correct, our final witness, Gordy! Ladies and gentlemen, Gordy, take the stand. And the guy in a big Gordy suit walks out. Bailiff, bring out the witness from before. The boat shop caretaker. Quickly! Gordy Coon versus Steel Samurai in space. Very well. While we are waiting for the caretaker, I would like to ask the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, a few questions. Mr. Edgeworth, please take the stand. It seems like things are wrapping up with this case. But it's only day two of the case, is it not? I feel like there's more bullshit. Mr. Edgeworth, you heard what the defense has said. Mayor. Well... Why did you go to the lake that night? What Wright has said was mostly correct. Astonishingly so, actually. Yes. Several days ago, I received a letter. The letter was signed Robert Hammond. He asked me to come to the boat shop by the lake at midnight on Christmas Eve. He said he had something very important to discuss with me. Something important? I'm sorry, I can't say what it was. Your Honor, sir! Bailiff, we are conducting a trial here. I ask that you remain quiet. The witness has disappeared! He isn't at the boat shop either. What? Bullshit? In my courthouse? I never. Hmm. What should I do? Find him! We cannot allow him to get away. We couldn't catch him, Your Honor. He left a trail of noodles. 
But they go every which way. Mr. Von Karma, your witness has disappeared. Mm. A search warrant has already been issued. That's fast. Mm. It goes without saying that I cannot declare a verdict under these circumstances. I will extend the trial until tomorrow, the final day allowed. I request that the police department utilize all its forces to find that witness. And if they can't find him, then I guess he's fine and Miles is guilty, because this is good. Am I understood? One more thing. Just who is that boat shop caretaker? I think this Id his identity has become very important to this trial. I want him, and I want to know who he is. Very well. Court is adjourned. Gotta convict somebody. December 27th, 1.22 p.m. District Court, the Fan Lobby number two. Yay, Nick, you did it. Yeah. At least we got out from under that guilty verdict. And what about Larry? That was something else. Even Von Karma didn't know what to do with his testimony. Larry really helped us out. Sure, once I sifted through his unique testimony. Still, he did save us. I just wish our cases weren't so down to the wire all the time. I know what you mean. Sometimes I feel like it's us on trial instead of our clients. Hey, Edgeworth. Uh, Mr. Edgeworth? Did you say something? Don't look so pained. I mean, it looks like you're probably going to get off the hook. You could try to smile just a little. Relax. Mm. I'm sorry, but I fear it's not over for me yet. What do you mean? Right. There's something that's been troubling me for a long time now, and I don't know whether or not to tell you. Go on. Edgeworth? No, there's so little time left. I want to tell you to get it off my chest, but... Hmm. I can't make up my mind. What is this about, Edgeworth? It's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed. A memory of a murder. That's a good name for a case. A memory of a murder. A Phoenix Wright story. I had a nightmare. You weren't in it. Oh, that's sweet. Thank you. Blushes and looks away like a dapper young man. December 27th, 2.11 p.m. What was Mr. Edgeworth talking about? Don't lie to your attorney. The game. <laughs> yeah. A memory of a crime I committed. Bashes slash blushes, and Gam says my pronouns. Thank you, Gam. A memory of murder! Do you really think Mr. Edgeworth killed? I don't believe it. Not Edgeworth. Some painful memory has been troubling him recently. But he never takes someone's life. Never! Nick. Yo, how's everyone doing? What do you think of my performance today? I had him swooning in the aisles, huh, Maya? Swooning? Me? Uh, yes, I do remember feeling faint. Right on. Tell me the truth. It was like love at first sight, right? Right, Nick? Huh, me? Uh, well, maybe my heart skipped a beat or two. I think you can do better than that. Come on, I saved Edgeworth in there, my dude. Edgy! You guys should be bowing before me. Yeah, bow before your hero. Yeah. Larry, you really helped out in the trial today. You did! If you weren't there, Larry, I'm sure Mr. Edgeworth would have been found guilty. <laughs> Seriously, Nick. That boat shop caretaker guy's pretty sus. But Edgy ain't off the hook yet. Way to spoil the mood, Larry. Hey, I'm just a guy sitting in the audience, you know. But from where I was sitting, Edgy seemed pretty... Edgy. I mean, can you really know he's telling the truth about that night? Nick? I don't know. But... What I do know is... I'm going to believe in you two until the end. Us two? Edgeworth and... Who else? You mean me, right? Nah, he means me, right, Nick? Yeah, you, Larry. Not... Me? But why you, Larry? Huh? Uh, actually, yeah. Why me, Nick? Enough with the silent treatment! 
Edgy seemed pretty, end of sentence. He's pretty. Yeah. Nick! Why do you trust Mr. Edgeworth so much? I mean, he's changed recently, true. When we first met him, he was kind of a jerk, don't you think? He didn't know him back then. Back when he wanted to become a defense attorney. Wait. Was that when you two were classmates? Yes. In grade school. Flashback music. They saved me. Miles. And Larry. They saved me and I'll never forget it. Through the power of Jesus Christ. That's why I became a defense attorney, you know. What? Hey, Larry. What's he talking about? Uh... Sorry, I kind of forgot. Okay. Hmm. Okay, Nick, out with it. I'm gonna hear this story today, and that's final. Okay, okay. It's kind of a long story, so hang in there. It was the beginning of spring, fourth grade. I was on trial. A class trial. A class trial? The class trial. You remember, Larry? Spring, fourth grade? A kid in my class got his lunch money stolen. Lunch money? Our school was really small. Every month, kids would bring in an envelope with money for lunch from home. I see. Anyway, this kid's envelope disappeared, with $38 still inside. Oh yeah, now you mentioned I do remember that. I can see why you'd forget, though. You were out of school that day. Okay. Anyway, the envelope had been stolen during P.E. class. I was coming down with a cold, so I'd skipped P.E. that day. I was the only one not in class. Other than you, I guess. So they thought you did it. Yeah. The kids in class said I should be put on trial. Trial. So the next day we held a classroom trial with me as the defendant. As the teachers there like, mm-hmm, this is normal behavior for children. I, I didn't do it. Guilty, he did it. Guilty, it was you, thief. Give me my money back, you're a meanie. No one play with him. Admit you did it, you can't hide the truth. Tell us the truth, you can't handle the truth. We're not gonna play with you anymore. You shouldn't be allowed in the relay race or the committee. Give me back my 50 cents. Did you rob that bank? Things escalated there. Now, Phoenix, you know you shouldn't steal people's money. It's not right. In the end, even the teacher thought I'd done it. Apologize to the class, Phoenix. Uh. I didn't know what was happening. I was so sad, I couldn't stop crying. Everyone was staring at me like I'd done it. And Vaughn Karma was there, age 30. <laughs> Just eating popcorn in the back. I tried to apologize. I went over to where the boy was sitting. That's when it happened. He actually yelled objection. He shouldn't have to apologize. The only thing that belongs in a trial is evidence. Anything else has no place. You should all be ashamed. Amateurs. Miles? Oh, there, yeah, there he, look, he's got a fucking bow tie in fourth grade. It wasn't you who stole my money, was it? No. Then you shouldn't apologize. It was his money. Everyone's been shouting at you did it, but no one has any proof. That is why, your honor, this boy is innocent. But Miles, it was your money that was stolen. Yeah, yeah, he did it, he's the one. We don't need proof, make him say he's sorry. Why don't you all just shut the f This is always how it is. Everybody's ganging up and picking on one person. Just think how he feels. He said he didn't do it, so he didn't do it. Thanks, Larry. The butts. Yeah, I thought he wasn't there that day. I guess he wasn't there the day that the money was stolen. But he was there for the trial. Very well. I will replace the money myself. This class trial is over. That's how it happened. That's Phoenix's origin story. After that, the three of us were always friends. And by always, I mean until the end of the school year when Miles left. That... That's excellent. I had no idea. I, 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 I kind of want someone to put... Phoenix Wright's backstory side by side with Professor Layton's backstory. Um, because Phoenix Wright, um, was accused of stealing $38 in fourth grade. 
and Miles defended him, and he went, I want to be a lawyer. And Leighton had the most traumatic tragedy after tragedy of his entire life. <laughs> and decided he likes to help others and be, get an archaeology. Every single detail in Leighton's past is traumatic as fuck. <laughs> ah, shit. What? Look what? It's the same. It's not a competition. No, it's not a competition. It's just like to pit them against each other. It's like, I don't know. I just figured that Phoenix also had some big complicated backstory. No, it's just, yeah, it's fine. A little more that gets fleshed on later. I'm sure there's more in later games. It just, for now, it's fun. It's fun. It's the same picture. $38 for lunch is a lot. I mean, well, $38 for a month of lunches is not that much, but when you're a child, $38 is a lot of money. So there's also that. He's just a guy. I had no idea. Yeah, I had no idea either. I mean, I forgot. $38 buys you one lunch now. <laughs> That's when I learned what it meant to be alone. Totally alone, without a friend in the world. He did a good thing, Larry. Um, yeah, well, I was just lucky that I took the day off from school. If I'd been there, they would have thought I'd done it. So I took it kind of personally, see? When something smells, it's usually the butts. Anyway, Edgeworth and I talked after the class trial. That's when I heard his father was a defense attorney. I remember his eyes would shine when he talked about his father. I'm going to become a defense attorney just like my day did. A famous defense attorney. When I'm older, I'll have a British accent just like my pops. Then a few months later, he suddenly transferred to another school. As the kid that was always blamed, I understand you, butts. Oof. Yeah, it's always rough. The DL6 incident. Right. I'm not sure, but the transfer probably had to do with his father's death. Happy Father's Day. That's so sad. It was several years later when I heard Edgeworth's name again. There was an article about him in the newspaper. The headline was something like, Dark Suspicions of a Demon Attorney. It's a pretty intense headline. Fabricating evidence, manipulating testimonies, covering up facts. The article said he'd do anything to get a guilty verdict. Anything. But what? What happened? I mean, that's not the edgy I used to know at all. That's what I thought too. I tried to get in touch with him, I don't know how many times. He never replied. I guess he didn't want to see his old friends. I couldn't just drop it though. I wanted to meet him, to learn why he'd become who he became. That's when I decided. You don't mean... That's why? That's why he became a defense attorney? To meet Edgeworth? If I was a defense attorney, I knew he'd have to meet me whether he wanted to or not. In court. They're gay, your honor. Edgeworth believed in me and I believe in him. He's in pain and no one's on his side. I'm the only one who knows the real Edgeworth. I'm the only one who can help him. Whoa, Nick. So is that why you helped me out for free? Uh, yes. I helped you because I believed in you, Larry. Except I don't remember saying I'd do it for free. Aw, oh, Nick. Nick. We have to save Mr. Edgeworth if it's the last thing we do, okay? Very well, maybe. First, there's that rental boat shop caretaker. We need to find out who or what he is. I'd settle for who? I guess I can clean out some of this evidence that I long, no longer need. Okay, let's go. First of all, first things first, how's our man doing? How's our big man doing? It's Charlie. Maya's gone the knack of watering it. He's perking up. Charlie's doing good. Basic backstory makes for deeper characters because you get to build your character on a flaw other than getting over XYZ trauma. I appreciate that, Smixie, and I definitely agree. I didn't mean to pit them against each other, as this one's clearly better than the other. I just think it's hilarious how dramatically different they are. But that's good. Perky Charlie, that's what they call him. The whole back supply of that plant through the whole game. It's a great plant. Let me get caught up on alerts. E. And then we'll continue. On to the final day. Trumpet Wings, thanks for soup. Hope you know the Nendoroid figure of Maya comes with a detention center screen. 
I did read that, but thank you again. Squid for brains, thanks for 62 months. Order! The court finds Barry to be a pretty cool dude. Court adjourned. Bye, Judge. Bang. G, thanks for 22 months. Haven't played this in so long. Glad to see you play it. Thank you. Shiv, 46 months. Edgeward sus piano time. He's jamming out. Is this the gayest backstory ever? I mean, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. He was made to be projected upon. That makes sense, too. You know, you don't want to set him up too much. I hit the mic. I did. I often do. I'm sorry. Uh, Smash Man, thanks for 96 bits. The snot bow popping is the same sound as the, the gavel sound. Yep. Three Bs in a trench coat. Thanks for 43 months. I enjoy this game. It's a joy to get to re-experience it again with your fresh perspective. Thank you. When Phoenix is backed into a corner. Yep. 100% accurate. 100% accurate. Oh, yeah, there goes. I see what you mean. Wow. Yeah, it really, it really does zoom. There it goes. <laughs> Random bullshit, go! Yeah, I guess it's because it, it stops updating while it's on that other scene. Yeah, that's the whole franchise. In a meme, Your Honor. Beady, beady, dee, dee. Uh, mild mannered apricot. Thanks for 37 months. Fuck! I need to be able to point. Barjection. Thanks for the resub. Such man. Thanks for 11 months. Barry, which is your favorite case so far? Recency bias aside, I do like this one. The pacing is a lot better than in case three. Um. Hmm. I mean, they've all been good. I don't know if I have a clear favorite. That, that's just like, this one's way better. They're all good. It did have a dog in it. I don't, I don't know. The thinker statue being a clock is going to live with me forever. That's, so that's pretty good. Thank you for the hydrate. Doesn't weakest of the game. Yeah, there's some good stuff in there. It's missile. Uh, but thank you. Uh, Twigs, thanks for 14 months. Reader Girl, thanks for 34. Popping on while I'm on the train, coming back from hanging with my twin nieces. Nice. Hope you had a good time. And hope you have a good train ride. Quincy Morrow, thanks for 100 bits. Almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. That's what it means. Sargoto, thanks for 57 months. Who did it? Me. It was me, Professor. Smash Man, thanks for 100 bits. That was pretty traumatic for a nine-year-old child to have all the kids, even the teacher, gang up on you for something you didn't do. No wonder Nick holds Miles and Larry in such high regard. Absolutely. I I, I, did, I didn't mean to, to downplay it. Maybe I didn't speak well, but you know what I mean. Hopefully. Yeah. Send 2D, thanks for 14 months. Welcome back. And Jake and Bacon, thanks for 96. This is based on the true story the director went through in school, by the way. Kids are fucking mean. And it's fucked up that the teacher yes-anded them. <laughs> Instead of being like, hey, let's not put another student on trial for no reason. Right? Okay, great. Uh, okay. What we got here? Check out this bird, Larry. Woohoo! I was hot out there. Hot. I'm glad someone's happy about how the case is going. He seems too happy to care for anything I show him. Deal six. Photo. Good. Mount detector. Good. They were an improv teacher. Yes, and is all they know. All right, let's move it, move it. Uh, anyone here? DLC six. Hmm. Hmm. Looks like Gumshoe hasn't gone back yet. Gumshoe he won't be coming back today. Oh really? He said there was some guy he had to rest by tomorrow. The boat shop caretaker. He shot something about catching him if it's the last thing I do, pal. Good luck, Gumshoe. Okay. Uh, is Miles here? He is! Oh boy! You accidentally made a good self contained clip with all context needed. Nice. Thanks for clipping. I, I have a bad teacher pushed me into depression. My also teachers inspire me to do better influence, which college I attended. Yeah. Turns out the teachers, like people, are people. <laughs> and some are good and some are bad. You look as grim as always. <clears throat> um, Mr. Edgeworth, I heard the story about the class trial. Class trial? 
What do you mean? Quick little meme. Oh, I missed it. Uh, latent spoilers. Oh. Hmm. How bad are we talking? Okay, yeah, I mean, yeah. If you haven't seen the Leighton games and don't care to know about Leighton's backstory. Rather, if you don't want to see spoilers for Leighton's backstory, uh, look away for 30 seconds. I've done all this on stream, yes, but if you're not caught up on VODs, you don't want to know about some of Leighton's stuff. Uh, this is spoilers for Leighton. So, yeah, Shiv will yell at you and you can come back. Phoenix Wright got falsely accused of theft in the fourth grade. Herschel Layton. Parents were kidnapped, had his identity given by his brother, lost his brother to a one-child adoption, lost his best friend in a deadly archaeology accident, had a girlfriend, girl <laughs> had a girlfriend, girlfriend died on the one-year anniversary. Yeah. It's, uh... It's pretty rough, buddy. That's rough, buddy. Anyway, we're back. Having girlfriend is schmacking you. That's Layton versus Extreme in a nutshell. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna get to that. I'm excited. No more spoilers. We're good. Lane has a grungle face. Yeah. They can't see you crying if your face is a grungle. Real difference is a choice in headwear. Yeah. They're, 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 they're fashion choices. You don't remember about the trial, Miles. No, I don't. Your lunch money was stolen, wasn't it? In fourth grade? Lunch money? Oh, oh, right. Yes, I seem to remember something like that. Nick, I think you're the only one who really remembers. Well, it probably only really mattered to me anyway. I'm glad Phoenix is taking that well, because I'd be like, oh. I, it, it changed my, the course of my life, and I took on a career just to get back to you, and you don't even remember, but that's fine. Yeah, <laughs> and by synergy, for me, it was just Tuesday. Mithra! My lunch money was stolen every day. Oh. I hope you do I hope you had a good lunch today, Mithra. That's what matters. That trial was the reason Nick became a defense attorney. Ridiculous. Gee, thanks. That said, it does sound like the kind of thing you'd do. Pizza! Since tomorrow is your birthday! Happy early birthday, Mithra! I hope you have a good birthday pizza. Well, you already had it. I hope whatever the hell you have tomorrow is excellent. Happy early birthday! Hope it's a good one. You haven't changed a bit, have you, right? So simple. To a fault, even. Well, maybe, yeah. I think you changed too much, Edgeworth. Perhaps. Hmm. This cannon slow burn is good. You share a birthday with Mithra. Happy early birthday, Riley. I hope you have a great day tomorrow. Why prosecute? Hey, Edgeworth, why did you become a prosecutor anyway? You used to look up to your dad. You said you wanted to be a defense attorney, right? I couldn't let myself deny reality like you. What do you mean? My father was taken from me, and you want me to defend criminals? I'm sorry, right, but I'm not that good of a person. One suspect was apprehended in your father's murder, right? Yes, the man trapped in the elevator with my father. His name was Yanni Yogi. He had to be the shooter any way you look at it. Yet, he was found innocent. That defense attorney got him off the hook. That'd be Robert Hammond. Hmm. On that day, 15 years ago. Not to be confused with Yami Yogi. The three of us were trapped in the elevator for five hours. When we were rescued, we all suffered oxygen deprivation. Welcome back, Taco B. Jones. I had lost all memory of the murder. Are we sure it wasn't Yami Yugi? Can you prove Yami Yugi was not at the scene of the crime? Lost your memory? Even now, I can't recall what happened in that elevator. That was the crux of Yogi's attorney's argument in court. He claimed Yami Yogi had been not of sound mind due to the oxygen deprivation. Hey, Mithra. Mithra gifted 12 months to Pot of Greed. Not not just a gifted sub, a year of an except a gift. 
Does anyone in chat know what pot of greed does? I I've always been I've always been too nervous to ask. But I I, I just want to know what pot of greed does. That's a lot of cards. You draw two cards and then what? You draw two cards. What? You draw two cards from your deck and then what happens? It lets you draw two cards. Two cards. That's it. You draw two cards. Okay. You, a myth only gifted one sub, but then Pot of Greed created another, which then used to give to Pot of Greed, which you then. <sighs> Yogi was released due to a lack of evidence. Innocent. You have them. Thank you. That's when I changed my mind. I started to hate defense attorneys. Yeah, shout out to those engineers that built an airtight elevator. That sounds difficult and impressive. Like, like to accidentally build an airtight elevator that loses oxygen in the event of a power shutoff. Pot of greed shot my grandfather was a prolific defense attorney, so now I'm a criminal. Wait, huh? And unsafe. And, yeah. Difficult, impressive, and irresponsible. Those are all my nicknames in high school. What's your relationship with Von Karma? He's my teacher and a man who deserves respect. I learned everything I know of courtroom techniques from him. So he's like my sister was to you, Nick. He is a perfectionist in all things. In court, in his personal life, he is obsessed with doing everything perfectly. Perfectly, huh? In all the cases he has taken on, none were left unsolved. And not one suspect was declared innocent, ever. But, but that's... I know. It's possible some of the suspects were indeed innocent. However, it is impossible for us to accurately determine that in every case. All Von Karma does is his job, to find the suspect guilty perfectly. In any case, it's nigh well impossible to find a weakness in him. Should a weakness appear, he would do everything in his power to make it go away. Um, Edgeworth, if what you're saying is true, you're headed for a guilty sentence tomorrow. He's right! Now's no time to praise the enemy, Mr. Edgeworth! It's a strange situation in which I find myself, I'll admit. No kidding. Um, Edgeworth. I'm an attorney. Here's my badge. I'm not sure I can help you with that. No one can. Uh, about the photo? What are you showing me this picture for? Uh, no reason. You know, I was impressed by your deduction in the trial today. Granted, you were at the end of your rope, but still. That should make it more impressive, you son of a bitch. Nick, he noticed. Don't look at me like that, Maya. Ha 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 Rule number one of being a lawyer, don't praise the enemy. Rule number two of the lawyer, don't have romantic feelings for the prosecution. Sorry. I'm not sure I can help you with that. I know. Hold on. What about the map? I can't help you with that. What about the bullet? Sorry. The gun? Sorry. What about the metal detector? Nope. What about the parrot? He's not just in the bird. The Steel Six case file. It was that case that changed my life. Chief, what's the third rule? I forgot. Three. The third rule is just the number three. We broke rule number two one. Be gay, do crime. Be gay, stop and crime. Well, they don't really stop crime. They deduce crime. And tomorrow, on December 28th, its statute of limitations runs out. Tomorrow. Could that be a coincidence? But even if the case is finally closed on paper, it will never be erased from my memory. Never. Poor Mr. Edgeworth. Free thinking chat win three. Nick, no! That's a photo of his father. Don't show him that. You're right. Now probably isn't a good time to dredge up those memories. What is it? Uh, uh, n nothing. Hmm. Okay, bye. Uh, I gotta go. See it. See you later. How's this officer doing? He's doing good? He hasn't moved an inch since I came in. A real pro. If you didn't, if I didn't know better, I'd say he's part of the scenery. December 27th, Grossberg Law Offices. He's out. Uh, again. When does he work, anyway? 
No, no. Don't be harsh. Guess I'll have to come back later. I mean, to be fair, I think most professionals, in starting at, at the latest, like December 15th, is basically checked out until mid-January. Like, in between Christmas and New Year's? Forget about it. Forget it. What? You gonna try to get shit done? No. Not happening. Looks the same to me. Looks good to me, Chief. Thank you. Christmas and New Year's is fake time. It's like pandemic time, but compressed. Uh... Already went here, right? He's gone. Alright, let's go to the lake. It's a gourd lake! Thank you, Mithra. I appreciate it. Thank you, yikes of the ballroom. Objection! My hair is not that spiky! It's pretty spiky. I'm glad I don't work retail anymore. Shouts to anybody. Shouts to people that work retail. Shouts to people that work customer service. Shouts to uh, teachers. Shouts to lawyers. We don't need. We don't need to do shouts to lawyers. That's fine. Hey pal, long time no see. Shout anybody. Detective Gumshoe. Close one today, eh? People who work. Slow down. No. This is the real relief. Mm-hmm. When I worked at Lush, we measured our time with the company by how many Christmases you'd work there. Yeah. Did you know Mithra cute? It's true. As as Mithra is a part of chat, and chat is cute. It's cute all the way down. I got so worked up, I snapped my tie in half. You snapped your gumshoe? What is your tie made of, sir? Sorry about that? No problem, pal. Thanks to you, we now know who really did it. You mean the boat shop caretaker. Look, I'll make you a promise. I'll have that scoundrel in my custody by trial time tomorrow. Come what may. It's my duty to you as a police officer. Now I'm off to catch me a criminal. Detective Gumshoe sure is active today. One other thing. No one can go into the woods today. The woods? Where Lada was camping? The woods are off limits to camping and apparently the park ranger found out. He got pretty mad. No one can go in for a while. But we're investigating a murder mystery. I guess Lada's in a lot of trouble. Oh. Anyway, I'll be seeing you tomorrow. Bye, Gumshoe. Ha <laughs> ha! I should sneak a van in there. Loudly. Loitering is better than murder. It's a bigger deal. They'll take you down for loitering. The steel eyesore is missing. Eyesore? Looks like the hot dog stand is closed too. Probably because Miss Lee ate all the hot dogs. I guess Larry's been too busy with the trial to show up for work. Samurai dogs? Guess Larry's today off. He was pretty happy about saving Edgeworth. True. We own big. Where will I get my hot dogs? Not from the lakeside hot dog stand, unfortunately. The old trick of pretending to know what she was doing. That's all this game is. That old take old caretaker got away. Yep. I never imagined he might be the real murderer. Ahem. I'd know that clearing of the throat anywhere. It better not be old bag. Oh, it's Crossbird. That's fine. Ahem. Hello. What might you be doing here? Out for a walk? Hmm. Ah, the days of my youth are like the scent of fresh lemon, you see. Mr. Grosper, this is no time for idle reminiscing. Mr. Edgeworth's trial ends tomorrow. That, that is true, yes. But from what I saw of today's trial, Edgeworth should be fine, right? Well, I'm not so sure about that. Uh, what do you mean by that? Well, I'm not sure. Hmm. If you find anything out, come by my office at once. I may be able to offer you some assistance. Hmm. Thanks, bye. What do you think Mr. Grossberg was doing here anyway? Who knows? Kinda sus, isn't it? Bit sus in it today, Professor. The boat rental shop. Doesn't look like anyone's around. The caretaker must have run for the hills, huh? What do you know, Grossberg? Just doing Grossberg things. Looks like it. He didn't seem like a bad person. He seemed like a sus person. There's a difference, Maya. 
There's some boats floating at the dock. The murder took place in a boat from this dock. We- No, we proved the murder took place at the boat rental shop, Phoenix. The police took away the actual boat that was used that night. There's space for one more boat at the dock. Mm-hmm. There's a forest here beyond those bushes. Nick, the forest! There's someone in there! Is it Bigfoot? Is it Sasquatch? There's a few policemen in there. They must be looking for the caretaker. Good luck. Oh. Phoenix forgets sometimes. It's me. Oh, Queen of Size, what are you doing in there? What are you doing in my Phoenix Wright cartridge? They're in the bushes. Yep, yep, yep. Can I go into the boat rental shop? I can. Time to interrogate a parrot. This parrot is no more. Nobody's home. Mithra! They are giving it to you to a queen of size. Thank you. Hello, hello. Hey, it's Polly. I wonder where your owner's gone, Polly. Hello, hello. What? I can't believe he'd run off and leave his poor parrot to fend for herself. Hello, hello. What you, where were you the day of the murder? Can birds hold guns? They can. Can't they? Maybe I should take care of Polly, Nick? Thank you for gifting a sub to Polly, Mithra. Oh god, the bird's inside the house. God, they open a window! It's fucking flying around in here. You probably shouldn't just kidnap her. The police know about her anyway. Get up, room! I'm sure they'll do something. Well, okay. Sorry, Polly. He says I can't take you. Great, now the bird's gonna hate me. Hmm. If a bird try hard enough, it could hold a gun, right? That's what I'm saying. That reminds me, Nick. Polly here knows the number to the safe, right? Yes. That's right. Polly, what's the number to the safe? One, two, two, eight, right? You must be Ames. Let's open it, Nick. Come on. I'm sure there isn't any money in there. Aw. But hey. He keeps it locked, right? So there must be something of value in there. I'm not so sure. Okay, Nick, let's see what's in there. I guess there might be a clue or two. Only thing in here is a letter. A letter? Ah, boring. There's no name or signature on this thing. It's handwritten in very precise, clear letters. Fun fact, parrots have four claws. Two facing forward, one facing back, one that can swivel between front and back. That's- birds are weird. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Edgeworth! Nick! Why would Edgeworth's name be on here? How should I know? I'm gonna read the whole thing. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. It also says this is your last chance. Now is your time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. The rest of the letter goes on to describe the murder plot in detail. How to kill Robert Hammond and frame Edgeworth. Does it say burn after reading? Because, oops. Calling Edgeworth out to the lake, getting on the boat, firing twice. This is exactly what I figured out today in court. It's all here, in perfect detail. Hmm. What do you think it means, Nick? What do you- what do you mean what it- it's very clearly- oh, I don't know. It looks like these are instructions for that caretaker. When he killed Robert Hammond, he called out Edgeworth. He was following instructions. But who could have written that letter? And what does it mean to get revenge on Edgeworth? Look, I don't know. But one thing's for certain. This letter is an amazing clue. Letter from the safe. Added to record. Why are we talking about game facts? Get revenge on Miles Tails Prower. What does he know? Everything's cold. He didn't turn his heater on. Guess he hasn't been back here since the trial. Maya? What's wrong? Uh, oh, never mind. What? Tell me. Just when I saw the TV, I remembered. They're showing a pink princess special this week. Oh. See? That's why I didn't want to tell you. Oh, sorry, Maya. Doesn't look like he used this kitchen much. You're right. 
I guess the whole pasta restaurant thing was a lie. What, you thought he was telling the truth? I mean, you know, maybe he really likes pasta. Say, Nick, don't people usually put pictures of fish up on the wall to boast about them? Yeah, I guess so. You mean pictures of the fish they caught, right? Right. But don't all the fish on the wall here look really puny to you? You know what they say, you should have seen the one that got away. Except the one that got away from us was the caretaker, and we did see him. Why do I feel like we're having two different conversations here? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I should take care of Polly. Don't kidnap the bird. Sorry, Polly. Can I show evidence to the bird? I would like to ask the bird about some of this evidence. I really want to bring the bird in as a witness to trial. I really, really do. I don't care about it not being admissible, admissible evidence in the court because it's from a fucking bird. I just want the bird to take the stand. Gord Lake entrance, boat rental shop. Where the hell can I go? Bird from Skyward Sword? Yeah, that's the one. Your Honor, look at this cool bird I found. Wow. Uh, huh? Okay, nothing there. Maybe we can show this letter to Miles. There you go. Hey, bud, take a look at this. Edgeworth, see this letter? Hmm? This came out of the safe in the shack where the boat rental caretaker lives. I see. Revenge on me? Who is that old guy anyway? I don't know. Sounds like some Saul Goodman chicanery. I've never watched Better Call Saul. You should watch Better Call Saul. And it does sound like some ch chicanery. Have you guys seen the bird that says glass? What if we put that bird on the stand? Hmm. Could he be an innocent defendant who got declared guilty or something? Nice, right? But I don't remember that old man. Not at all. I know, I know I need to watch the final season. So, he was following this letter then. I've been busy playing Zelda, what do you want from me? Which means there was someone else behind it. Now is your time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. Two men, meaning myself and Robert Hammond? It also says this is your last chance. You have no chance to survive, make your time, ha ha ha. Last chance. Wait, maybe. Maybe he's talking about the Statute of Limitations on DL6. Wait. Wait, that old man. What is it? Do you know who he is? Yogi. Could he be Yogi? Yogi? The suspect in the DL6 incident. The one who was found innocent. Tell me about that, Miles. Yeah, Yogi was a court bailiff at the time. We just happened to be in that elevator together 15 years ago. Could Yogi be after my picnic basket? It ain't over till it's over, boo-boo. The quake was incredibly strong. Objection, your honor. The quake was incredibly strong. Uh, before I knew it, everything was dark. Let's go commit a murder, eh? We were there for so long, it felt like forever. The air thinned, and the darkness closed in on us in that little box. We became unsettled. Help! I can't breathe! Quiet! I said quiet! You're not making this any easier! I want to get out! Help! Get us out! Don't shout! You'll just use up more oxygen! Why is this elevator airtight? Stop asking questions! That's all I remember. When I came to, I was in a hospital bed, staring up at the ceiling. In court, Yanni Yogi's mental condition was called into question. Oh, it goes to the underwater part of the courthouse. Mermaid court. There's the subterranean under underwater cavern for the mermaid court. F for fish law, yeah. That's why. The lower court for fish. They claimed the oxygen deprivation had sh and stress had caused temporary insanity. 
In the end, the claim passed the court and Yogi was found innocent. He shot himself to save oxygen. What a hero. Huh, isn't that strange? This letter tells him to get revenge on Edgeworth. Why would he want to take revenge on you? Right. Yeah? There's something that's been troubling me these last few days. I didn't know whether or not I should tell you. You mean the nightmare? Fish law happen below and not above? Because fish swim in water, which is below. It's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed. A memory of a murder. I think the time has come to tell all. Please do. For the last 15 years, I've had the same dream almost every night. Against Fish's opinion, I stole fizzy lifting drinks. But Edgeworth, that means you lose. Good day, sir. I wake up in a fearful sweat every time. What kind of dream? It's a dream about my father's killing in the dark. Help, I can't breathe. Quiet, I said quiet. You're not making this any easier. I want to get out. Help, get us out. Don't shout, you'll just use up more oxygen. Mm-hmm. I... I can't... I can't... Breath. I can't breath. You're using up my air. What? Stop breathing my air. I'll, I'll stop you. Ah, uh, what? What are you... Stop breathing my air! No, father! He's attacking father! Then I see the pistol lying by my feet. I don't know if it was evidence from that day in court or the bailiffs. In a daze, I pick up the pistol. He threw the gun! Get away! Get away from my father! That's rough, buddy. And with that scream, I wake. It's a bone-chilling scream. A scream that has rung in my ears for the past 15 years. B but that's just a dream, right? Right? That thought is the only thing that has kept me sane for the last 15 years. But what if I'm wrong? What if it's real? They say that sometimes people shut out memories in self-defense. But I'm not a self-defense lawyer, I'm a prosecution lawyer. Maybe it was I who killed my father. Happy Father's Day. What? If you think about it that way, this letter makes sense. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Think about it. Yogi was really innocent. That's why he wanted revenge against me. Wait, Edgeworth, you, you mean... It was me. I was the true criminal of DL6. I shot my father. This is bad. What are we gonna do, Nick? What can we do? I don't know. Sir, while we appreciate your dream lore, it's not astrology, so we can't take it as fact. Thank you. <laughs> I don't think there's anything we can do, like it or not. If there's someone else who knows a lot about the DL6 incident, maybe. There is, Nick! There is someone else who knows about DL6. Grossberg. To his offices. Mr. Grossberg! Hello there, what's wrong? You look troubled. You know about what happened. No kidding, I can't believe you're not. My, my, my. Just calm down and tell me what's happened, hmm? It's Mr. Edgeworth. He... Ugh. I see. He never got his painting back? No, so... My understanding is that, you know, Red White, because he had dirt and blackmail on everybody, used that to be like, haha, my painting now. But because Grossberg doesn't want to admit that's what happened, even though Red White was uh, thrown away in a jail or whatever, he can't get the painting back. Because he'd have to be like, hey, so I was in White's pocket the whole time. Can I have my painting back? There's probably a way he could explain it, but it's also probably evidence. It could also be evidence of pride. I see. So Edgeworth dreamt he shot his own father. It's only a dream. Only a dream. I wonder. What? 
If that's the case, then why do you two look so troubled, hmm? Well... Consider this. Yogi quite certainly holds a deep grudge against Miles Edgeworth. So deep, he'd want to frame him for murder. This leads me to surmise that Mr. Edgeworth's dream was not a dream. It was real. As you imagined. Miles Edgeworth threw the pistol to save his father. The pistol fired, and the deed was done. Automatic death penalty. Mm -hmm. They just wheel you into a machine with big crushing metal plates. Like, All right, time to go. No, I don't believe it. Yogi was suspected of murder and his career as a bailiff was irrevocably wrecked. Thus, he sought revenge on Miles Edgeworth, who was only a child and it was all an accident, but you know, I, I, that's how you do. This was his last chance, of course, with the statute of limitations so close. Hmm. Talking about Gregory. What's he know about Edgeworth's father? The classic gun meringue. Yeah. Well, if it was a gun meringue, then Miles would have ended up getting shot. He was a defense attorney without peer. It sounded trite, but it's true. It sounds trite, but it's true. He may have had one peer, now that I think about it. Your mentor, Mia Fey. My sister. Gregory Edgeworth was very disapproving of Mr. Von Karma's techniques. That's no surprise. Von Karma's an extreme man. Forged testimonies and evidence are nothing to him. The result, he has a perfect win record in court. To beat him, Gregory Edgeworth tried to call attention to his methods. And? He lost. And died in despair, as it were. I see. When Gregory Edgeworth was killed, the police called on a spirit medium. That was your mother, Misty Fay. I am Gregory Edgeworth. I have been killed. The one who shot me was the bailiff, Yanni Yogi. Yet Yogi was found innocent. That's when my mother left us. Everyone called her a fraud. That's right. Everyone thought she was, you see. Yet now that I think about it, it seems the one who lied was Gregory Edgeworth's ghost. Gregory Edgeworth must have known who shot him. I don't believe it. So you're saying he falsified his test? There's no way that she didn't talk to a ghost. So what we're saying is the ghost lied to protect his son. That's where we're at right now. There's no other option. The go false ghost testimony. Okay. All right. That Edgeworth's dad lied to protect his son. It's only a possibility, mind you, but a possibility nonetheless. He was a defense lawyer. I know it was his son, but why would he throw an innocent man to the wolves? Even if they were talking to his ghost, that's out of character for Gregory. Okay. That's all we get. That's it. Maybe he didn't know? Then he should have said, I don't know. Everyone was, she was lying. Well, yeah, that's why they ran Misty out of town on a rail. They were like, she's lying. She's not a, a real mystic. So within the, the context of the story, no, she actually did talk to him, which then means the ghost lied. I just hate that that's where we're at now. Uh, do I have things to show you, sir? Such as this bird. Check out this cool bird. Yeah, quite sorry. I have nothing to say concerning that. Deal six. This incident took place 15 years ago tomorrow. So tomorrow we'll see the completion of not one, but two trials. All thanks to the statute of limitations. However, I'm afraid the damage the deal six incident has done will never be eased. Hmm. Gregory Edgeworth. He was a gifted man. His death was truly a loss. I wonder what would have become of Von Karma were he alive. The oh, hell? So this is the letter? It does seem that Yogi was following this letter when he killed Hammond. But why kill Robert Hammond? Hammond was a skilled defense attorney, but he defended clients not for their sake, but for his own. His own sake? Isn't that true of almost every lawyer? 
Unless they work pro bono? He never trusted his clients, that one. The only thing he trusted was his own ability. But he got his clients found innocent, so why should it matter? Actually, my dear, it's quite different. He won that innocent verdict so for no one but himself. Yogi was a free man, but socially he was ruined. Huh? You'll understand soon enough. How about now? I could understand now. Wait! What is it? This letter. I've seen this handwriting somewhere before, a long time ago. Whose handwriting was this? Do you have any idea who wrote this? Uh, maybe it was Von Karma. Because he's a perfectionist and the handwriting is like very neat and tidy. Could it be Manfred Von Karma? Von Karma? Why would he have something to do with this? Uh, well, I'm not sure. Hmm? Von Karma, Von Karma. Wait, you're right, my boy. This is Von Karma's handwriting. I'm sure of it. Oh, shit. I used to see it all the time on court reports. What? But that means... The one who told Mr. Yogi to kill was... Correct. Manfred Von Karma himself. What does this mean, then? Why would Von Karma want to frame Edgeworth? Uh, huh. Remember earlier when I was like, I don't know how to predict, I don't know if I can predict what I think is going to happen. Because I feel like there's some important evidence that I don't know about. And then they went, hey, Von Karma set them up. Is, um, thank you, Mithra, for gifting a sub to Manfred Von Karma. Appreciate that. As well as uh, Warren Kingdom's Azir gifted a sub to Ghost Lying. Get him out of here! Why is he in here? <laughs> if it truly was Von Karma who wrote this letter, then he would know the truth. He would know that Miles Edgeworth had accidentally killed his own father. He'll say as much tomorrow in court, I should think. He'll press the point until the court finds Miles Edgeworth guilty. Oh no. But how could Von Karma know about Mr. Edgeworth's past like that? Even Edgeworth thought it was just a nightmare. That I do not know. Ghosts, probably. Yet I do know that Von Karma is both persistent and a perfectionist. Thank you, Snowbeal, for gifting a sub to Almost Christmas. It means it's not Christmas. And Universal gifted two subs to Mannequin Z and Carmine Gallo. Enjoy them! Thank you. I have to sleep. Kids soon have a good snooze. The VOD will still be here. Thank you. Have a good one. What's with this? I don't know. Thank you. Appreciate it. Almost as relative. It's always Christmas somewhere. I hate that Ghost probably is a legit guest in this fucking game. Yeah, me too. He may be seeking to satisfy a grudge against Gregory Edgeworth by hurting his son. That's extra fucked. What do you mean? And Von Karma was a mentor to Miles? It was 15 years ago. Mithra gifted a sub to relevance. Thank you, Mithra. Relevance. Sins of the father, etc. I fucking... Von Karma met Gregory Edgeworth in court, and Von Karma did win. But he didn't make it through the trial unscarred. Gregory versus Manfred. What happened in the trial between Edgeworth's dad and Von Karma? Von Karma got the guilty verdict he wanted. He won the trial. But Gregory Edgeworth accused Von Karma of faulty evidence. And though he lost the trial, Mr. Edgeworth's accusation stood. Faulty evidence. It was the only penalty Von Karma has ever received in his career as a prosecutor. Gregory Edgeworth dealt a blow to his perfect trial record. Wow. It must have been quite a shock for Von Karma. He took a vacation for several months after that, you see. Vacation? Yes, an unusual event for the man. That was the first and the last vacation he's taken in his many years of prosecuting. He doesn't take vacations. Like go to the sea or to the mountains? Don't tell me he's never been to Europe. You have strange ideas about vacations, Maya. Does she? Oh, that sounds fine, Phoenix. In any case, that was the only time he took a vacation from work. I believe the penalty upset him quite a lot. If he wanted to keep a perfect record so badly, why would he take such a long vacation? Hmm. What do we do, Nick? 
Anonymous gifted three months to RJ3. That's me. Holy hell. Thank you. Enjoy the three months. Appreciate what the hell? What the hell? The distant land of Japan? I, they hear, I hear that they have uh, tonkatsu blankets that keep you warm. And well fed. Von Karma is going to bring up DL6. You can bet on it. What if Mr. Edgeworth pleads guilty to DL6? I won't let him. Uh, yeah, Mr. Wright, I hate to say this, but even accidental murder is murder, you know. I'm a lawyer. Wait, is that true? Excellent. Still. I know. Th I knew that. Mm hmm. I, I just believe in Edgeworth's innocence. I can't believe he'd kill someone. But Nick, Mr. Edgeworth admits it himself. It's manslaughter, which is not murder. Citation needed. His father must have lied to protect him from beyond the grave. I don't care. I know he's not guilty. I imagine him like stamping his foot on the ground. He's not, he's not guilty. He's too handsome to be guilty. Mr. Wright, if you say so, I suppose I could go check again. The police files might hold something of interest. Mr. Grossberg, thank you. I can't promise anything. In fact, I think the chances of finding something are slim. I understand. The police materials. Hem. Hem, 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 hem. Back to the, 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 the place. One day left, Nick. I know. No time to waste. Let's get going. Hold on, I gotta check on Charlie. How's the world's best plant doing? He's looking good. He's perking up. He's a good boy. Criminal Affairs Department. There's a real life case like this, sadly. Mm. This is why I'm not like a true crime podcast person. For one, I just don't find that kind of content very... Um, it emotionally sucks for me. But also, it just it, it's just like there's so much shit where it's like, really? This sucks. Yo, Charlie! Thank you, Mithra, for gifting Charlie that sub! Are there any good plant emotes you have, chat? Is there like a default plant emoji? Let's get some hype in the chat for Charlie. Yeah, yeah, lechuga, that works. Now I have to water it like I have to water the sub regularly. <laughs> Make sure it's watered. Yeah, woo, there you go. Yeah. yeah you got that eggplant. Eggplant's a plant. There's hardly anyone here. Everyone must be out looking for the old guy, Yogi. A burger is a type of plant. Burger's mostly vegetable. Think about it. It's got it's got wheat and lettuce and tomato. It's basically a vegetable. Grow it out of the ground. I don't have lechuga, but I have lechonk. Lechonk is better. It's you. I don't think Gumshoe will be coming back today. He's staying out late looking for someone. Sounds like Gumshoe is pounding the pavement for real. He's street fighting. I'm learning so much. I, I strive to have an educational stream. You're thinking about pizza. Pizza's also a sandwich. Uh, we were wondering if we could check out the records room again. Well, now I can't have just anyone wandering around in there. But I guess Mr. Von Karma is in there now anyway. You can go in as long as he's there. Von, oh, this is awkward. Von Karma's in the record. Mm. He won't look at what case we're digging up, right? He just arrived, actually. He's in the record room. Nick, let's hurry. Is he unsupervised in there? Because that's pretty not good. December 27th, police department, records room. Dusty as always. We were only here just yesterday. I'm sure they just haven't had time to clean. What's wrong, Nick? Nothing. I was just noticing that he isn't here. Von Karma. That is immensely sus. My good Maya. I do believe this is quite sus indeed. Elementary, my dear Maya. There are shelves stuffed with case files in the back of the room. Forgotten cases. Nick, let's get what we need and get out of here. All this dust is getting to me. I know. Updated DL6 report. This car large volume of reports here. These are all case reports. It's like a graveyard of police cases. My sister's case is here too. Are we just gonna look at the suspiciously open shelf? One of the drawers here is open. Someone must have been looking in it recently. The label says unsolved cases evidence. How much are you gonna be going for? At least until the end of this trial. 
unsolved cases. Nick! The file for DL6. It's completely empty. God damn it, Von Karma. God damn it. Dude walks into the records room without any fucking police officers watching him and steals unsolved case evidence. What? What are you doing in here? Eek! I don't like front-facing Von Karma. Von Karma? You. How do you know my name? Remember, remember me from court earlier? You were yelling at me a lot. That was today, actually. Huh? Von Karma, the type of dude to ask why isn't there a straight pride month? No kidding. No fucking kid. Have we met? What are you saying? We see each other every day, don't we? Or Miles Edgeworth's defense team. Defense team? Uh, I beg your pardon? You see, I rarely remember defense attorneys. They're like bugs to me. Needless things to be crushed. I can see how this guy was Edgeworth's mentor. Mm. Maybe it's his evil twin brother, who doesn't know us, but is also an asshole. Uh, um, Mr. Edgeworth was your student, right? A romanticist who could never shed that veneer of amateurism. Just like his father, always second rate. Mr. Von Karma, you had an axe to grind with Mr. Gregory Edgeworth, didn't you? Me? A grudge against a mere defense attorney? Why? Because he dealt a blow to your otherwise perfect trial record? Hmm. So you did. Uh, but what I don't get is... Why did you take his son under your wing afterwards? The son of your most bitter rival. That, my dear attorney, is none of your business. Tomorrow will be the last day of this trial. It's been a while since I've had a defense attorney last this long. Still, you will lose in the end. Miles Edgeworth will admit his own guilt. His guilt of 15 years ago, you mean? You're quite the researcher. If you've done your homework so well, then certainly you must understand. You know what Miles Edgeworth will tell the court tomorrow. We were right. So Von Karma is going to bring up deal six in court tomorrow. I object. I object to you, to your cravat, sir. I don't care for that you have a cravat and a gem. You're bedazzled the fuck up and it's distracting in court, sir. I'm an attorney. Fool. You think I, a prosecutor, would give you a defense attorney information? Bah! Creep. I do not object to the cravat and Jimmy looks hot and sexy. How- I- mm. Agree to disagree. Gvool! You think I, a prosecutor, would give you information? I'm just gonna go down the list. Until he doesn't call me a fool. Creep by Radiohead. I'm a creep. I'm a prosecutor. What the hell am I doing here? What about this? Okay, cool. Great. Fool. Awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna get to that bird. Yo. Hey, buddy, check out this bird. He called the bird a fool. Rude. DL6? He's not gonna talk about that? What about this picture? Okay, also no. And last but not least, the letter from the safe. Mr. Von Karma, have a look at this. This was you, wasn't it? You instructed Yanni Yogi to commit murder. Yanni Yogi? How many years has it been since I've heard him called by that name? He's a fool. You like to use that word. I told him to burn it after he read it. That's what I was saying. Why would... Why would anyone write that down and then not destroy it? So you admit it! You- you wrote Mr. Yogi this letter. Yes, my dear defense attorney. Thank you for taking the trouble to bring it to me. You've saved me from a lot of needless hassle. But what Nick, what is that thing? <laughs> what? He's doing the- I wanna just stress that he's going to zap me with a stun gun in the de the police department. We are in the police department. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna get zapped. We're, like, d this dude is so fucking gone. Holy shit. 
Yeah, he's into it. He, he lives for this. A stun gun for self-defense, usually. Indeed. 600,000 volts will course through your body like a dog touching an electric fence. 600,000? Oh, don't worry. People don't die from it, usually. Now give me the letter. No! No! Whoa, what are you? Nick, run! Ah! Hey, welcome back, Raven Knight. Mia got zapped. Maya! Out of my way! Wah! Phoenix really went way. Photosynth to everyone, by the way, thank you. Ugh, he got us. The letter's gone, of course. Thank you, Mithra, for getting us up to Maya. This escalated. Hey, Stod. How you doing, man? Phoenix Wario confirmed. Phoenix, wah! Ace Waluigi. And he took the DL6 evidence. All of it. Back to having no clues. Wait, Maya jumped first. Maya, is she okay? Ma Maya! Maya, open your eyes. Maya! The letter! Did he take it? Huh? Oh, yeah. Are you okay? I... I couldn't stop him. I jumped as fast as I could, but one shot from that thing knocked me out cold. I'm useless. I'm no good as a lawyer or a medium. I can't even call my sister. Well, you're not good as a lawyer because you're not, you're not a lawyer. You're, you're a medium. No, you're not a good lawyer, but you're not supposed to be. Not even now. We needed her the most. I wish I hadn't woken up at all. Also, you're 17. Yeah. Maya! There has to be some way I can help her. I better do something about her self-confidence first. Do I have evidence that will help her self-confidence? Maya, she's holding something. What is that? A bullet? In a bag? DL6 incident evidence number seven taken from the heart of Gregory Edgeworth. I remember. Von Karma was holding this when Maya jumped him. Nice. Good work, Maya. I'll prove it to you, Maya. You're most definitely not useless most of the time. When you're not trying to steal from suspects. I'll prove it to you in court tomorrow. Until then, your self-confidence will just have to be shot. To be continued. Let's get caught up on alerts before we head into the final day of the trial. Stealing from suspects wins us cases! I <laughs> listen. What's a crime to prevent another crime? Three left turns turns into a right turn, after all. How am I enjoying this game? This game is a trip. I am very much enjoying it. It's a very good time. I, 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 I've almost given up on predicting what will happen because we're, we've gotten to a point where Phoenix himself is building the case as he's talking in real time. And you, the player, just like, huh? These are the, I guess of these three options, this is the only one that makes sense. And then that's what, it's just like, what? Like the first couple cases felt like a bit of, yeah, you're missing information and, and things kind of snowballed, but it still took a while to be like, you know, you would still have the, the pieces are here. You just got to put them together. Like this detail is significant, but we're not talking about it yet. It's going to come back later. That kind of stuff. And it's just like, eh. this is the way. Mm-hmm. And on. Thank you. Uh, Taco B. Jones, thanks for nine months. Just watched the Ozymandias episode of Breaking Bad for the first time. And I'm emotionally devastated. I need my gay lawyers to cheer me up. I hope you enjoy it. That episode is a doozy. Enjoy your Ruby key. Mithra. Gift this up the pot of greed. Yikes of the ballroom, nine months objection. My hair is not that spiky. Mithra gifted a tier two to Queen of Size. Mithra gifted a sub to Polly. Clarexon, 53 months. Happy Pride, everyone. Excited to go to the parade this weekend. Hope you have fun. Azir gifted a sub to Ghost Lying. Mithra gifted a sub to Manfred von Karma. Snowbeal gifted a sub to Almost Christmas. And as we all know, Almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. Universal gifted two subs to Carmine Gallo and Mannequin Z. Mithra gifted a sub to Relevance. Anonymous gifted... RJ3, that's me. 
couple of months. They're very kind. Mithra gifted uh, Charlie a sub. Shouts to Charlie. Ravenlight, 39 months. Loving his tourney so far. I've never played these. I'm excited to see how it ends each time. Never disappointed so far. Yeah. It, it's, uh, 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 I don't know. I don't know. So far, I'm very impressed by not just the bullshit, but so far, most of the bullshit they've presented still feels compelling to me. They've yet to pull some bullshit out of a hat, and then I'm like, come on. Like, maybe I'll get to that point, but I think the novelty is still fresh enough for me that I'm not mad about it. So, uh, yeah, shouts to Charlie. It works. It's something about the, the, the pacing of it and the humor and the stakes that when they're like, ah, oh, but did you know that he was the, the, the murderer? I'm just like, yeah, okay, let's go. Like, I'm on board for it, so it's good. That's game two. Oh, good. Oh, good. Mithra gifted us up to Maya. Stod, thank you for the 100 bits. Uh, it is thank you for eight months. Happy Tuesday to chat. Happy Tuesday. Thanks for eight months. Anonymous gifted Stod his fourth month. Welcome back. And Universal Fireworks, thanks for 50 bits. Why is there no camera in the archive? Also, uh, one would at least assume even if there's no camera in there, there'd be a camera in, like, the hallway outside. And you would see Karma go in and then leave because he wasn't in there. Then we go in and then you see him walking out with a piece of paper, putting a stun gun into his pocket and smirking to himself. But no, you know, it's fine. Your Honor, the prosecution fucking tased us. I, I, I have marks on me from when he fucking stabbed me with a stun gun. Where were the cameras? Don't ask questions. People hear the sounds of the scuffle. I mean, they made it clear that the police department was kind of empty that day because everyone's looking for, for Yogi. But there's still some officers there. Objection. Relevance. Sustained. Let's go. I wouldn't fuck with him either. Yeah, he looks like a big man. Big man. Von Karma might just hold it so much power that no one says anything. Well, that's entirely what's happened. Is he's built up so much power and authority that he's gotten away with it all. So what, why would he stop now? This is it. Judgment Day. It really does bother me that you can spell it either way, but judgment doesn't need an E. In judgment. Yeah, and then when and then when Deer made that judgment day emote, I was like, okay, well let me yeah, like Terminator 2. Terminator 2 also doesn't use the letter E in judgment. I mean, th there is the e M-E-N-T. I mean like judge with an E at the end. I spell it as judgment. Judgment. It looks more right to me to have the judgment, but I was thought I used the E. I think the E without the E, like this spelling, is is the more correct way, but I don't know. It fucks me up with the yeah, J J Jumanji, judgment. Anyway, today things are going to get settled at last. A lot of things. Whack! What's the big idea? Thank you, Mithra, for gifting a sub to Judgment with an E. Jus. Sorry, Nick. I only touched your shoulder. I guess the shock hasn't worn off from my running with the stun gun yesterday. That's not how that works. <laughs> Does she think she got charged like a battery? Nick, look, I have superpowers. And she holds a light bulb and it turns on. Ugh, fuck. Warren Kings is here. Thank you for gifting a sub to Judgment without the E. Great, now both of them are satisfied. Thank you. Appreciate it. I hope they enjoy the emotes. Anyhow, today's the last day of the trial. Good luck, Nick. Yeah, thanks, Maya. Edgeworth is looking glum as always. Hope Von Karma doesn't push him too hard. Whoa! What are you doing? Sorry, I'm sorry. I just thought I'd cheer you up with a pat on the back. Maya, maybe you should go outside and discharge? Right, good idea. Try not to electrocute anyone on your way out. Whoa, yeah, pal! Ugh. What's gotten into that girl? Detective Gumshoe. Morning, Mr. Edgeworth. Uh, good morning. How did it go, Detective? Have no fear. As promised, I have captured our runaway caretaker. I really want us in court to accuse Von Karma of electrocuting us and stealing crucial evidence. 
And then the judge would be like, what evidence do you have that you were electrocuted? And then Maya just starts touching everyone in the courthouse and setting off sparks from her fingertips. And the judge is like, ooh, wow. Okay, well, that's enough evidence for me. <laughs> it's just insane. Unlimited power. I just brought him in, took all night, pal. Thanks, Gumshoe, you must be tired. Actually, after that shock, I got in the way and I feel pretty good. Yogi says he's forgotten his own name. Well, that has to be a lie. Why would he want revenge on Edgeworth if he couldn't remember his past? He does remember and I'm going to prove it. Yeah. Uh, what's going on that girl? Approximately 600,000 volts. 10 a.m. December 28th. District Court, courtroom number three. Court is now in session for the trial of Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Hmm. The prosecution is ready. Uh, right. Very well. We have reached the final day of our proceedings in this trial. I ask that the prosecution submit decisive evidence. Understood. Come on, don't be odd in the silence by every little thing he says. Very well, Mr. Von Karma, your opening statement. Right. Thanks to Detective Gumshoe's efforts, the boat rental shop caretaker has been arrested. In yesterday's trial, the defense asserted that the caretaker was the murderer. However, the caretaker has yet to confirm this. I would like to ask the defense to cross-examine him as much as necessary. Very well. Please bring the witness into the courtroom. Did Gordy get the chair yet? Not yet. We haven't been able to peg anything on him yet. He keeps slipping through our fingers. Ladies and gentlemen of the court, I believe you all remember our witness. He lives in the boat rental shop on the lake from where he witnessed the incident. In addition, he has currently lost memory of his name and identity. Witness! Why did you run away yesterday? The witness was not running away, as he will now testify. I see. Very well, please begin your testimony. Like some kind of balloon. Like a big balloon. Hmm. Thank you, team nerd. Why'd you leave? Yeah, I'm usually really sorry about just leaving yesterday like I did. But I wasn't running away or nothing. I just went to buy some food for Polly, see? I figured I got nothing to do with this incident anyhow. I, I mean, I'd need one of those motive things, right? And I don't got one. So my testimony yesterday stands as is. Very well. Let's begin the cross-examination, shall we? He has to know his name. Yanni Yogi, you're Yanni Yogi, and I'm gonna prove it! Let's ask Polly. Ask the bird! Thank you, Kurt. Um... I'm really sorry about you leaving yesterday like I did. I'm gonna put down a little safety save. I mean, it's not been long since we saved. I just wanna... Make sure we're set. ba da da ba da da What's with you, boo boo? Why did you leave? You told me, but tell me. Your Honor, I wanted the hamburger, which I then ate with chopsticks. I'd call what you did running away and not just leaving. You heard Larry's testimony and realized you were in danger. Now, Mr. Wright, there's no need to rush to conclusions. That's all you've done since day one of this case. As I said, the witness was not running away. Listen to the testimony. Sure seems relaxed. In fact, they both do, Von Karma and Yanni Yogi. Hmm. Well, I wasn't running away or nothing. Eh. Hold it. Then why did you leave? He's just about to say why. Is it so hard for you to just quietly listen when someone's talking? If I sat quietly, Edgeworth would be guilty in three minutes. I want to buy some food for Polly. Food? What is this food? Well, Polly's a bit of a gourmand, you see. She only eats these high-quality bird pellets from France. Oh my god. I knew I'd been yelling France into the microphone all this time for a reason. France returns. They only have them in the big pet shop downtown. But you weren't arrested until this morning. Why didn't you go back to the caretaker's shack? Uh, well, I kind of got lost, you see. 
The witness has trouble remembering things sometimes. When the police apprehended him, he was on his way back to the shack. Yeah, right. Nice try, Von Karma. No one's gonna believe that. Hmm, I see. So he was lost. <laughs> Did he have bird seed on him when they found him? Your Honor, come to your senses. I don't believe you. Food pellets from France? French fries? Stop it. Thanks, Your Honor. I figured I got nothing to do with this incident anyhow. You've lost much of your memory, is that correct? Eh, yep, seems like it. Then how could you know that you didn't have anything to do with this incident? Uh, or, or maybe you're lying about not having your memory, hmm? You know exactly who you are. The witness has testified quite clearly that he has no memory of who he is. If you claim he's lying, show the court proof. Yeah. How am I supposed to prove what's going on in that old codger's head? That's impossible. Hmm. I'm glad you've come to your senses, Mr. Wright. Very well, witness. Please continue. I mean, I need one of those motive things, right? Now I don't got one. How can you say you've had no motive? You, I say you do. You had a grudge against Edgeworth and the victim, Robert Hammond. That's why you took revenge on them, right? Please don't make me repeat myself, Mr. Wright. This witness has no memory of anything beyond several years ago. He can't hold a grudge, it's impossible. I have to prove he's lying about his memory. Otherwise, it's gonna be the same thing over and over until the trial ends. Might I say something, Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor? You've been saying the same thing now over and over. You've been calling the witness's memory of the past or lack thereof into question. But does this really have anything to do with the current case? Of course, Your Honor. The witness has said he has nothing to do with this case and no motive. Both of these statements are lies! Order, order, Mr. Wright. There is a serious problem with your claim. What are you saying? Are you saying you know who this witness is? Of course, Your Honor. Ho, ho, now this is interesting. I would like to know myself, so who is he? Don't play dumb, Von Karma. Mr. Wright, please tell us this witness's name. He's in Yogi. I mean, I mean, maybe he is Robert Hammond, but I don't fucking know. His name is Yanni Yogi, a former court bailiff. Yogi? That name seems familiar. Oh! Yanni Yogi, from the DL6 incident. I thought the judge would have heard of it. It was such a famous case. What, what does this mean? Ah, oh, yes, the cartoon bear. I have reruns playing in my study at home. Your Honor, if this man is Mr. Yogi, then he has a clear motive. Tsk, tsk, tsk. No, no. Jumping to conclusions again, Mr. Wright. This man, this witness, is Yanni Yogi. Fascinating. However, how do you propose to prove this to the court? This is a court of law, as you may recall. You need proof. And allow me to repeat once more that the witness has lost his memory. This is it. I have to do this now. If I can't prove he's Yogi right here, right meow, then I've got nowhere else to go. Nick, how are you gonna prove it? How can you prove that he's Yanni Yogi? It's okay. It's actually quite simple. Is it? Your Honor? Please take this man's fingerprints. Then we'll compare them to the fingerprints on file for Yanni Yogi 15 years ago. I see, that makes sense. That actually, that's a good plan, Phoenix. Tsk, tsk, tsk. Huh? I'm so very, very sorry, Mr. Wright. Oh, uh, why? The witness has no fingerprints. He's, I've updated his hands. Updated hands report. Um. What? No fingerprints? 
That's what he was doing all night, burning his hands off. You see, before I worked as a caretaker, I worked at a chemical plant. I burned my fingerprints working with the stuff. Yep. What? Yogi, you sneak. You burned your fingerprints off to hide your past. Well, if the witness has no fingerprints, I guess we'll not be able to prove his identity. No. <laughs> well, what would you what will you do, Mr. Wright? Uh Hmm. It seems that the case has been decided, no. No! I know what happened, I know everything. I just can't prove it. But no, I can't let it end like this. I can't lose. There has to be another way. There is no one who can testify as to who this witness is. No one! Nick, what are we gonna do? I didn't even consider that he might have erased his fingerprints. What do I do? <laughs> well, Mr. Wright, perhaps you'd like to cross-examine the parrots for a little comic relief? Yes. Yes, I would. Yes, I actually would. Yeah, yeah, very funny. You're a sore winner, Von Karma. Please. Wait a second. Cross-examine the parrot. Holy fuck, I love this game. What is it, Nick? You're not going to. Your Honor? The defense would like to take Mr. Von Karma up on his proposal. Take Mr. Von Karma up? On his proposal? Exactly, Your Honor. I want to talk to the bird. I would like to cross-examine the witness's pet parrot. Order, order. Well, what do you think, Mr. Von? What do you think, Judge? Why are you asking Von Karma? Need you even ask? This is a farce. I object. I object to your objection. Wait a second. You were the one who suggested I cross-examine the parrots, Von Karma. I have a right to do as you suggested. I was being sarcastic, you dolt. Sarcasm doesn't exist in the courtroom, Your Honor. If you're so desperate, then please be my guest. Thank you, chat. Of course, should you go through with this and nothing comes of it, I hope you're ready for the consequences. I'll live with the consequences because I got to interrogate a bird in court. Nick, this is crazy. Well, still want to go through with your little game? Uh, yes, don't ask twice. Absolutely, I'm talking to the bird. Let the parrot take the stand. Let the bodies hit the floor. I will cross-examine her, Your Honor. This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Von Karma's rigged every person's testimony, every piece of evidence, except the parrot. She's my last chance. At least I think so. Bailiff, bring in the parrot. It was here? Was the parrot in the gallery? Because that's great. Hope you study up on bird law. Oh my god. They did not have to give that bird so many sprites. That's quite a bird. Please tell us your name. Name! The witness is ignoring me. It must hurt to be ignored by a bird. Very well, witness. Who is your owner? Please testify for us. This, this game is good. This is a good game. I just want to look at this for a little bit. You must be Ames. Hello! Hello! It's a pretty airtight case. Certainly the most concise testimony we've had so far. Very well, begin your cross-examination. <laughs> what are you gonna do, Nick? I don't know. What do we do, Maya? We're so fucking dead. Our careers are over after this. Hello, hello. Polly want a cracker? Here, pretty birdie. Birdie, 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 birdie. You who over here? Who's a pretty bird? Hello, hello. Amogus. Amogus. Polly want a cracker? Kissy noises. Please talk. Edgeworth is looking at me, and I don't like the way he's looking at me. I like it when Edgeworth looks at me, but not like this. 
The French. France. French bird seed. You must be Ames. Oh shit, the bird is Ames. Oh fuck. I didn't see that coming. Holy shit, what a twist. Witness! You can't just say hello and expect us to get anywhere. I want you to testify. Maya, you talk to her. R what do I say? Um, what's the safe number? Have we forgotten something? Uh... Stop badgering the witnesses. Um... What's your name? Maybe I should get her to say her name. Polly, Polly, what's your name? Polly, Polly, huh? Mr. Wright, I think we've established that this parrot is named Polly. Does this have anything to do with her owner's identity? No. Uh, well, I guess it doesn't really have anything to do with that, no. Hmm. Please only ask questions pertaining to the matter at hand. Witness, continue your testimony. Moments like these make me wish I could play skin fresh. It's a fucking trip. You're mu you're here to speak. You must speak to me. Frankly, I can't believe that you're speaking to the parrot. Well, I guess we should try to get some information out of her. We need to show the judge her owner is Mr. Yogi. Hello, hello. That's it? All right. Witness, you can't just say hello, I want you to testify. Maya, say, have we forgotten something? Remember, two days ago. Is the combination of the safe significant? Is that the date of the, the former, of DL6 or something? Have we forgotten something? Don't forget DL6. I just realized that I'm sure he picked a relevant number for the safe. If I can get Polly to say that here, that will prove that the caretaker had something to do with DL6. Polly, have we forgotten something? Hello, hello. That's not what you're supposed to say. Von Karma got to the bird? Forgot something we forgot? Hello, hello. It's not working, Nick. She won't say it. This is ridiculous. Why won't she say it? <laughs> Something the matter? Fuck you, Karma. Karma's a bitch has never been more appropriate. Don't tell me Von Karma expected this. He couldn't have retrained the parrot. Could he? Could he have retrained an entire ass parrot in less than a day's notice? Did he train her not to respond when we asked if he'd forgotten anything? What the fuck? What the fuck? This got even dumber somehow. I didn't think that was possible. Excuse me? Okay, Maya. Maya, what's the safe number? Maybe I'll get her to say the number that's safe. The safe? Why? Let's just try to get her to say anything, okay? Polly, what was the number of the safe in the shack? 1228. December 28th. Wow, that took me way too long to realize. It's right there. My, what a reckless parrot. Well, Mr. Wright, you aren't claiming that this number has something to do with the caretaker. Actually, it does. That's why I had her say it. Ha, ridiculous. How can the number to a safe tell us who the caretaker is? Show us your proof. What could possibly link this number to the caretaker's true identity? Uh, where's, where's, uh, DL6 case file? Check button to read. Uh, December 28th! It's right there! Um... Get a load of this, you piece of shit! Fuck you! Keep reading it? Okay. Uh, elevator district court. Air in elevator was oxygen depleted at time of incident. No clues found on the scene. Gregory Edgeworth, age 35, defense attorney, trapped in elevator, returning from a lost trial with son Miles, age 9. One bullet found in the heart. The murder weapon was fired twice. Ian Yogi, 37, court bailiff, trapped with the Edgeworths, memory lost due to oxygen deprivation after his arrest. Fiance Polly Jenkins commits suicide? Oh! Oh no!
Oh no! Polly want a cracker? Oh, uh, take that. The DL6 case file. What is this obsession you have with that case? Mr. Wright, where in this file is something relating to that safe number? Uh, oh, we're getting real specific now, aren't we? Um, case summary. It's the case summary. They really want you to show your work, which I respect. Bits for post-trial therapy. You've been through a hell of a lot. Thank you, Stott. <laughs> it's on the case summary page. The case summary? Specifically, the date on which DL6 occurred. The date of the incident, December 28th. Why, that's today's date, 15 years ago. And the number on that safe is 1228. Ah! Ugh. I want to. I want him to, to make the noise that uh, Kremlings make in Donkey Kong Country when you step on him, and they go. Ugh. He used the date of the DL6 incident as the number for his safe, Your Honor. You might be leaning my fear wasn't really evidence. No, I appreciate that. I do. That's how important that date was to him. Because I got what I needed. I, you, you weren't leading me on, but that is a detail. That even if that detail doesn't go anywhere, that's uh, it's pretty fucked up. Ugh. I, it certainly is an interesting coincidence. People often do set their secret numbers to dates. This is not tangible proof. I set my ATM card's number to 0001 because I'm number one. This has nothing to do with a date. Nothing. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> I just, I'm like getting flashbacks to Bath's fucking Ace Attorney script. It's this level of like, clearly, Your Honor, like, here's an example of me being a moron. There, That proves I'm right. And they're like, well, you have a good point. It's like, God damn it. It's too fucking accurate. Mm-hmm. Indeed. We might watch it later if we have time. It might be not this part, but maybe, maybe next stream of this. We'll go through Bath's thing. It's a fucking nightmare if you missed it when we showed up before. And my social security is number one because I was bored first. Well, next stream might be demos, but you know, like whatever we do is next. Whatever. Alone, it is a little weak for evidence in a murder trial. We would need some other corroborating evidence. Where am I going to find that? Nick, we're getting closer. One more. If we can just get one more piece of evidence. Right, but what? Very well, witness. You may continue. Next A stream. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are you doing the DLC case? Well, I have the case five, if that's what you're referring to, because it's part of the DS game. Unless there's something else. I mean, there aren't a lot of DS games that got DLC. Gotcha. Case five. We're doing DL6, not DLC. Eh. Uh, eh. Uh, um, well, we need to show the judge your owner's Mr. Yogi. Hello, hello. Well, I don't have anything else here. The DS had four megabytes of RAM. This baby could fit so much DLC. Um, let's let's just try. Have we forgotten something again? Okay, it's the same. Never mind. Shit. Remember what I just read. All right. Let me skip through. Updated content report. Beep, 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 Pretty bird. Case five is real good and also really long. Yeah, it's probably gonna take a few streams to get through, from the sounds of it. Hey bird, check this out. It's you. Check out this bird. Objection. Objection. Your honor, that statement contradicts this bird. It does? Uh it's just a bird. 
Objection overruled. No! I can't believe that didn't work. Okay. Um. Meep. 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 It's currently saying dot dot dot. We need to show the judge your owner is Mr. Yogi. Hello, hello. Um. Gah, what if I threaten it with a gun? That'll probably work. I don't really know what they want me to do right now. Because... Pressing on this doesn't do anything. Yeah. Let me show the judge your owner is Mr. Yogi. Yeah, if only Missile was here. I miss Missile. Seems like I have to present something. But what? But what? Objects. Answers to the name Polly. Photograph the scene of the murder. A bullet. DL6? I don't know. I don't fucking know. Your Honor. Nope. Waiting by the witness's statement. I'm not sure I follow. It clearly contradicts the, um, you know, when you. Don't come on, bro, me. What do you mean? I don't fucking know. <laughs> Um. Uh. Reconsider your options when speaking with the bird. But uh, what? Uh, what? You're overthinking it. I, 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 I doubt that. I want you to testify. So I can say that Polly is relevant. That's still... Polly is such a common name for birds. My two pieces of evidence are just the flimsiest fucking things. This... Of course it has something to do with it. Fascinating. You claim the parrot's name will prove her owner's identity? Show us this proof. Embrace the bullshit. It... This is... This is pretty bad. Don't you think you're taking the bluffing too far? Listen, we're not here to answer the question of who is the caretaker. We're here to prove that he is Yanni Yogi. What we have to do is tie the name Polly to Yogi. The proof is in the pudding, Your Honor. Delicious pudding. That's quite a large file you have there, which pages is proof on then. Show us or stop wasting our time. It's all right, show us the page. It's on the, the suspect data page. It's on suspect page. This page has all the information about Yanni Yogi. Right after he was arrested, his fiance committed suicide. See? Indeed, it does say that, yes. What was his fiance's name? Polly Jenkins. Polly. Exactly, Your Honor. He remembered the name of his fiance who committed suicide. You're cross examining a bird. Any and all bullshit is relevant. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah, that's why he named his parrot after her. Remember, the judge is an idiot. And also, Phoenix is an idiot. The bird is probably the smartest person in this room. I guess that is possible. He was going to marry the bird. A mere coincidence, that's all. My granddaughter has a dog she calls Phoenix. Well, Mr. Phoenix Wright, does that make you my granddaughter's fiancé? She's only seven years old. That's enough. I think we've reached a conclusion here. This is a mere coincidence, that's all. True, that is a possibility. However, two coincidences at the same time seem more like a pattern to me. But what, what what are you saying? Summon the caretaker of the boat shop immediately. Hmm. Witness, tell us your name. Wait, this witness, he doesn't remember. No, it's okay. I've accomplished what I wanted to do. I'm done. Nick, he looks totally different. This is the real Yogi, I think. Finally, he's been acting feeble to hide his true identity. 
acting for 15 years. Well, he might have only been acting for like the last week. But, well, let me ask you again. Please state your name for the court. My name is Yanni Yogi. 15 years ago, I served as a bailiff in this very court. Order, Yanni Yogi. So was it you who killed Robert Hammond? And tried to frame Miles Edgeworth for his death? Yes, it was me. I did it. They put me on the witness stand 15 years ago. Robert Hammond, he said I was mentally unsound. He told me it would make me innocent, get me off the hook. So I pretended to have brain damage. I was innocent, really, but he didn't believe me. We won the trial, but I lost everything. I lost my job, my fiance, my social standing. Then this year, 15 years later, a package arrived. It was a letter and a pistol. The plan was written out in careful detail. It was a plan for me to take my revenge on the people who ruined my life. I didn't care who had sent it. I thought this was my chance. After 15 years, this was it. Finally, a chance to have my revenge on Robert Hammond and Miles Edgeworth. I have no regrets. Wait a moment. Revenge against Miles Edgeworth? What do you mean? I'm not at liberty to speak on that matter. Why don't you ask Mr. Edgeworth yourself? Anyway, I admit it. I was the one who killed Robert Hammond. Von Karma, where is Mr. Yogi? Under arrest, Your Honor. I saw no room for error in his confession. Then the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, is... Innocent. In this case, at least. Hmm. Very well. Will the defendant please take the stand? There are a few mysteries left unsolved. Still, you are cleared of suspicion for this particular case. So I'd like to pass judgment on the murder of Mr. Robert Hammond. Any objections? I feel like Phoenix not saying objection is one of the hardest things in his job. He just, just like wants to say it just because. I don't believe it. Why isn't Von Karma saying anything? Very well. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Guiltant. Woo! Yeah, woo! <laughs> the confetti doesn't get any less ridiculous. That is all court adjourned. Good. Objection. Did someone just say objection? It wasn't Von Karma. But that means... No. Edgeworth? Thanks, Joe. Welcome, enjoy the emotes. Your Honor, I object to your judgment. I, I like that they, they didn't give him a sprite for pointing forward. But but now he's just... Who is he pointing Is he pointing to Phoenix? Who's to his right right now? I think it is Phoenix. Yeah. I object to your judgment, Judge. I'm over here. I want to point at Phoenix. Okay. Oh, he's pointing to Von Karma. No, I think he's pointing to, 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 to Phoenix. Because I know when, when it pans between them, it has Phoenix on the left and Von Karma on the right. But that's the opposite of from when the, the witness stand is facing... He's pointing at the bird. Whatever. He's hooked on phonics, Your Honor. What do you mean? I'm not innocent at all. As we have heard, Yanni Yogi killed Robert Hammond in revenge. But revenge for what? Nick! Edgeworth is trying to confess. He's gonna say he's guilty. Well, that's my point. Is he, he's supposed to be pointing... Well, it doesn't matter. He was going to tell them he was the murderer in the DL6 incident. He's gonna tell them he killed his own dad. What do I do? Objection. The judgment has already been passed. I object to Edgeworth's outburst. Didn't something like this happen yesterday, too? I believe a certain witness raised an objection after a guilty verdict was passed. That'd be Larry. We must hear this new statement. We must hear Miles Edgeworth. He's right. We have a duty to hear Mr. Edgeworth out. 
I still don't think that the accused can object. For 15 years, I've had a recurring dream. A nightmare. It's only a nightmare. That's what I told myself. But now I know it wasn't a dream. Yanni Yogi wasn't the killer. You mean in the incidents where your father died? From the distance of the shot, it wasn't suicide either. Everything was as clear as day. The murderer? The criminal in the Deal 6 incident? It was me. Your Honor, I confess my guilt. I am guilty for Deal 6, the statue of limitations of which ends today. The culprit is me! If I was standing over there, I'd be pointing at me. Thank you, Jardster, for gifting a sub. Order! This is certainly unexpected. The defendant declared innocent is confessing to a different crime. A crime for which the statute of limitations runs out today. I'm not really sure how I should deal with this. Bah. It's obvious. We hold a trial, right here, right now. We try this man for his crime of 15 years ago. Do they have this try does trying them as a minor exist in this world? I think I would like to take a five minute recess. I need to watch my Yogi Bear tapes. During this time, I will consider the appropriate course of action to take. Three trials, two days. Who cares? Court is adjourned. Probably not. Yeah. I propose a 12 hour recess. Time lapse of him on a swing going back and forth. Lobby number two, 2.24 p.m. I'm sorry, right? I've just wasted all of your effort. Mr. Edgeworth, I just don't believe it, pal. I mean, you kill your dad. I didn't want to believe it myself, detective, but it's the truth. I deserve to be punished. I've been a very naughty boy. Phoenix, murder is murder, no matter what the circumstances. This is crazy, just crazy. Nick, what are you doing? Huh? Oh, I was just reading through the court record once more. I'm getting my case ready. Your case for what? It'd be pretty cool to pretend to be a Bulbasaur. That's true. Huh, isn't it obvious? I'm going to prove that Edgeworth is innocent. What are you talking about, pal? He's just admitted to it. He confessed that he did it in court. I'm sorry, Edgeworth, but I don't believe your nightmare. What? It's just a dream. It's not real. The truth is right here in this court record. In any case, tighten your belts. The real fight is just beginning. I'll prove you're innocent. Trust me. Right. <laughs> December 28th, 2.30 p.m. Courtroom number three. Then I would like to resume our trial. Judge, Miles Edgeworth has admitted his own guilt. He has confessed his crime. Let us begin by hearing his testimony. Then through, though pointless, let the defense do their cross-examining. The statute of limitations on deal six runs out today. Though it's unconventional for me, I'd like to run this one by the book. It's unconventional for him to do it by the book. Does the defense have any objections? No, your honor. Von Karma, you knew this was going to happen from the very beginning, didn't you? Very well. Here's what I don't get. Is Von Karma, uh, uh, it, it did, did all of this because he has a stain on his record because of what happened with DL6. So he literally made another crime happen just to get to the point where he would be able to be like, okay, let's hit undo before the statute of limitations is out. But in doing so, we got Edgeworth declared innocent. So why does he even care anymore? Because we already fucked over his record even worse than it was before. Will Edgeworth take the stand? Will the witness state his name and profession? He's crazy? I mean, I fucked it. I guess. Jesus Christ. He's just that fucking petty. Miles Edgeworth, I am a prosecuting attorney. He's straight. It's... <laughs> Thank you. For five years, it's subs. Enjoy the emails. Thanks for the hydrate. Mr. Edgeworth. Fifteen years ago, you mistakenly killed your father, Gregory Edgeworth. Is this correct? It is correct. And testify about this matter to the court. When Edgeworth was telling me about his dream yesterday, I noticed something. One detail didn't quite fit. That will be the key, but only if I can get it to work. Is it about the gun? They don't know 
whose gun it was or why it was there or huh? why the elevator was airtight. Please. I think the bird probably did it, you know. Some birds live a very long time. That day, I had gone to the courtroom to observe one of my father's trials. As we went to leave, an earthquake struck, trapping us in the elevator. My father and Mr. Yogi lost their composure and began to argue. Just then, something heavy fell at my feet. I picked it up and threw it at Mr. Yogi. I wanted them to stop fighting. Maybe, maybe... He just said it was something heavy, he didn't say it was a gun. Maybe it was a statue of the Thinker that he threw and it hit Yogi and then he panicked and shot. I picked it up and threw it at Mr. Yogi. I wanted them to stop fighting. A moment later, there was a single gunshot, then a scream. It was a terrible scream. I remember it to this day. That's all. It told the time. And until now, you thought this memory was a dream? We were stuck in that elevator for five hours. The oxygen in the elevator ran out, and I lost my memory of the events. The same claim Mr. Yogi has made. Very well. Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. It tells time with gunshots. <laughs> Fuck. That day, I had gone to the courtroom to observe one of the, my father's trials. It's Glock o'clock. What was the trial your father was involved in on that day? I don't remember things very clearly. Only two things. I know my father lost, and Mr. Von Karma was the prosecuting attorney. Mr. Von Karma, you were handling that case? It was 15 years ago. I don't remember the details. That was when Edgeworth pointed out the problem in Von Karma's evidence. Mm-hmm. As we went to leave, an earthquake struck, trapping us in the elevator. My father and Mr. Yogi lost their composure. I meant to press on that. Press it. Press. So there were three people, including yourself, trapped in that elevator? Yes. Myself, my father, and Yanni Yogi. We were fine at first, but then as time passed and no one came to help. My father, Mr. Yogi, lost their composure and began to argue. What did you do then? Thank you, Mithra, for gifting us up the Grandfather Glock. Shit, and Zerus, thanks for the Prime. Welcome. Thank you, thank you. What happened? I was a nine-year-old boy at the time. What could I do? I was scared, trembling in the corner. But then? Just then, something heavy fell at my feet. Shoutouts to Ed. <laughs> What was it? A pistol. I assume it was the bailiff, Yanni Yogi's. The safety must have come off when it fell from his holster. And you picked it up. What happened next? Mm -hmm. I picked it up and threw it at Mr. Yogi. I wanted him to stop fighting. Did you know it was a pistol when you threw it? I think I knew. I knew it was dangerous. But the air was getting so thick, I panicked. So you're saying that you threw the pistol at Mr. Yogi? I was, in a daze. A moment later, there was a single gunshot, then a scream. The gun fired once. Yes, I think after I threw it, I lost consciousness. Since then, they've echoed in my head every day. That gunshot and that horrible scream. The scream. It was a terrible scream. I remember it to this day. Oh. To this day? Yes, I can practically hear it now. I doubt I will ever forget that scream as long as I live. There it is. One part of that testimony clearly contradicts the evidence. But I don't know what it means. I better find out and quick. Huh. Time for a safety save. <laughs> Because I fucked up twice already. Guns can go off if you look at them wrong. Don't throw guns, yeah. Okay. So he thinks that the, the, the gun... Oh, sorry, the scream is sus. Um... So one thing of note, of course, is that there's, um... 
a bullet hole in the glass of the door of the elevator. So that's something. Um, additionally, what we got in here? One bullet found in heart. The murder weapon was fired twice. Yeah. There's also that. He says he heard one shot, but there were two. So. Maybe he threw it. It shot the window. And then Yanny grabbed it and fired or something. Don't know. But I'm going to throw out that him for, for saying there were two shots. Or one shot. There was a single gunshot. Yeah, but check this out. Not the autopsy report. The case file. Objection. Yeah! The music stopped. Are you sure you only heard one gunshot? Yes, I'm sure of that. I heard the shot and the scream, and everything faded. I was unconscious until the rescuers came. I see, rescuers down under, very good movie. But that doesn't make sense. Look at this file one more time. This plainly contradicts the witness's testimony. You do enjoy dragging out that file, don't you? I don't accept this evidence unless you can tell us what page it's on. Which page contradicts Miles Edgeworth's testimony? Um... Um... Time, hold on. It's, um... The victim data. Vi victim data. This one. Look at the victim data in this file. It says it quite plainly. The murder weapon was fired twice. Miles Edgeworth only heard one gunshot, yet the murder weapon was fired twice. The first shot was the accidental firing when the pistol was thrown. So who fired the remaining shot? Hmm. <clears throat> was there perhaps another shooter who fired that second shot? Oh, it was you. Why'd you do it? Your Honor, as I'm sure you're aware, this incident occurred 15 years ago. The evidence is dated. The pistol did fire twice. However, we do not know when that second shot was fired. Calvi! Hello! Thanks for the raid. We are we are approaching the end of case number four. Four. Things are heating up. Thanks for the raid. Hope you're doing good. It might have been fired the day before the incident. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just, just, when in doubt, just diddles. There's no proof that the second shot had anything to do with this incident. What? Hmm, I see, I see. You do have a point, Mr. Wright. The murder weapon was fired twice, as we have heard. One of those shots was fired by the defendant, a boy at the time. Do you have any proof that the other shot fired had something to do with the case? Yeah, yeah, I do. Your Honor, I think I will be able to show you proof. But what? Impossible. Now, now, Mr. Von Karma, save your surprise for after you've seen the evidence. Very well, Mr. Wright, show us your proof. Do you have evidence that the second firing of the pistol is related to this incident? I do, Your Honor. Look at this photograph. Take that. It actually worked. Look at this photograph. Gotta say, it's really nice that the, um... Whoever was investigating this this crime got into the elevator to take a picture of the body and then the elevator doors closed because I would think they would have propped the doors open, you know, as like part of like an emergency stop or something. But anyway, this is a photograph of the scene of the crime 15 years ago. Every time I do, I see Ezra dead. dead. That's just good elevator design. I can see that the victim lying there is Gregory Edgeworth. This proves the murder weapon was fired twice at the st at the time of the incident. Go on the bullet hole. Well, yeah. Yeah. This photo proves it. Oh, you're saying when they were taking the picture, they're like, we gotta get that bullet hole. But if the doors were open, then they wouldn't have seen that? I don't know. It's fine. Let me get this straight. I'm just saying it's very convenient and I'm happy for it. This photo proves two shots were fired where? Your Honor, please, please get a clue. Show the judge the contradiction in the photo. It's right there, Your Honor. Right, right about there. As should be obvious, the contradiction is yeah. I see a bullet hole in the door. Your Honor, I slammed my desk. Thank you for the bits. 
Gregory Edgeworth was killed by a shot from the pistol. Yet there is also a bolt hole in the elevator door. We also know the murder weapon was fired twice. Thus, someone other than Edgeworth fired that second shot. From outside the elevator, shooting in with the murder weapon. Order! Mr. Wright, what are you driving at? It's simple, Your Honor. At the time of the incident, two shots were fired. One went into Gregory Edgeworth's heart, the other hit the elevator door. Remember that the defendant lost consciousness after the shot he fired rang out. In conclusion, we must agree that the second shot was fired by someone else. Mr. Wright, but who could that someone else be? The murderer, of course! I knew I should have stepped in before your wild fantasies got out of hand. Mr. Wright, look once more at the DL6 incident case file. Look closely. Try the case summary page. The case summary, that's on page one. Look what is written there. Not a single clue was found on the scene. If the pistol had indeed been fired two times, then the other bullet would have been discovered on the scene. He does have a point. That second bullet has never been found. Why? Because the second bullet does not exist. The bullet that claims Gregory Edgeworth's life was the one fired by his own son. That is the truth of this matter. The whole truth. It was undoubtedly something else that made that bullet hole in the door. Mystery bullet. Order, I will have order. Smooth fingies. Mr. Wright has proven one thing to us quite clearly, that the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. However, as Von Karma says, the second bullet fired was not found. It's highly unlikely the police merely overlooked this second bullet. So all we have is the single bullet fired. I'm afraid I have to discount the defense's claim. <laughs> I praise the judge for his wisdom in this matter. How did this happen? Did Phoenix forget the evidence that might- I think he forgot. I don't believe that the second bullet didn't exist. Was I wrong? Have I been wrong about this whole incident? What are you doing, Nick? Why aren't you raising an objection? I'm sorry, Maya. What? It looks like I was wrong. Nick? If the second bullet wasn't there, then all my conjectures are for nothing. N no but you said you'd do it, Nick. You said you'd get Ed Edgeworth declared innocent. I'm sorry. It's just, when I saw the photograph, I thought that two shots had been fired. I was so certain of it, I thought I'd won. I thought there was another person, someone else, who fired the killing shot. But now, I was wrong to think it could be that simple. This case has stood unsolved for 15 years. Nick. Well, it seems that we have finally cleared up this incident. Only one bullet was found at the scene of the crime. That shot was fired by Miles Edgeworth. Precisely. I would like to ask one thing of Miles Edgeworth before passing my verdict. Have you been paying attention to the trial so far? Yes, Your Honor. Do you have any objections? No, no I do not. So you killed your father, though that was not your intention? Yes, I did. Oh no. He's confessing. Very well. The statute of limitations on the murder of Gregory Edgeworth runs out today. Therefore, I must pronounce a verdict on the defendant today, right here. Right now. Indeed. Does anyone have any objections? I've been here before. It's just like my first day in court. There's so many things I know I should be saying, but my mind's gone blank. I can't find the words. You just need the one word. Just gonna do a quick little safety save. He forgot how to say objection. Mr. Wright, no objections, Your Honor. Every lead I thought I had has been squashed. This is really the end. Edgeworth, I'm sorry. I closed my eyes. What was it that I'd been doing all this time? Was it my whole life leading up to today? But now that I'm here, I know I've failed. Mia, I'm sorry. Not? Is that like a, I'm sorry, not? Is that like what? Not yet. Wow, that is a, a very intense flash. Mia jump scare. Huh? Maya? What? 
Object. Your only weapon. White woman jump scare. Are you okay? Nick. What's happening to me? I have to think. Wait, don't think. Act. Objection. Your honor. I object. <laughs> Mr. Wright, on what grounds do you object? Uh, Nick? I don't know. His case is perfect. I don't know. Ah, it must exist. The second bullet. What? What'd you just say? Nothing? The second bullet must exist. But where? Someone took it. It seems waiting is not going to produce us any answers from Mr. Wright. Wait, your honor? Hmm? I, uh... The second bullet! It, it exists. What? We've just heard proof that it did not exist. I realize that, your honor. I'm really grasping here. It's just someone took it from the scene of the crime. That's what happened. But who? Th the murderer! Probably Larry. Nine years old Larry. The murderer? Then tell us just who is this murderer. I'm still thinking about that one. Hmm. So the criminal took the second bullet. Why would he? Huh? First of all, how would he have found it? It's not easy to find a stray bullet, Mr. Wright. Was there some pressing need for the murderer to search for that bullet? The murderer had to find it! Of course there was a need, that's why he took it. What possible reason could he have had? Well, the reason the murderer took the bullet away from the scene with him is... The bullet would be proof. It'd be proof. Maybe he thought that the bullet would be used as proof. Proof? It was a special bullet, so he took it with him. That's not what I meant by that. Phoenix? If that was the case, then he would have taken the bullet from inside Gregory as well. Huh? Special bullets. Why would he only take one of the two shots fired? Right. Mr. Wright, have you really thought this through? Ah, shit. Okay, the murderer had... Wait, shit. All of this? Okay, another safety save. Oh. Fuck. Um. Did Von Karma kill a man? Because that's fucking wild. Uh, he had to find it. Of course there was a need, that's why he took it. What possible reason? Well, the reason is because he was cautious. The murderer was a very cautious sort, you see. That's why the murderer had to search for that bullet. If that was the case, then he would have taken the bullet from inside Gregory as well. Huh? Why would only take one of the two shots? Is that r really He didn't need the bullet? Then why did he take it? He didn't need it? Why would the murderer have spent the time to look for that stray bullet? I haven't got a clue. What's wrong, Mr. Wright? Uh, um... Bah! The murderer had no reason to take that bullet. You don't want to admit it, but it's true. Uh... Had to take it. Had to take it. The murderer. What does that mean? That's what I was saying! You're thinking too normal. Think crazy! <laughs> Uh, I didn't realize this game would just break the fourth wall right then and there. And be like, hey, just so you know, if you're playing an Ace Attorney game, here you, here you go. Don't think why the bullet was taken. Think why the bullet had to be taken. Mr. Wright? Yes, your honor? I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, well, the murderer had no intention of taking the bullet from the scene. But, uh, the murderer had to take that bullet. Had to, Mr. Wright? What do you mean? Well, for instance, for instance what? Maybe the bullet, uh, hit the murderer? The bullet hit the murderer? Just saying, for instance. I mean, if it hit you, you would, uh, you would have to take it with you, wouldn't you? It's not like you could perform surgery right there. You know? He was, he was, he was on the other side of the elevator doors and got shot. And then was like, what the fuck? And then 
shot Gregory and then walked off with the bullet. What does the record say about the bullet? Taken from Gregory Edgeworth's heart still bears clear ballistic markings. So we don't have the second bullet. So the bullet we got... Okay. Okay. Ice. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, you know. Mm-hmm. This is bonkers. Wait a second. I was just talking off the top of my head, but what if that's really what happened? Let me get this straight. So if Miles is guilty of anything, it's it's shooting Von Karma? That's... That, that seems like, like good karma. So at the time of the murder, the murderer himself was shot. And he left with the second bullet still inside, thus leaving only one bullet at the scene of the crime? Yes, I guess that's how it would work, yes. But there's a problem with that. The other two people rescued from that elevator, Miles Edgeworth and Yanni Yogi, were both unharmed. So that would mean the murderer came from outside the elevator. The call was coming from outside the elevator car. Columbo moment. Where's Ace Attorney versus Columbo? The two men fight inside the elevator. Trying to stop them, the boy picks up the pistol at his feet and throws it. The pistol discharges, and the bullet... The bullet goes through the elevator door and hits the murderer outside. The boy loses consciousness. Then the murderer opens the elevator door and sees the men inside. Hmm. Mr. Wright, you are truly the most unpredictable defense attorney I've ever known. I can tell you're grasping, yet I cannot deny the possibility of what you say. What are you saying? Deny it, deny it! No one involved with the incidents was wounded? There were just no murderer? Hmm. No one was wounded at the time of the incident. He's right. I can't think of anyone. Hey, Nick. Huh? I just thought of something really crazy. Crazy. Remember what Mr. Grossberg said yesterday? Gregory Edgeworth dealt a blow to his perfect trial record. Wow. It must have been quite a shock for Von Karma. He took a vacation for several months after that, you see. An unusual event for the man. That was the first and last vacation he's taken in his many years of prosecuting. What if Von Karma didn't take that vacation because of shock, but took it because he was injured? Which would mean... It could only mean one thing. He was the murderer in the DL6 incident. Ain't that a kick in the nuts? He was the man who shot Gregory Edgeworth. It was Von Karma. Oh man, something wrong, Mr. Wright? You seem dazed. Lack of oxygen in the courtroom, Your Honor. Well, you have indicated the possibility that the murderer came from outside. Can you give us the name of your suspect? Uh-oh, should I come out and say it now? Save it for a better time. No, to say it now! I'm gonna save it real quick. Do we get uh, Von Karma to take off his shirt and show if, his, if he has a, a scar on his, on his right shoulder? Shirtless Manfred Art. Dot JPEG. Your Honor, there is a suspect. One lone suspect. Well, this is certainly interesting news. Very well, Mr. Wright. Who is your suspect? Mr. Wright? I'm getting to it. It's My hands are shaking. For what? Vroom? Von Karma! Von Karma? Oh, he's fucking loving this shit. <laughs> Look at that shit-eating grin. You mean THE Von Karma, the prosecutor, sitting right there. That one right there. Bah. You don't object? Hmm. I see no need. Why honor this ridiculous outburst with my objection? Because you took a vacation for several months starting the day after the incident, yet you pride yourself on a perfect record. Why would you take such a long vacation without any reason? So you're claiming that I took a vacation to heal my injury from the incident? Fascinating. Prove it. 
I would have needed surgery, no? Where did I go under the knife at, Mr. Wright? Bring the doctor that operated on me. Have him testify. You. Yeah. Nick. Let's find out who his doctor is. It's no use. Edgeworth. I know Von Karma perhaps too well. He's perfect. He wouldn't leave clues. He probably didn't undergo surgery. That would leave a doctor as a witness. Fucker did it himself? Holy shit, this dude is crazy. Nobody's that perfect. So what, Nick? Did Von Karma pull the bullet out by himself? That's insane. No, he couldn't have. You can't just pull bullets out of yourself. Wait. What does that mean? That bullet has to be somewhere, but where? You know... You know, you know, you know... I thought it was funny that when our evidence was removed, we still had the metal detector on us. I thought that that was weird. But now I understand why. <laughs> this game is actually insane. It's actually crazy. <laughs> well, Mr. Wright, can you produce evidence to prove that I was shot? Yeah. Yeah, I can. All right, Von Karma, I'll prove it. And I'll even use evidence. I know how you like it so much. I have one fucking mistake left. I better be right about this. What? The evidence that proves Von Karma was shot is... The metal detector. Von Karma is perfect. He wouldn't risk surgery leaving an evidence trail. So then I ask, where is that bullet now? I think it unlikely that Von Karma performed surgery on himself. You don't mean... I do. There is the possibility that the bullet is still inside Von Karma. Is that even possible for all these years? Well, there's one way to find out. We could use this metal detector. Well, Von Karma, I'm going to run this over you and see what we find. I refuse. He's sweating! <laughs> He's actually sweating. We got him. We fucking got him. You refuse? But refusing this means... You acknowledge that the bullet is still inside you? Order, order, order. Your Honor, the defense requests that we be allowed to use the metal detector. Judge, I call for a suspension of this trial. This is an invasion of privacy. The statute of limitations runs out on this case today. It was you who said we had to end it right here, right now. Enough. I permit the use of the metal detector. Um... I'm assuming it's going to be a very loud, annoying beep, so I'll turn the volume down a smidge, but it was pretty obnoxious last time, so hopefully it's not too bad. Mr. Von Karma, you will submit yourself to testing. Nick, what does this mean? I don't know, but we have to give it a shot. I'm turning it down. Yep, there it is. Ugh, God. All right. It reacted! Something's inside his right shoulder. The bullet! Mr. Von Karma? You. It was you! I was afraid this would happen, and so I remained silent. Indeed, there is a bullet in my shoulder. However, it has nothing to do with this incident. Uh-huh. What? I was shot in the shoulder long before the DL6 incident. I claim that the bullet in my shoulder has no relation to DL6. B but Mr. Von Karma, can you prove that? Proof? I have no obligation to prove anything. I you have every obligation to prove everything. It is you who must prove something here, Mr. Wright. Not I. M Mr. Wright? Well, can you prove it? Can you prove that the bullet in Von Karma's shoulder was from DL6? Of course he can't. You don't have any of the DL6 evidence. That's because you took it out of the records room yesterday. 
With no proof, you cannot convict me of any crime. So sorry, Mr. Wright. No, I'm the one who's sorry, Mr. Von Karma. But what? You were close, one day away from freedom. You see, I have proof. But what? Who would have thought you would have dug your own grave trying to convict Edgeworth? I can link that bullet in your shoulder to the Deal 6 incident. And here's my final proof. Um... I'm assuming it's just the gun, the bullet. But... It's probably the parent. I can't save, so... I better be right. Show my badge. The, the problem with this is the ballistic markings would need to match this bullet. But how could we know if that matches the markings on the bullet in his shoulder? We'd have to perform surgery on that, and the case needs to be done today right now. Just take it out. Don't think. Take that. Take that. That's a bullet? Get the knife. Where did you get that? This is the bullet used in the Deal 6 incident. This was taken from the heart of the victim, Mr. Gregory Edgeworth. I've updated the autopsy report. The bullet is preserved quite nicely with all the ballistic markings intact. Ballistic markings. All the cases are feeding into each other. You may recall the term. It came up in the first trial two days ago. Ballistic markings are the fingerprints of a weapon. All bullets fired from a gun are marked with that weapon's unique pattern. By examining the markings, you can tell which weapon fired the bullet. It's quite accurate. That's what he said. We have two bullets in our possession. One, the bullet removed from Gregory Edgeworth's heart. The other, Mr. Von Karma, is the bullet buried in your shoulder. We can analyze both bullets. Then if the markings matched, we would know that both bullets had been fired from the same gun. The very same pistol. In other words, the murder weapon that killed Gregory Edgeworth. <laughs> Mr. Von Karma, you will let us remove the bullet from your shoulder. Then we'll compare the ballistic markings to those on this bullet. And solve this case once and for all. Well, Mr. Von Karma! <laughs> That's the scream I heard. I fucking knew it. I've heard that scream before. I know. It was him. Karma smash. Help, I can't breathe. You're welcome. Quiet, I said quiet. You're not making this any easier. Stop breathing my air. I'll stop you. Stop breathing my air. Yeah. Get away. Eh. Get away from my father. Bang. <laughs> Kremlin.wav. It's that scream I heard in the elevator. Fifteen years ago. Von Karma, it was you who screamed. Auga. Mr. Von Karma? <laughs> Edgeworth! Edgeworth! Only you would dare defy me! So it was you. You and your father are my curse! Hey, bro, you good? Your father shamed me with a penalty on my record! And you, you left a scar on my shoulder that would never fade! I'll bury you! I'll bury you with my bare hands! Death! Death! <laughs> Thank you, chat. Fifteen years earlier. Mr. Chief Prosecutor, I am sorry. Von Karma, it's not like you to make this kind of error. I never would have thought that Edgeworth would be the one to catch you. I was careless. I'm sorry, but you will have to be penalized. I have covered for you in the past, but not this time. Edgeworth! It was a shock like none I'd ever known. Me? Penalized? It took hours for me to regain my composure. Suddenly, I found myself in the darkness. I was in the court records room. I must have wandered in there without thinking where I was going. The room was pitch black. The lights must have gone out. 
I went out in the hall and felt my way to the elevator. I pressed the button, and nothing happened. Then, there was a noise. Urgh! I was in pain! A horrible burning pain in my shoulder. Just then, the lights came back on. The elevator door opened before my eyes. I saw three people inside lying unconscious from oxygen deprivation. Much to my surprise, a pistol lay at my feet. I knew then, it was destiny. In his last moments, Gregory Edgeworth was still unconscious. He died never knowing who had shot him. Later, he spoke through a medium blaming Mr. Yogi. He was fooled! It was the perfect crime! So they did talk to his spirit, and his ghost didn't lie. He just, d he didn't know. He fooled a ghost. Merry Christmas. Almost Christmas. Heh. <laughs> Who would have thought another man would have come to open that elevator door? Judge. But what? What are you doing? Do your job. Bring an end to this miserable charade. Now end it. Very well. Memes are a thing in this world. Yeah, Maya is a small meme at a large. Rabble who scream, noise pollution Mango. is not a big deal. They are wrong. Blood from your eardrums is not what I'd call fun. Put your fingers in your ears. Come on. Thank you for the Emmy. Appreciate it. This entire orbit should be glassed from orbit. It appears we have come a very long way to the end of this maze. Fifteen years later, Mr. Miles Edgeworth, yes, your honor, you are innocent. You are innocent. As you said, it was all a nightmare. Yes, your honor. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth, not guilty. Is there more confetti? There's more. They have more left. They got more confetti for the court. That is all. Court is adjourned. What is Von Karma guilty though? It, but I, I'm glad that Miles is not guilty. And I mean, he was the. the what is what's gonna happen? The is fine. Okay. They stocked him on confetti during the break. That has to be a separate trial. But the statute of limitations. No. Nice. Doesn't it still have to be today? Just accept it. I, but, but tomorrow will be after the statute of limitations and it'll be fine. Thank you. Perfect. Karma getting shot be like. Appreciate it. Donkey Kong Country 2 critter sound effect. It's my favorite sound effect. He's dead now. He shows a lot of Von Karma's trial sprites from him gripping his shoulder. Yes. But he was gripping his left shoulder. Wasn't he? Was he grabbing his, like, not even his shoulder, like his left arm? He had, like, a nervous tick or something. No, he was. Your left, his right. He was grabbing his right arm. His right. Okay. His right shoulder went annoyed. His right or left. Gotcha. I noticed that he kept doing that, but I just thought it was, like, a nervous tick he had or something. Huh. Not the crosshair animation. No. Yeah, he also uses his left arm to, like, snap and everything. But he could just be left-handed. Okay. Nick, we did it! At least it means that they're, you know, consistent. Uh, did you see his face? Von Karma looked even paler than usual. He's pretending to be all cool, but inside you crushed him, Nick. Crushed! I gotta say, I'm impressed. Yeah, it was pretty close, though. I was sure we'd had it. I know, I was on the verge of tears the whole time myself. But now it's all just a good memory. So it's finally over, Edgeworth. Right? Yeah. I... I'm not sure how to say this. I know, I know! Try thank you. I... I see. Thank you, right? You're... You're welcome. I think you could have done better than that. Oof. Sorry. I'm not good at this sort of thing. You got a lot to learn, Edgeworth. Dear, dear. Amazing, pal! You pulled through just like I thought you would. I'll never forget this. I owe you one, pal. And tonight, let's party. Dinner's on me. Yeah, my salary went down a bit this month. 
salary cutting noises, but who cares? See, Mr. Edgeworth, you should take a lesson from Detective Gumshoe. That's how you say thank you. I, I see. Ahem. Whoop. I feel foolish. Don't worry. Take it a little at a time. You'll get used to it. It's been 15 years since I've seen Edgeworth this unguarded. Hey, y'all. Lada. Y'all were great in there. Thank you. Yo, Edgeworth, congrats. Uh, uh, thank y'all, y'all very much. I knew you were innocent from the start, of course. Just look at you. You wouldn't stick your hand in the cookie jar even if no one was there. You were the witness of the first day of the trial, weren't you? Yeah, well, let bygones be bygones, eh? Speaking of which, what are you doing now, Lada? Who, me? Uh, I went back to college. But since yesterday, I gave up trying to be an investigative photographer pretty quick. Really? That's too bad. Huh? Isn't that the hot dog guy from the park? Huh? It's over, Nick. My life is over. Why the sad face, Larry? What happened now? Nick, I'm not long for this world. You don't look sick. It's Keonce. She's going to live in Paris. Paris, Nick. France. She's leaving me behind. Larry, Larry. Yo, Edgy, there you are. Yes, here I am. Congrats, Edgy. Here's a little gift from me in celebration. Celebration? That's unusual for you. Harry Butts, you come along tonight too. My treat, pal. Uh, uh, thanks. Looking forward to it. Yo, Nick. That's the suit that questioned me. When he says treat, that's not police talk for prison food, right? Right? I think you'll be fine, Larry. Right? Yeah? What's up? That envelope that Larry gave me, it's got money in it. Well, yeah, that's not that strange. People give money away to celebrate sometimes. It's $38, right? God damn it, Larry. What a weird amount. I mean, it's not a little, but it's not a lot either. $38 exactly? Nick. Wasn't that exactly the amount of lunch money that was stolen from Mr. Edgeworth in school? And Larry was out sick that day or whatever. So it couldn't have been him. $38. No. No, Larry, it was you! What are you so surprised about, right? Huh? Larry was absent that day from school, right? But that doesn't automatically rule him out as a suspect. What? Think back to that day, 15 years ago. I thought you'd forgotten about that day, Edgeworth. Larry took the day off, but he was bored. He came into school anyway. Then he saw the money lying there, and the rest is history. I never was good at history. <laughs> Fuck. Fuck this. Edgeworth, you didn't know, did you? I suspected. I just couldn't picture Larry protecting you like he did that day. Everyone else was saying you did it. The whole class was against you, remember? Yeah, too well. Right, you may not know this, but we used to have a saying back in school. When something smells, it's usually the butts. I know, I know. Really, right? I'm surprised you didn't figure it out. Well, this is sure an unexpected turn of events, eh? Edgeworth. Hmm? You should have told me. Now, now, Nick. It was 15 years ago. Don't you think the statute of limitations has run out, Mr. Edgeworth? I'd say so, yes. There you have it. Where does that leave me? I became a defense attorney because of what you two did. Well, I'd call you a goody two-shoes to the extreme. Yeah, and you get worked up too easily, too. Death! The death sentence for both of you! If only I'd known I'd have become a prosecutor! The same goes for me, only the other way around. For the longest time, I thought that I might have killed my own father. I thought I might be a criminal. I became a prosecutor in part to punish myself. If I had known the truth, I might have become a defense attorney after all. Edgeworth. Want to switch, right? Hey, y'all! Line up! I'll take a photo. Hey, photo time! Let's go! And after that, dinner on me! Hey, yo, chat? Chat? Detective Gumshoe took us out on the town that night. We celebrated Edgeworth's newfound freedom. Although Edgeworth was still in detention. Wait, really? He was still They went out and got dinner without him? They didn't even wait for him to be released? December 29th, 5.02 a.m. Right in Cole offices. Paperwork. I mean, I mean. 
Well, I went a little overboard yesterday. My head hurts. Huh? It's still only five o'clock. Maybe I should go back to sleep. Hmm? What's this? A letter? Good morning, Nick. You were really impressive yesterday. Seeing you, it made me think about what I'm doing here. I'm a spirit medium, in training, of course. I wanted to help Mr. Edgeworth, too. I wanted to help you. But I couldn't. I was useless. So I've decided to go back to my training. I'll become a full-fledged spirit medium, for starters. I couldn't say it to your face, so I left this letter. Goodbye, Nick. It's the last we ever saw of her. Goodbye? What time is it? Ugh, the first trains for the mountains have already left. To the station! Knowing that the Game Boy Advance game ended on this case makes this make a lot more sense. That there's like all this wrapping up and conclusion and stuff. I guess I'm too late. Hey! Nick! Maya! So, you're leaving. <laughs> Music restarting. Yeah. It's hard being a spirit meeting. We can't talk to spirits. And... I think you'll do fine without me, Nick. Be good, okay? Real confused my place. Give it just kept going. Hold it! Wait! What? I never could have saved Edgeworth without your help. Huh? On the last day of the trial, I heard her. I heard Mia's voice. You heard my sister? Only her voice, but still. It was at the very end when I thought we'd lost everything. That's my sister for you. Detective Gumshoe helped, and Mr. Grossberg, and even Larry. I'm the only one who couldn't help. I was useless, Nick. But you were the one who stopped Von Karma, Maya. Huh? I didn't do anything. All I did was wander around in a daze. Yeah, me too. Sorry, but I have evidence that you helped. E evidence? Show my evidence to cheer her up. Ah, oh, shit. Uh, 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 the parrot! One chance. The monkey! Was the monkey? Uh, uh, the metal detector? Her mom? I don't. Oh, the bullet! Oh, the bullet! Obviously, the bullet! Yeah, obviously, I was like, I don't know! The bullet! A bullet? Von Karma was convinced he had taken all the evidence pertaining to DL6. But you were the one who rescued the last piece of evidence we needed. I almost fucked up there. <laughs> I was like, what did she do in the court? It was before the trial. This was the bullet that put an end to Von Karma. And you were the one who gave it to me. Nick, thanks, Maya. I couldn't have done it without you. I'll be back soon. Huh? I'm going to complete my training and come back. Okay, I'll be waiting. Of course you will. You can't run that office by yourself. You're hopeless. I don't know about that. So, bye. Bye. Sayonara. Ah, that's cute. Thanks, Nick. Coldest goodbye ever. Ah, well, that was good. And so my story ends. Time to turn a new page. And say goodbye to the novice defense attorney that I once was. Now a new story begins. With the same old crazy cast of characters. Ha! Don't think you've graduated yet, amateur. Mr. Wright, perhaps you'd like to rethink that claim? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh-oh, I got a bad feeling about this. Objection. Thank you, Stott. I had a great time. Oh, nice. <laughs> I've won four whole cases. Hey, pal, Mr. Edgeworth came down to the precinct to wish me a happy new year. Talk about a pleasant surprise. Whoop! Detective Gumshoe! Then he hung his head low and went right back outside. Kinda like he was embarrassed or something. Strange, huh? Hey, Yacht Club! Thanks for five gifts of subs later again! Welcome. We just finished case four of Ace Attorney. How y'all doing? Hope you had a good raid! 
I mean, a good stream. I know, I hope the rate was good, too. Who may have been working at a cheese shop? That Misty's a nice lady, but she's not exactly what you call a cheap date. Four and five. I Technically five, too. She's in Hawaii. Larry, no! Larry, what are you doing? Second game next. Well, we have case five next. Which apparently is really uh, the big case. So, you know, it might take a bit. Right? Yeah, I remember him. Uh, he's been busy lately. You know, not to ring my own bell, but I sort of taught him everything he knows. Yeah, thanks, Payne. I'm sure he's grateful. Mm -hmm. Case five is the best. It's a doozy. It's just kind of okay. Like three streams? Damn. That'd be for you, huh? Bryce and Ashes is the longest case in the trilogy. Phoenix Wright? Hmm. Ah, the defense attorney for whom I wrote that affidavit for, yes. You should know I've taken over management of the Gatewater Hotel recently. Should you be in the area, please stop by. Coming on the credits. You're coming in on the credits. Because this is where... Apparently this is where the Game Boy Advance game ended. And then when they translated it into English and ported it to the DS for the Western release, they added another case. But this is like the end of the game. There's just another case after it. Phoenix Wright, Mia's understand. Uh, uh, I wonder how he's doing. I haven't seen him of late. The days of my youth. He loves that line. Basically DLC, but it's it's not downloadable. It's just it's, uh, I'm playing this on an actual DS. It's like the cartridge. Calling it DLC is funny to me. It's still canon though. Nice. Phoenix Wright, he an actor? Well, I'm not buying it. You can't be a star without a, a name like Phoenix. Did you know that they have a DVD of the box sets? Now I know what a DVD is. Why well, everything just says just something. okay. Yeah, ma'am. Downloaded content onto the cartridge. I turned the game off during the credits. Oh no. I never do that. I'm pleased to announce the Pink Princess is a hit. I sure owe that Mr. Wright a great deal. Oh, and I'm keeping my face out of the public eye till the show's over. I wouldn't want to ruin any kid's dreams, you know. I don't know why they make this such a weird thing about Will Powers being, like, awful to look at. He just seems like a big, burly dude. <laughs> I don't get the bit they're going for. Oh, I got a letter from Maya the other day. It sounds like she caught a cold standing under a waterfall. I wanted to visit, but didn't have time, so I sent her some pink princess trading cards. She says she can't buy them where she is. What kind of place is she living at anyway? A uh, mountain. I'm glad that Penny didn't do a murder. Right, who's that? You want to talk? Let's talk Pink Princess. All right. But, you know, I snuck into the studio the other day, and I saw her, the one inside the Pink Princess suit. Ugh, what a dog. It was kind of a shock for a boy of my tender age. Okay, Cody. Sanest pink princess fan? <laughs> was it Powers? I, I remember he was cast. Is he the pink princess? I remember right. Huh, me? I'm in training to become a paranormal photographer. You know that picture I took of everyone? Well, just behind them, there's a ghost. For real. Now that's talent. I'm going to be famous. She took a picture of everyone and, and Mia's visible in the back. That's great. Shinji Mikami. Normal. Where is Gordy? Uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> she dirt sure did take a picture of a ghost. <laughs> okay, is that where everyone gets the bit about about Gumshoe being the source of the confetti? Is it because of that photo? Yes, correct. Good. Okay. We did it. Hooray. We saved the day. That comic was canon. Capcom published it. I didn't realize that that was Capcom who did it. That's great. All right, well, we have Rise from the Ashes to do. We're not doing it now. I'm fucking, I'm done. Long stream. What a deeply unserious game. It's great. It's good. DLC. Good night. Thank you. I'm going to get caught up in alerts, and then we're going to find someone to raid. Thank you for the raid, Yacht Club. Appreciate it. Hope you had a good stream. And it's like, yeah. Thoughts on the case? I, it, it was a good case. Especially because, yeah, 3 was a little bit more sluggish and took a while and kind of meandered a bit. It felt like every step of case 4 just had way more going on and was just much more interesting. And It was a little bit of a tighter mystery as well. 
I liked it. It was good. I, I, it was very stupid. Um, which is, is fun. Thank you. Thanks for hanging, everyone. Appreciate it. He yeah, was hold it during the credits and locks case five. That's great. That's really good. Yeah, because I think this is Jard's version that he's already played through. Um, blah, 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 blah. Warren Kim's is here. Gifted a sub to Judgment. Snowbeal gifted a sub to Judge Men. Like two words, Judge Men. Kurt DZ, thanks for 100 bits. Your Honor, my bird needs a hamburger. It's the only way he'll cooperate in court. In the eye of the beholder, thanks for 29 months. Cook the bird. Stod, thanks for 100 bits for post-trial therapy. Thank you. Joe McStinky, thanks for subbing. Enjoy the emotes. Uh, also, before I forget again, D&D &D tomorrow. Not here. I don't stream it. It's Dan's stream, because I'm Dan Jones. Go follow Dan. We're having D&D &D tomorrow night. Be there or not. The Jurdster gifted a sub to Blood Plush. That's a name. Uh, Itters, thanks for five gifted subs to Dub Power 98, Fluff a Wonder Fluff, Akios Arcade, Moonwing, and Pelpo Falk. Zayrisk, thanks for the prime. Welcome. Enjoy the emotes. Mithra gifted a sub to Grandfather Glock. Calvi with the raid. Thank you. Mithra gifted a sub to Calvi for 22nd month. Thank you. Azumagia, thanks for 70 bits. Do you think Manfred has ever sustained himself on the blood of the living? I feel like he probably has at least two or three times. Yeah. Dude's definitely done that a bit. Dan. Dan's the man. Uh, Afrasabi, thanks for 65 months in a tier two. 65. It's an older reference, sir, but it checks out. Question mark. Universal Fireworks, thanks for 100 bits. I hate this game. I agree. Volk Aokani, thanks for the prime. Welcome. Really appreciate it. Smash Mouth with a hammy. Let it be known that Manfred von Karma spontaneously concocted an elaborate revenge plan involving killing Gregory Edgeworth and raising his son to take the blame for it, all because he received a penalty during a trial that he still won. Ladies and gentlemen, everyone in between, I give you the king of disproportionate retribution. And he got his comeuppance only 15 years after the fact. And it seems, it seems, they didn't touch on it, but my assumption is that he waited 15 years right up until right before the statute of limitations ran out, just in case it raised some questions about his involvement in DL6, just to be like, well, statute of limitations. Like, he could have done it any time up to that point, but he waited till right at the buzzer to be like, okay, I'm, I, my, my, I'm, I'm good, I'm clear, my name is cleared, moving on. And obviously it didn't go that way, but it's like, why else would he have waited till the fucking buzzer? So, uh, anyway, uh, Jake and Bacon, thanks for 69 bits. Nice. You ever notice how Von Karma always grabs his right arm? There you go. Kibble the Brave, thanks for 29 months. Objection. I object to not being subbed to Barry. My evidence, prime sub. I rest my case. Thank you for the prime. Smash Man, thanks for 96 bits. Larry kind of sucks. If something smells, it's usually the butts. He reeks. Mr. Sadbert, thanks for subbing. Welcome. Enjoy the emotes. Yacht Club, thanks again for the raid. Shouts to Yacht Club. You're the best. Itters with five more gifted subs to Anko Pro Neriguri Pants McPants. It's a very good username. Bobby Boing and Tornado Owl. Skyward Daily, thanks for a four months. Thanks for stream. Thank you. And Bun Bun, thanks for 15. Found this past Sunday, one of my best friends passed away. Your VOD's been a huge help during this time. She was only 32. I'm so sorry to hear that. I, I hope that some silly levity on the internet helps a little bit, but please take care of yourself. Um, that is really really rough um but thank you all so much for hanging out um i'll be back on thursday um yeah shout out to the yacht club um i will be back on thursday i think i'll probably be doing my steam next fest stream then we'll see maybe we'll do more of this i do plan on doing the final case and this is just gonna take a bit and i do need to give my vocal cords a break from doing it's very fun i i enjoy doing these streams but i gotta i gotta give myself some time i gotta give myself a little bit of time to recover um, hmm, 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 are we going to raid? Do, 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 uh, I know of her from Onsta. We were just raided Calvin the other day. But I, I've hung out with Steph in person. She's real cool. Very good art. Really good vibes. They're currently playing The Crown of Leaves. Which looks pretty rad. So, it's so quiet. I need some music. I know. Let me just hit a loop on that. There we go. Steph, really, Steph's great. Go hang out. Go throw her fall if you're interested. Why not? No, 
Hope you have a good week, everybody. What's our what's our raid message? Is it uh? Do you want it faster? You want it faster, chat? I know you like fast. He's getting closer. Oh god! He's inside the house! Oh no! Oh, he's backed off. He's backed off. We're safe. It's like it's like when you're playing Alien Isolation and you got the little the radar in the vent. Have a good one, everyone. Thanks for hanging out. Take care. Oh my god. Oh, that's real bad. Hey, VOD Watchers. Get a load of this. What do you mean it's not loud enough? Have a good one. Thanks for- uh, Jesus. Uh, bye.